Hello everyone, once again, we are back in the long dark with another tutorial, this time the requested Timberwolf Mountain spawn. Timberwolf Mountain is actually one of my favorite spawns because it's so great, because you can go from Timberwolf Mountain straight to Pleasant Valley and get lots of good loot, following a journey that's likely to get you the hammer and quite a few other good stuff, and then you can forge very quickly. But it also allows you the possibility to go into Ash Canyon right away, get the backpack and even summit on day 1, 2 or 3, depending on how quick you are. And we're actually going to look at that today. It depends on our spawn, because when you spawn in Timwolf Mountain, there is basically a 1 in 4 chance that you can't summit, uh, because there is no hacksaw. But there's a 3 in 4 chance that you will get the hacksaw, either in the mountainous hut or on the summit and then we're going to explain how that works so we're going to start a new run we're going to do a Timwolf mountain spawn we're going to head to mountainous hut right away and then i'm going to situate myself show you some maps and explain what the plan is for this run and then we're going to go from there so let's jump straight through it let me get rid of this text first there we are okay so let's start a new run, and just like with Ash Canyon, if you haven't seen my old videos, uh, I have a interloper tutorial walkthrough, and I have one for Ash Canyon specifically. We're now going to do one that's specific for Tim Wolf Mountain, and because we want to spawn Tim Wolf Mountain, I'm going to do a custom run, not an interloper run. There isn't much difference really between it. I could do an interloper run as hope to spawn there, but just to make things easier, we're going to do a custom interloper. Now, uh, it, we're gonna, if you choose interloper here, there's a couple of weird things that happen. Um, for one thing, it says starting weather is heavy fog, which is strange because an interloper, you don't start with heavy fog. You start with pretty much random weather. So I've spawned on a clear day. I've spawned in a starry night and I have spawned in heavy fog as well. So I don't know why it says this, but so, oh well. I'm actually going to do a clear day and I'm going to do uh, noon. So this is kind of cheating a little bit. Normally you shouldn't, I wouldn't do this. The only reason I am doing this is to make it easier for you to follow where I am when I spawn. Now to me, it won't make any difference if I spawn in a blizzard at midnight, I still know where I am. But to make it a little bit easier for you to follow, we're going to cheat a little bit here and start a clear uh, spawn at noon uh, to make it a little bit easier for you to follow what's happening. We're not going to touch anything else, though. I hope that's all right with you. But of course, normally it wouldn't be like this. It would be random. Okay, now we're going to start our, our spawn in Timberwolf Mountain, which is a great uh, spawn. And we'll go for... Hmm, uh, let's go with a will today. And then we have our feats. And if you watched my uh, previous video, you can look up the uh, interloper walkthrough from, from start to bow. And I talk about the feats extensively. But I'm only going to briefly summarize them here. Uh, you can choose whichever feats you want. Or you can choose no feat. You don't need any of these to, to do a good interloper run. They are completely optional. However, if you, do gonna uh, if you are going to choose one, uh, the three best ones is, in my opinion, Snow Walker, uh, Efficient Machine, and Cold Fusion. We're going to go for Cold Fusion because it gives you two, two degrees uh, warmth bonus. Doesn't sound like much, but in the early game it can make the difference between you being cold or warm in a cave or some building you enter. So that's great. And it can be used in the late game to make it easier to stay warm in the afternoon with or without a bear coat. You can use efficient machine to affect, uh, make your calories a bit more effective. If we end up going to Ash Canyon though, this will be completely pointless because we're going to be filled with food because of the cattails we go for. I prefer going for Snow Walker because it, that means the stamina bar we charge is 20% faster. That means you effectively run 20% more. And in the early game you want to run a lot because you're going to be cold and you're going to move from place to place. And you can use it in the late game too, because you might run from base to base. So I'm going to go for these two. Okay. And then we can call this uh, Will to Summit. We might not summit, but we'll find out. Go. 
And then we'll see where we spawn. Uh, so I cheated now by spawning in a uh, place at noon in a clear day, which wouldn't usually be the case. Well, I mean, it could happen. You can spawn at noon in a clear day on Interloper. So, uh, but we're going to do it just, just so that you can see better what I'm doing. So let's see where we are. All right, let's see where we are. Okay, so we are at this spawn here. This is one of the closest spawns to the Mountaineer's Hut. It, usually when you spawn in Timwolf Mountain, you get one of two spawns uh, on Outerloper because you have to spawn outside. This one where we are right now is right next to the ravine. So it's right there. If, if you turn around and go back, you can see where where we are, right? So right here down there is one of the engines, and this is the ravine. There's a wolf down there. You can see the wolf patrolling, and down there's Echo Ravine. Uh, the other spawn you can get, you can actually see it from here. I can't point at it, but straight ahead right now, there is a... Maybe I can uh, point out. Straight ahead right now, there is uh, a little uh, peak pointing out of the ravine. A little hilltop and that's where you spawn if you don't spawn here if that happens you can go straight past that rock and down into the three-way cave loop matches and then go down into this cave and then through it up we have a spawn here this is one of the closest spawns to the mountain air so that's quite a good spawn again i'm on a clear day and i'm only doing this so you can see where i am and what i'm doing although the rest of the game will be as normal interloper it's easy to know that you spawned here because you can see these mushrooms right away. Even if you spawn and you are in a blizzard and it's nighttime, you will see these mushrooms right away when you spawn. You just click forward and then you see them on your right right away. So it's very easy to know where you are. From here, it's ridiculously easy to get to the mountainous hut. So that's a really good thing. We're going to pick up some sticks though. And also this. Uh, we are right now at the foot of the summit. The summit is up there. You can see the fuselage pointing out right there. And what we're going to do, we're going to head to Mountaineer's Hut because the loot at Mountaineer's Hut will dictate how the rest of the run goes. It will dictate whether we're going to go to the summit right away or not. Now, if you spawn here, it's very easy to get to the Mountaineer's Hut. Even if it's a blizzard and it's dark, you just walk straight ahead to the mushrooms and then hug the wall on the left. Even if you can't see much, you should be able to eventually just walk along the edges until you see this rope here that's on your left. Now, what you want to do is not climb down this rope. You can do it, of course, no problem doing that. But what you should instead do, just to make things faster and save some stamina, is you're going to walk past the rope and over here. Here's a little climb down that you can use. Of course, you could get a sprain doing this, which would be annoying. Uh, but not the end of the world, and you're gonna just climb down these little slopes here. It's very, very easy to climb down here. And now we are at the foot of uh, the rope, and we are going towards the mountainous hut. I am gonna loot a couple more mushrooms. We gotta be a little bit careful here. There could be a wolf roaming about, and we don't want that. Let's see. Grab these. And let's see if the wolf is around. Okay, there's a deer in front of me, so then we are n there's no problem because the we can use the deer as bait if we need to. It's very easy. And then we're gonna see the loot. Basically, what we want to look at. Oh, let's grab these two. We get extra teas, extra warmth, extra cooking. So let's grab those. Nope. There we go. All right. Let's loot this. Now, I'm taking cold damage and I should maybe head indoors right away. If it was a blizzard and, you know, I'm really lost, or so, like not lost, but it's, it's really windy, I would probably head indoors right away. But uh, because we are here and it's kind of safe from wolves, I'm going to take this opportunity to loot these cattails here. I'm also going to loot the cattail heads because they can be used for tinder. And I'm also going to loot the rose hips. Now, what's great about Timberwolf Mountain is that you have basically two different strategies you can use. You can, of course, stay in Timberwolf Mountain and just hang about here, but I don't think that's the best. Oh, there's the bear over there. We're going to grab these as well. 
But depending on the loot that you get here in the Mountaineer's Hut, it will dictate whether it's possible for you to actually go to the summit right away or not. Because the way the Long Dark works is that there are loot tables. There are sets of loot. And uh, when you start an interloper run, the game will choose one of these four sets of loot. Now, you can look these up, they are called loot tables, they exist and are created by Athenon and uh, a few other people. And you can use them if you like and learn where everything is. Now, I don't personally do that because I feel it breaks the immersion. I do know where quite a lot of the loot is just from experience, but I do feel like knowing exactly where everything is kind of breaks the immersion of the game. However, there's one exception that I do know and I have learned, and that is Timberwolf Mountain. Because the loot that you get here in the Mountaineer's Hut will determine exactly where the hacksaw is. And you need the hacksaw to go to the summit. Or that is to say, you don't need it, of course. You can just go up to the summit without a hacksaw, but you won't be able to loot it. So what's the point in doing that? So we're gonna see what we have here. And basically what we're looking for is we're going to see if the fishing hut or the mountaineer's hut itself has a hammer. The hacksaw can also be here. The hacksaw can be in the mountaineer's hut, which would be great. That's problem solved. But it could also not be there. If so, what we want to do is see whether a hammer is around in either of the buildings. And that will tell us whether the hacksaw is on the summit or not. And I will explain all of this even more when I get closer and have looted it. Once I get inside Mountaineer's Hut, I'm going to use some maps to explain what's happening, and I'm going to explain what I'm talking about in terms of probabilities. But outside of the loot table of Mountaineer's Hut, I don't know the system of loot because I don't see the point. It's more fun to just look around. But for Tim of Mountain, it has such a big impact on the game. So over here is the wolf, we can ignore him, and now we're going to check this fishing hut first. And it looks like we have driving gloves, but no hammer. Okay, so let's loot. Scrap metal, we'll take that. Let's have a look around here, doesn't look like anything. And let's head to the actual mountain itself. Let's check over here quickly first to get some cattails, and then we'll move on. Let's grab these. Always check these boats just in case there is uh, some loot hidden. As long as you can find little like containers and dog food and stuff, nothing here. If you are playing on lower difficulties, make sure you check the piers because these like pillars or whatever they're called, they can have hatches uh, buried into them, like the, as if someone like hit the uh, pier with the hatchet. Okay, we are taking cold damage, but I wouldn't worry too much about cold damage. You know, you want to take your time a little bit, because damage taken from cold can always be regenerated. So, alright, but that's enough. Let's head into the hut itself, get situated, and do a little bit of a planning of what we're going to do. And I'll tell you all about what we're going to do for the rest of this tutorial. Let's get inside first and loot everything. We'll grab this note, because why not? And we'll look around. Let's loot this. And then here is a sewing kit, and very often it's easy to miss there's something behind the crate, you can see it here. There's a summit soda today, we're gonna grab that. And then there's usually something to wear under here, we got a ski jacket. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Decent conditions, let's grab that, let's put on the driving gloves too. First aid kit, that's not guaranteed, it's not always there, but clothing is always there in some form or another. And we got a candy bar, we got a fishing book. We got something in here probably. Scarf. Okay. And we don't need to worry about frostbite anymore because uh, we've got everything covered. We go and grab all this wood. And then that's it, except for the matches. These matches here, they are guaranteed. They will always be there uh, on Interloper. So this is one guaranteed spawn for matches. The other one is in the three way cave. And there's a fire strike on the summit as well. So we're going to take those matches. We're warming up right now, which is great. Let's do a little bit of sit rep for inventory first. What have we got? We got a bunch of tinder. And we got okay clothing, I guess. We got quite a lot of cattails, which is great. We don't have any water, though. 
and we got some books and some other stuff. I need one more of these lichens here. Okay, so let me tell you what we're going to do for this run right now, and I'm going to revert to my trusted maps and tell you what's going to happen. Because I already know right now where the Haxor is. The Haxor is on the summit. That means we can go to the summit already right now. Of course, we don't have a bedroll, which means we're going to have to take a little detour, which is Ash Canyon. But you don't have to do this. You can head to Pleasant Valley instead and just continue going that way and looting instead. So I'm going to leave a timestamp in case you want to do that. But before you do that, let me explain what's going to happen. So let me pause the game and go out to my trusted maps. Hold on in one second. I should be here. So here we are. This is Timberwolf Mountain using the charcoal maps because I think that's a bit more representative of what you would see in the game. Now, where did we spawn? We spawned about, actually it's green for spawn. We spawned here. This is us, roughly, uh, give or take. And our spawn was uh, to just pretty much just head straight uh, down towards these little cliffs here. And then we uh, walked down on the map here and looted some cattails, and then we went to Tim Wolf Mountain Hut. And this is where we are now. The other spawn you can get is right over here. Uh, roughly, I don't know exactly, it's like roughly here. If you spawn there, it's also a decent spawn. What you can do then is just turn around right away and head down, and then to the left into this three-way cave here. It's called three-way because it goes three ways and there's always matches in here always and there's also a torch and if that happens you grab it then you continue on the left and over here there's a cave you go into that cave you get some coal you go through it and you come out on the other side uh, where the engine is I don't know if it's exactly here but you get the idea and once you're there you're just gonna go straight down here there's like a little path you can billy goat and then head down to the river and then down to Mountainous Hut. So it would be that's how you would do it, if that's how you spawned. Okay, now, one thing to note is that you can tell where the Haxor is going to be based on what you found here in the Hut region. There are basically four options. Maybe I can do text for this. Let's see, can you see the text on the side? Yeah, I guess so. So number one is uh, you find uh, nothing. That's one of them. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Let's move it a little bit over here. Like, there we are. The other option is you found the Haxor. We're going to call it Haxor in Hut, in the Mountainous Hut. The third option is you found the Hammer in the Fishing Hut. And the fourth option is you found the Hammer in the Mountainous Hut. These are basically the four options that can happen uh, if you spawn here. Now, what does this mean? Well, knowing what you have here will tell you the rest, uh, well, of where the Haxor is in the region. If you were to find the Haxor in the mountainous hut, well, good on you, then you already have the Haxor, so you know where it is. It was actually here in the hut. But if you found uh, nothing, or if you found the hammer in the mountainous hut, so this should this should have been an H, sorry. If you one of these happened, actually let's do a color code, that'd be easier. Uh, we can do blue. If if you found nothing, you found no hammer in either the fishing hut or the mountainous hut, then the hacksaw will be at the summit itself. The hacksaw will be here at the summit. All right? That's where the hacksaw is. If, however, it turned out that you found the hammer in the fishing hut. Well, then uh, that's the worst one. That's unfortunately the one where there is no hacksaw. So if you turned out that you did find a hammer in the fishing hut, you unfortunately have found the loot table spawn where there is no hacksaw in Timberwolf Mountain. So there is no hacksaw to be found and there's no point going to the summit. There's only any point going to the summit uh, if you leave Tim Wolf Mountain and come back with a hacksaw and ideally a bedroll. So unfortunately, that's a one in four chance that that happens. And that pretty much leaves you with the only option, which is to leave Tim Wolf Mountain. In which case you go to the west 
and you come back down to Pleasant Valley. And once you're in Pleasant Valley, what you want to do is go to the plane crash and loot that. Uh, can you see this? Okay, yeah, it's, it's okay. And then you go to, uh, oh, uh, hold on. Then you go to the barn and loot that. Not barn, sorry, the farm. Then you go to the barn and loot that. You can optionally go to Thompson's Crossing and loot that. And then you go, uh, oh, I think I would recommend going to Signal Hill and loot that. That's a lot of loot there. And then you head to Mount, uh, to Mystery Lake. So that's quite a good, uh, good direction to take, I would say. However, if you know where the hacksaw is, either because you found the hacksaw or because you know where it is, the alternative is to drop by Ash Canyon and then loot the backpack, sleep there and come out on the other side and go to the summit. And that's what we're going to do now. I'll show you briefly. We're not going to do the whole Ash Canyon tour. It's not going to be as long as the Ash Canyon spawn video I have. It's going to be much faster, but I'll show you what we're going to do. Because I now know the hacks is on the summit, I am going to go this way. I'm going to go down to the ravine here and then leave for Ash Canyon. I will then come out of Ash Canyon on this side here near the Bitter Marsh. The great thing about that is there will be a lot of cattails here to loot, probably a hundred cattails, so lots and lots of food. We're going to go through all of this and head all the way to Angler's Den. Once we're in Angler's Den, we're going to head, uh, we might rest, but then we're going to go to the gold mine. So we're going to go up through the Broad Falls, through the Wolf Nest, into a cave that's here, and we'll come out somewhere near Minus Folly. We're not going to loot Minus Folly, though we could if we wanted to. There's usually an extra stim there, sometimes some other loot, but we're not going to do that this time. We're just going to go yada, yada, yada through the whole plateau movement all the way to the mining camp and loot the backpack. And now here's the important part. Once we've done that, we're going to head down towards the exit for Tim Wolf Mountain. But just like in the Ash Canyon tutorial I told you about, we're actually going to go up to Climber's Cave, over the plateaus and to the sheltered cove. And here we're going to sleep. So we're fully rested, completely fully rested. And then we're going to go back to Tim Wolf Mountain and we'll come out at the deer clearing we're going to go from the deer clearing all the way up to the summit through probably the cave and climb the summit and loot all that good stuff. And then we'll head back down <laughs> to the mountain itself. Now, that's not shouldn't take too long, maybe an hour of gameplay. I'm not really sure, but not too long. Uh, however, if you are watching this video and you have watched my Ash Canyon tutorial, and you don't really fancy watching me going through Ash Canyon, albeit from a slightly different route and faster, but if you don't fancy watching that, you just want to see what happens next, I will leave a t two timestamps in the description for you. I will leave one timestamp when I come out here at the re-entering Tim Wolf Mountain before I go to the summit, and I will also leave another timestamp for when I'm back here in the mountainous hut. So if you're wondering what would happen if this is your spawn, you're playing uh, in, uh, the interloper run and you spawned in Ash Canyon, uh, in Tim Wolf Mountain, sorry, but you got maybe this bad loot where there's no, there's no hacksaw, or you don't want to go to Ash Canyon, you just want to go to Pleasant Valley and you'd like to know what happens next. What you can do is you can skip the whole Ash Canyon thing, just go to the video description below and find the timestamp, click it, and hopefully, as long as I haven't died, I will be back here in Tim Wolf Mountain Hut, or Mountaineer's Hut rather, and you can watch the rest of the run from there. Or if you want to see what happens in the summit, you can click on the other timestamp. And then when you click on it, I'll say hello and welcome back. And then just pretend as if that's where we continued. Now, if that's not what you're going to do, I hope you stick with And we're going to take a trip through Ash Canyon and come out on the other side with, at the summit with a backpack, with a stim, and there should be a hacksaw up there so we can loot all that good stuff on like day two or three. So what do you say? Let's do that, shall we? Let's jump right in and go back to the game. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. We're gonna head to Ash Canyon and grab the uh, backpack and then head to the summit right away while rested. Worst case scenario, if we're not rested enough to go to the summit, 
we can actually just um, uh, we can uh, use a stim. Now I think that uh, oh did I use my torch? Oh yeah, no, it blew out, didn't it? And uh, no, I don't have a torch. What am I talking about? I'm thinking of a different run. <laughs> I'm losing. Uh, I had a pause there, and when I came back, I couldn't remember what I was doing. Uh, if you ever see me in the run, sometimes enter exit the building or pausing the game or maybe passing time for one hour, it's usually because I'm saving the game and returning to the tutorial at a later time. Okay, so I'm actually going to start a fire just to get torches going. So let's start by getting a fire. So we need to use matches for this first fire. But once we have it started, we can grab torches and we don't need to use matches again. So, oh, and we fail. Work. Oh, it's going to keep going. We can use the, the cedar wood, that's fine. We're going to keep doing this until we manage. Um, and then we'll grab some torches, but we'll make some water as well. And we'll organize the inventory a little bit and then we'll head out. It looks like the weather has turned for the worst. Uh, uh, that's just how it is sometimes. Let's see what's it like. We got. We got a whole blizzard on our hands. Uh, that's not great, but we can go out in the blizzard, but I'd rather not. So I think we're going to have to wait this one out. We might have to go to Ash Canyon in the dark, because we can't stay here. Well, I mean, I guess we could. We could have a lot of cattails. So we could stay until the morning if we wanted to, I suppose. Uh, we'll see how the weather turns out. So first, let's do this. Uh, let's also put some more wood on, and uh, I think let's do some inventory management. So first off, we're not going to bring these books where we're going. We can pick them up later. Uh, we only have one book, actually. Okay, and not this we don't need either. Uh, I guess that's about it. Yes. Shame we don't have any cloth. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this on the table here to pick up later. Uh, and then I, while this is boiling the water, I'm going to start making some of these uh, mushrooms and stuff. Preparing that so I can make teas. And then we'll just see how the weather turns out. If it's really bad, then we'll probably stay here for the night, I think. We don't really have much choice. Let's keep making some of these. Seven minutes. The weather's still looking pretty bad. Keep making water. And keep making these. We'll cook them later. Right now, I just want water. Keep making water. And we can make two more of these. That's the last of that. Oh, it stopped. I think we might take advantage of that, actually. Yes, this is good enough. Oh, the bear is over there. It's late, but not that late. So we're going to take the opportunity and we're going to head to Ash Canyon right now because we're not doing that bad. Uh, I'm going to put some more sticks on and grab some torches. That's a really bad torch, but we don't have that much wood or anything. So we're going to just take what we can. I want more torches. Uh, oh wow, these are really bad torches, but what, what can you do? Uh, I might actually put on one of these just to get more torches. I want at least three torches, but because it's early game, I will take what I can and grab all the torches that I can. I might actually cook one of these teas while I'm doing this whole torch thing. And then we can go after. Alright, that's good. We got a lot of torches now. The weather's kind of died down. It's still light, and it's going to be light for a little while. The moon on the upper right uh, uh, clock is coming, but what's going to happen is it's going to slowly get darker and darker, and then once it starts getting very dark, there'll be a short window where it's actually going to get brighter as it transitions to the night, and then it gets very dark again. We're going to have a torch, and we're not going to go really that far, so I think we'll be okay. But yeah, if you're wondering, um, when the moon on the clock is straight in the middle, that's when it changes to a new day. Okay, we're going to drink a little bit as well. And then we're going to uh, put one stick on. 
Then we'll grab this and then we'll go. Let's take that and let's go. Alright, so let's head to Ash Canyon. I think I'm actually even going to run for quite a bit because um, we got a lot of stamina and I want to take advantage of the light. And we're really not that far from uh, from Ash Canyon. We're going to go down to Echo Ravine and we're going to loot cattails there and then we're going to head to Angler's Den. So we got a plan. And then we're going to get the um, we're going to get the backpack and then we're going to get to the summit. So this will be a, a quick early summit with loot featuring a detour to Ash Canyon. But you don't need to go this way. You can, re even if you know where the Haxo is, even if you have the Haxo, you don't need to do this route I'm doing now. You know, there is some risk to it. You could just head to Pleasant Valley right away and that will be a very good run. It will be a good run. You'll, you'll get lots of loot through the plane crash. And we're gonna go there after the summit as well. That will be part of this tutorial. We'll see if I continue all the way to Forging, but we'll definitely go the Pleasant Valley. So again, if you want to skip that whole thing, you could just go in the timestamp below until we get there. I'm not sure what happened to the bear, uh, but in any case, we don't really need to worry about the bear right now. Now we got quite a lot of uh, of health, so I'm not too worried about being cold, but I am nevertheless going to drink this tea. Let me just loot this. There we are. Let's drink this tea. It will warm us up, it will uh, hydrate us a little bit. And we are also now full warmth, as you can see. And it warms up, it gives us a little bit of warmth bonus as well. So it's all good stuff. All right, and then we're gonna head to Ash Canyon. Hopefully the wind won't pick up and blow this torch out, but it doesn't look like that's the case. I want to use these bad torches first if I can because they are very bad, they don't last very long, and they take up inventory space, you know, 0.25 kilos each. So I'm going to try and use the bad torches first if I can. If you want to check your stamina without actually using it, all you need to do is look to the side and walk sideways, and then click the sprint button like this. Then you will check sprint without actually using it. Or you could just stop quickly like this, check, and then keep going. That's another way to do it. You are likely to encounter some wolves in Ash Canyon on the way to Angler's Den, and I'll show you all about how to deter the wolves while we're at it. Uh, but you can also check out my Ash Canyon video for another tutorial on how to do that. The only thing is I hope there won't be an aurora, because there is an aurora, that's going to make things a little bit tricky with the wolves, but we'll see what happens. One thing at a time. Aurora wolves is a... Uh, that's... they're a whole new breed. All the tricks that I've shown you in previous videos about uh, wolves, they will not work on Aurora Wolves. On Aurora Wolves, pretty much nothing works. You just gotta shoot them, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you're lucky, the distress pistol will scare them up too. And of course, the flashlight, but we don't have the flashlight on Interloper, so can't do anything about that. <coughs> okay, let's go into Ash Canyon, if you'll let me load. There we are. All right, so we are now in the southeastern part of Ash Canyon. And we're going to go through the marsh and pick up a ton of cattails so that we have lots of food. And then we're going to head to Angler's Den. Now, if you've never been to Ash Canyon before, come, there's two entrances and exits. This is one of them. And there's another one that leads to the deer clearing. And then this uh, exit here, it's more dangerous, but you get more loot going this way. The alternative would be to come out of the deer clearing uh, and the benefit of going that route is you'll get a lot of coal and other things doing it uh, and if you do that you kind of end up over here you can go out and about and around and then over climbers cave and plateau and down the angle just then we're just going to take go this way though very easy shortcut by the way just go down here and really easy we got one wolf over there, or was it two wolves? Two wolves! You might use these wolves as a little tutorial, provided that it doesn't get too windy, and we have a torch, we do, we can get rid of these wolves. Now the wolves, I'll do this tutorial again, uh, the wolves are no problem at all, 
because they are afraid of fire. So when this wolf charges me, he's going to stop and be idle for about five seconds. And in that window, I can scare off the wolf. So there he comes, he's gonna stop, and then I can throw the torch at him, boom, and he runs away. That's one way of doing it. So throwing the torch at the wolf will stop the charge and he will flee, no problem. Then there's another way to do it, which is to aim at the wolf with a weapon and that will also make the wolf flee if you have a torch. If you don't have a torch, it won't work. So let's demonstrate that as well. Uh, he can also flee by you just dropping the torch. So let's try that with this wolf here. Let's uh, we'll loot some cattails while he's busy howling. There's, the other, uh, there's another wolf. Okay. There's two wolves. Okay, here we go. So when this wolf charges me now, I'm going to select my stone by clicking two on my keypad. And this should make him flee. Yeah. Oh, he fled anyway. Okay. Here comes the other one. If you drop the torch, the wolf can flee by you simply dropping the torch. Like this. Which he did. And usually when they are idle like that, when it is charging you and then stopping and looking at you, if you drop the torch, which you do by just selecting a weapon, they will flee. Uh, just like happened, like it, it happened now. However, you can also just drop the torch before they do the charge, and that will lead them to run away when you aim a weapon at them. This also works with campfires or flares, so they're very easy to control. Uh, where do they go? I'll show if I get another wolf. But shortly speaking, you can also select a rock like this and aim it at a wolf. And if they've aggroed you, they'll start the charge. This one's still running. And once they get close to the torch, they'll run away. Very, very easy. So wolves are really not an issue at all. The only issue is if the, the wind blows out this fire. Uh, that would be really bad. Uh, then uh, we're kind of defenseless against wolves. If that happens, since we don't have any weapons at all, we really only have three options. One is to throw a rock at the wolf and hope to hit it on the head. If you do that, the wolf will run away and flee. How is this? Alright, now I can start using the other torches. So that's one, you can throw a uh, rock at the wolf and hit him in the head and that will cause him to run away. Uh, or you can uh, break its pathing, like you can try and get away from it, make it uh, lose line of sight of you, um, maybe climb a little slope and jump down it and that will sometimes break the pathing and that will flee. Or you can lure a animal into it, like a deer or a rabbit, and then it will attack that instead. Those are pretty much your only three options. All right, we're getting cold now, but we're not that far off, and we have uh, a lot of health, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh, matches. That's lucky. We got some extra matches. We're not really going to need them, but they are handy. And then we're going to check uh, the fishing hut here that's broken, because you can sometimes find a storm lantern here, so we're going to check for that and I am free to use my sprint because I'm gonna sleep in Angleston anyway. Doesn't look like there's any storm lantern today. Okay. Let's check here though. Cold. Usually it is cold. Up there is the homestead respite, which we're not gonna go to in this run. It is the, the rope anchor to get up is over there. You need to attach a rope to it, but it is possible to climb up this way by following the the path, uh, there's a ramp you can kind of see that go up there and all the way over and you can you can actually get up there without a rope. It is also possible to do it this way but it's a little clunky but it is possible. But we're not going to go up there either way. Oops, I picked up the wrong one. Let me just do a quick check. Uh, yes, okay, we are good. We're going to loot all the cattails we can now on the way to the Angler's Den hut. Uh, not every cattail in here, that's going to take too long and there's too many. But we're going to loot everything that's kind of in our path. And we should end up with probably something like a hundred cattails. Which means we're going to have a lot and a lot of food. And we're not going to be really worried about food at all. We can go for well fed right away. Uh, so we'll be golden. 
Uh, I will loot the ones on this side of the uh, lake, though, or whatever this is. I guess it's a swamp. <coughs> We've got so many. I'm not going to pick up the cattail heads, though, because even though they are tinder, I already have about 20 of them. I might need to make a fire because I'm running out of torches and I would like to keep my torches against the wolves in this area. So let's make sure that I do not... Oops. Uh, I might have enough. <coughs> so let's grab all of these. We're going to take some cold damage, but as long as you don't get hypothermia, it's good. We're going to get all of these ones here along the edges. If you're worried about your health, um, you can just take a, st a break, a stop for a second and make a fire to warm yourself up. No problem. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And just take a, you know, a little bit of a break, warm yourself up and then keep moving. It's really no problem to do that at all. That will be the safe and correct way of playing. But I'm not too worried about that because uh, Hyperferm is quite a while away. We have a lot of health. And we're not really that far from Anglin's Den in safety, so I'm really not that worried about it. Only thing I'm worried about is making sure I have enough torches, and I only have two left. Uh, I think that should be enough though. Okay, this is close to what's uh, left of the cattail, so I'm going to go over here and loot a couple more on the way to the waterfall. Oh, we have a moose. The Ash Canyon moose is out, and I do not want to mess with this moose. Uh, because that will ruin climbing days. We're not going to be able to get to the summit if we get stumped by the moose. I mean, it is possible to do it, I guess, but I wouldn't bother doing it. So we're going to circumvent the moose completely. Hello, Mr. Moose. Uh, and ignore him altogether, uh, because <laughs> that's going to that's gonna spell disaster. I highly recommend that in areas such as this, uh, Ash Canyon, Tim Wolf Mountain, maybe even Hush River Valley. I highly recommend that later in the game when you are settled and you have a bow and start making bases, you should keep extra bandages and extra rosehip tea in these areas. So for example if you have uh, Anglis Den as your base here, you should have extra rosehip tea and bandages, at least four of each. Uh, the reason being that if you were to get stumped by a moose, you need those things to recover. And if you don't have them, you're not going to be able to climb anymore. And you need to be able to climb in some of these areas. Uh, the most important one is probably Hush River Valley. Just because if you go down into the moose valley there and get stumped, <laughs> you're not actually going to be able to get back out uh, without uh, medicine or, uh, or a stim. So, we have circumvented the moose. We have a lot of cattails. I had to forgo a couple of them because the moose was in the way. Let's head to Angler's Den. We're going to cross two wolf barriers getting there. Uh, right now we are approaching one and there are some uh, wolves here as well who shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a problem. It's usually just one wolf here in this area that I call Tim. Uh, but sometimes there's a second wolf that I call Mike. And we'll see if they are both there now. I can tell that the sound is glitching a little bit, like going in and out. And I apologize if that's the case. All right. So there is a wolf barrier here. The wolf barrier is more or less where these cattails are here. And that means that there's an invisible barrier that the wolves cannot cross. They cannot cross this barrier. So if they chase you, uh, they're not going to be able to follow you past this line and they will just stop. It's, it's like roughly here. I don't remember exactly where it is, but the wolves won't follow you beyond that point. However, I have now entered their territory. I can hear that they are around, because I can hear them howling. So there are a couple of wolves. Well, mm, I wasn't actually paying attention to the howls. I, could, I only heard one howl. If you hear a wolf howling, the other wolves will respond to the howl, and that way you can find out how many wolves are actually in the area. I only had one though. Oh, no, there's two. So we got Mike and Tim today. So let's uh, show you how this works. So what, let me show you a wolf trick while we're at it. Uh, as you saw, I can throw the wolf, sorry, throw the torch at the wolf, which will cause it to flee. Or I can drop the torch as it gets close, which will also cause it to flee. But I can also trigger a charge by aiming at the wolf with any weapon and it will trigger a charge. And once it gets close to the torch, it will flee. 
Okay. And there it goes. And it's off. And that's how you scare off a wolf. You can also run at the wolf, and with enough speed, you can make it flee from you. Now, one last thing to show about the wolves before we enter Angus Den. If I can get aggro back, uh, where did the wolf go? Yes, I know he's over there, but... Come on, Wolfie, I need your help for a little bit. Where's the other wolf gone? Come on, help help the, the, the viewers out. Hmm? No? Okay. Well, we'll see if he comes back. If not, I will have to do it another time. But basically, there's an invisible wolf barrier here that the wolves cannot cross. Let's see if we can get the wolf back. We can get, grab these cattails while we wait for the wolf to come back. Uh, usually you don't want to wait for wolves to come back while I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. Okay, where did you go? Oh, wow, he ran away. Wow. Okay. That was uh, unfortunate. But I would like to aggro him anyway because I need his help. In there we are. Okay, here he comes. So let's head this way. We're going to head towards Anglis then. And... The reason I wanted to aggro him is because there is an invisible barrier here that will protect you from wolves. The wolves cannot cross this barrier. It's just an invisible one. It goes roughly from this tree here, this tree right in front of me, across the ice and over, over here, I believe. So actually, I am fairly confident I know where it is. I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to light uh, the last torch. And then I'm going to wait for this wolf to attack me, and he's not going to be able to do it, as you'll see. Yeah, see, he stops. This is, of course, because of the wolf, then the wolf, the torch, and then he tries to get me, and he couldn't do it. <laughs> I was slightly off. The barrier is actually around here, that's why I backed off. So, about there. So, the wolf cannot actually cross this barrier. He will stop and just stand there and, and look at me. Let's see, I'm quite close to hyperfermia, but I should be alright. Let's see if I can show you one more time with him following me around on the barrier. And you can see very clearly what I mean. Uh, come here, Tim. I need your help one more, one more time, Tim. There he is. Yeah, Tim, 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 Tim. Are you coming or what? Yeah, and then we're gonna run. Something's making me feel tired. And the barrier is roughly here. So if I now select a, uh, let's uh, throw this away. I get a stone, and I'll trigger the wolf, and you'll see he won't be able to attack me. He's gonna get stuck. See, he's stuck. He can't cross this barrier. There's like an invisible barrier here, and I can even make him run away if I want to. So you are actually protected against wolves uh, right here in Anglis Den. They can't cross that barrier. So, you know, from experience you'll know exactly where this barrier is. But be careful though, uh, if you're not sure, back back down. Uh, but they will never cross it. So you are completely safe around Anglis Den. So here we are then, let's head inside. Let's warm up, start a fire. And let's loot a couple of these things. And there should usually sometimes there's marine flare. Not today though. So let's go inside. And what we're going to do now? We're going to start a fire because we need more torches. We want to warm up a bit. I took a lot of coal damage doing that, but because I was I knew what I was doing, I wasn't really that worried about it. So let's start a fire. Hopefully this torch won't blow out. Yeah, we'll use uh, <coughs> the cedar wood. So let's warm up and do that first. Oh, we failed. Okay. Let's try again. Damn. Failed again. Now, because uh, we are using the torch, we're not using any matches. We're only using tinder. The tinder is being used to start this fire, or rather to try and start this fire. Uh, but we're not using any matches. In fact, this torch has now followed us all the way from Timberwolf Mountain uh, Hut, uh, or Mountaineer's Hut, 
all the way over here. Turned and we got it. Well. And what we'll do is we'll make some more water. And we'll have a little look around here. Let's just grab grab one for slightly better visibility. So here in Anglis then there is a guaranteed match spawn and it's usually always the same place which is right there. So again if you ever come in here in the dark you can just uh, go straight I need to find food. and then I mean, you can use a can I don't have one now but then crouch down crouch look down a bit and then head to the side and then look around a little bit and you'll find it you find it in the dark and then you have matches very handy let's look around this spray paint which we don't really need I will take this book which I actually could have grabbed to increase the fire starting chance but I wasn't too bothered nothing in there uh, and let's see what's in the trunk if anything nothing in there we got quality tools that's very nice uh, I'm actually gonna take that with what have we there's here? not that many of those and that will speed up arrow crafting as well and yeah, the arrowheads, I forget that you get arrowheads in there. <laughs> we got another can, we got dog food, how big is, how good is that, 47. And another one's 55. Uh, we don't have a can opener though. So that's not the greatest. And I'm gonna grab, no, we don't need that. Uh, we'll take this as a stick, and that's about it for the loot. So we're gonna stay here. Oh wait, I forgot about this. The sh frontier this shooting good. guide, <laughs> which we don't need at all. Okay. So, we're gonna make some wood, uh, so not wood, but torches. And while well, we make some water, so grab some torches. These are not good torches, but I want, yeah, at least, at least six torches, probably more. These are not good torches, it's really not good. I'm having a really, oh, really bad torch luck today, but we're gonna keep grabbing torches because we need them we need them for the journey to the gold mine so now we're gonna head to the gold mine after we had some rest and then we're gonna get the backpack and then we're gonna rest again and then we're gonna pretty much head out of here I'm gonna take some more torches yeah okay that's good I want some good good torches I think we have enough now yeah I think so I'm gonna harvest some of them actually just for, for sticks uh, well, we start with this one, harvest the torch. Uh, a torch is the same as a stick, but you need to harvest it to actually use it. So let's do that. How much water do I actually have? Um, uh, we got a decent amount. I do probably want to make one more though. Okay, we have 90 cattails. We didn't get 100 because of the moose was in, in the way. Uh, these are not great torches, but I guess we'll keep them. Okay, uh, okay, let's grab that. I want to make one more of these before we go to sleep. I'm going to put on some more of these sticks for that. And then I'm going to spend some of this time eating just to get my uh, food up. We're going to also, since we have so many cattails, we're going to go for well fed right away from day one so we can increase our carrying capacity and also our health. So I'm going to keep eating these until I'm full. I wish there was a eat all button here because it would make it so much easier rather than clicking on this thing again and again and again. But well, what are you going to do? If however you wanted to go for the starvation tactic, that is to say uh, save your food, then you have a lot of food now to survive for many many days. The starvation tactic, if you're not familiar with it, is to not eat anything at all except when you sleep. So that when you sleep your meters are full and you can recover health but when you actually play during the time you're up and about you do not eat anything so you take uh, you take food damage starvation damage but it's so little uh, you only take one percent damage per hour so you're probably only going to take about 12 15 percent damage in total from not eating and then when you sleep you're going to recover about 30 percent so you're going to be just fine and you can do that you can starve yourself and then when you go to sleep you need to eat six cattails to make sure you have enough calories to sleep through the night and you want to sleep 10 hours max so that's what if you did that then we would probably have enough food here to last us uh, how much is that if you include these things it will be um, <clears throat> it'll be like 13 days or something like that 
So we can survive a really long time with just this if we really wanted to. We could hang out here in Anglistan, just hang out for about two weeks if we really, really wanted to. Uh, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna go for the welfare bonus right away. Uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna put a stick in here and use that as well. Okay. Then we're gonna sleep in here. Uh, let's also drink first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sleep for ten hours, which is the max you should sleep on interloper. If you sleep longer than ten hours, you are unfortunately going to take damage. Now there is a minor risk that I'm going to get colder tonight, but we are indoors. I don't think it's very likely. So we're going to sleep 10 hours. Go. This should recover 32% health precisely. If I sleep more than 10 hours, we're going to start taking damage from dehydration. So here we are, and I am now dehydrated. I am actually going to sleep the remaining two hours as well. I can tell it's quite windy out, so let's sleep another two hours, so we are fully rested. It sounds like the wind also died out. Actually, it didn't. In fact, it got worse. <laughs> There's a blizzard out now. What we're going to do then is we're going to harvest these, so we get some more wood. We're going to need the wood for later, for when we sleep in the secluded cove. So I'm just going to do that and pass time until the blizzard ends. Alternatively, what we could do, if you would like to have a little trick, is to uh, use the blizzard as a cover, because what we can do is to actually break through the walls by using the blizzard. And in fact, I might do that. I'll show you how that's done, because right now there is a blizzard outside. You can hear there's a blizzard outside while I'm talking. I'll eat some of you can hear there's a blizzard going on outside, and that's not good. It's going to be very cold, You're going to, your clothing is going to be really bad. But there is one upside with the blizzard, one positive side with the blizzard, which is that there are no animals. If you are outdoors and near animals and a blizzard hits, then animals will be near you. And you can risk running into a wolf or a moose or something in a blizzard. That can happen. However, if you are indoors or anywhere else that's not near an animal and you go out in a blizzard, the animals won't be there. So even though a blizzard is really bad, you can actually use it to your advantage because you can cross areas where there will be no wolves. All the wolves will be gone. In this particular case, yeah, we could try it because we have to go through the wolf den lake uh, to the northwest of Angler's Den, where there are four wolves usually. Uh, and we can actually use the blizzard as cover to get through there. It's not too hard to find because the ramp leading up there is right by the river we're walking on. So we can do that. We can give that a try. If you get lost, then just make sure you find the ice and head back to Angler's Den. But let's give it a try. We'll do that. We'll use the blizzard as cover to get through the wolves. <clears throat> we'll pick up some cattails along the way if we can. Now. I know the way from here, but the safest way to get there is to just hug the northern side of the river. So when we come out now, we're going to cross the river and hug the ice, hug the edge of the ice until we get to the ramp. Okay, you can actually kind of see it though, because the, the snow makes some of the trees visible. But just to make it even easier, we're going to go on the other side of this ice here. So our Angler's Den is here, and we're going to hug this side. We're going to run because it's quite cold. There shouldn't be any uh, wolves about because we're in a blizzard. Just hug this, this edge of this ice, keep hugging it, follow it all the way around. We'll grab all of these cattails that we can while we're at it. There shouldn't be any wolves and if there is, that would be weird. If, if that's the case, then this is just very strong wind, but this is a blizzard, so let's grab these. Okay, then you just continue going around the edge here. Continue going around the edge. Oh, bit of a lag there. Until you find this one. Alright, keep going. Keep following the edge here. Until you get to these cattails. And now, after you've found these cattails, you'll notice that now there's an elevation on your right. So now it looks 
taller. Well, before it was kind of flat. So once you found this elevation here, you know you're on the right track. So now you're going to go up this elevation here. You'll see some burnt stuff and you'll find the fire barrel. The fire barrel will also always have uh, food here. Tomato soup. Do -do -do -do. And then you just head up the ramp here. From here it's very easy. You just go under this tree, this big tree here, and just follow the ramp up. And this will lead us all the way to the waterfall. You can see I'm cold, but that doesn't really matter. Follow this, just go all along the edges here until we get to the waterfall. Here we are. And there's a little backpack we can loot. Taking some cold damage, but that's okay. And then we can climb up here. So if you watched my other tutorial in the Ash Canyon spawn, we are now back in the wolf nest where there's four wolves and usually you'd use a torch to get through this. But now because there's a blizzard, there shouldn't be any wolves at all. So we can just go straight through this. <coughs> so let's head up here. a lot of stamina. There's a couple of cattails here to loot as well, which we'll do. There shouldn't be any wolves uh, unless they have spawned in right now, which is unlikely, but uh, I don't think so. Let's loot, the, loot these for more food. We're taking cold damage, so if, you, if you're worried about your health, if you worry about cold, just leave these and come back for them another time. But right now, I want to grab them. It's food, you know? There we are. Okay, now we can run a bit. Just again, follow the ice. If you're not sure, follow the edges of the ice. It will always lead you to safety one way or another. I'm going to go up here. And around this ramp. We're going to come to the top of the waterfall. There's some more cattails. But what's strangely missing? Well, that's wolves. There's no wolves around, as you can see. Which is just great. So we're using the blizzard as a means to avoid handling these wolves. You can just walk straight through, which is great. Again, just uh, cross the ice here. If you're not sure, just hug the ice edge here until it turns. There's a cattail here that's kind of like a landmark. Once you have this cattail here, you'll see that here's the waterfall and you want that uh, in front of you. Then you turn to the right and then you just head straight ahead. Grab some of these. Do I, how many of these do I have actually? I have three, okay. Uh, so we can leave that. Ah, actually, let's grab three more of these. Uh, why, why can't I? What? Hintelin, help me. Okay. <coughs> and you just head down the ramp here. And you can see where you are based on these uh, rocks on your left. Just head down here, or you can go around, it doesn't really matter. And the cave should be pretty much right in front of you right now. So head straight here. If you can't see it, if you just see a wall, like I can see the cave now on the left, but let's say I couldn't see it, or I'm not sure, just head to the wall and then hug the wall. And you'll come out here where the cave is. And voila! There we are. And we found the cave. So that's how you do it. So here we see we actually used a blizzard to our advantage. Uh, we got cold and our clothing also got quite wet, but we used it to our advantage. We basically just uh, decided that uh, we're going to use it to get cover from wolves. So that was quite handy for us, wasn't it? Okay, just give me one second. I'm just going to check uh, something here. Yeah, now we are good. Now, uh, we can't see anything, so we need some light. We only really have matches and torches. Fortunately, there's going to be a waterfall in front of us, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to have to use a match, uh, or two matches rather, because of the atrium we're getting to, but we'll, we'll get to that. So let's start a match. This actually warms us up as well. And then there should be a waterfall right here. And just like in me at my Ash Canyon tutorial, I'll show you how to get through this without taking any, you know, without wetting your clothes or losing the torch. So we'll start by taking off these clothes. You can just double click them and then you'll unequip them. So if they are unequipped, they won't get wet. 
Then you can place the torch on the ground. You can just throw it, or you could equip a, uh, a stone like that. And then what you want to do is you want to grab this torch on the other side by right-clicking at it to place it like this. Right-click it. So I'm going to do that and walk backwards. Actually, I'm going to walk sideways because then it's a little bit easier. So we're going to do that. Let's go. There I am through the waterfall. Let's find somewhere we can go uh, to place this. Uh, okay, I'm having... There we are. Why can't I place it? There we are. There we go. You can see here's the waterfall. <laughs> so I walked straight through this waterfall. I got I think I got caught right here actually. <laughs> That's why I struggled a bit. But I got straight through it and I got my torch. It didn't go out. And now I am good. And we found a marine flare. That's handy. That could, that could be useful. That's very useful against wolves in uh, when there's wind. Okay, let's light another torch. Get some more light going. And let's re-equip our clothing. And we are warming up now. So I'm not worried about the hypothermia because we are warm. And let's just see here. There's usually some coal here. We want as much wood as possible. Not just to warm up and to, um, y you know, just have coal and, and wood in general. But because when we finish going through the gold mine, we might want to sleep in a secluded cave and we need lots of wood for that to make sure we don't freeze so we're gonna go up here we're gonna the next place we're gonna sleep by the way will be the gold mine i'm gonna try and save some stamina for the actual gold mine run and i think we're gonna warm up not right here but at the exit i guess we could do it here let's grab some more coal and we're coming to the atrium right up here. There we are. There's usually some loot here as well that we're going to look at to see what there is today. There is the rope right here that we need to climb. There's a little backpack we can loot. And we got some any good crackers. Eat. That's nice. Uh, so usually there's more loot than that, but I guess not today. Oh, here we are. We got some ketchup chips. We got a corpse. Uh, some coal. Is any more coal? It doesn't look like there is. No. Let's light another torch. Now, one thing. Uh, it is actually possible, like I explained in the other tutorial, it is possible to actually get this torch up. Because we're going to climb up this rope now. And it's not actually possible to throw the torch up there because it's too too high. So even if you really tried, I don't think you can actually get it up there. It's too high. Yeah, it's, it's close, but it's, at least I never managed to do it. If you can do it, you know, then great. But it's too high. It's you can't you can't get it up there. No, see. But what you can do is you can throw it up here and then go and collect it. So you could throw it uh, up. Uh, if you can manage, it's actually easy to throw it up there. Let's see if we can do that. Oh, no, I wasn't able to do that. But. What you can do, you can throw it up here, for example. Oh, wait, I couldn't do that either. <laughs> but let's try again. There we go. Okay, now the torch is up there. And what you now can do is, see it's burning there, you can climb up the rope and then navigate in the dark around and over to this ledge here. Then you can climb down, grab the torch, throw it back up the ledge. Then you go back down here, climb the rope again, go around in the dark and pick up your torch. So it is possible to throw a torch up here, but it's such a pain in the ass, I wouldn't even bother trying it. I rather just use the match. So we're gonna go back up here. There we are. We'll get another torch, and we're just going to use a match for this. And there we are. When, because going around and doing that is, is just too much of a pain. Before we leave, though, I do want to start the fire because there was a blizzard out when we left. So I'm first going to check this area here for loot, then I'm going to start the fire, and when I'm warm enough, maybe have a few better torches, we'll, uh, we'll head on out. But first, let's check here. There's usually loot. Sometimes there's a wolf carcass as well. 
today we have a wolf carcass. I'm not gonna harvest this though, we don't really need this. I guess we could if we really wanted to. Uh, we could grab this hide. And, you know, we could start a fire here. In fact, we could just start a fire here, I suppose. And then what we could do, uh, we could harvest the hide and the guts and take it with us because we're not really going to be encountering any wolves at all from now on all the way until almost the summit. So we could do that, but it's not really any need to do that because you're not going to be able to use the, con the content until you, um, until you kill more wolves. Okay, so let's, uh, let's have, uh, we can eat this, I think. And I think we'll have a drink. And then I'm going to make some water and I'm going to make some tea. So first we'll make water there and then we'll make some teas as well. Anything else to do here? Uh, I think we'll harvest this as a bad torch. There we are. And I'm also going to grab, oh, that's a good torch. How many torches do I have? Ah, uh, that's pretty good. Six. I think I would like one more. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. And we got eight minutes for that. Uh, I think I will prepare this. We should be fine. Okay, and let's spoil that. And we'll make the, the bandage, the old man's wound dressing, just in case we were to get bitten by something, which we shouldn't be. <laughs> up here but you know you know just in case let's do that let's make another one and let's make some more water we'll do one more batch of water now we'll put the fur on because it's so heavy and let's make some more of these for warming up it's actually going to get dark soon but that's okay and now we're going to head uh we'll do one more of these then we're going to head to the uh gold mine Gonna put these next to the fire to warm them up. 19 minutes, that's good. Uh, I think we can then. Is there more to craft? Yes, there is. We'll make one more of these then. And look, well, that's plenty. Alright, yeah, we got it. Okay. We'll grab another tool. We'll grab good torches only now because we're leaving this. That's okay. That's a little bit better. That's okay as well. And then we'll grab one more. And there we are. We'll take this. And now we're going to head to the gold mine. And it's possible that the blizzard is still ongoing outside. If that happens, then the torch is going to blow out. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to head straight to the gold mine. Blizzard or no blizzard. However, what you could do is, if you're in a cave and you're not really sure if there's a blizzard outside or not, and you don't want to risk the torch blowing out, what you could do is pretty straightforward, really. <laughs> you just leave the torch uh, right, right here, and then you go outside. And if it's a blizzard, then you just go back inside and you pick up your torch, so you don't lose the match. In our case, though, we're going to keep moving regardless. So we're going to just go outside. And if it's windy, if it's windy. <coughs> so let's have a look. Okay. Yeah, and it's not windy. The blizzard has ended. We spent, how long did we spend in there? Like two hours or something? That's also why I decided to take the chance of going outside because uh, the blizzard had been going on for an hour and a half or so in Angler's Den. And blizzards usually don't last longer than about four hours so I had a good chance of using the blizzard to escape the wolves like cross that area uh, and uh, in addition there was a chance of it ending when I came out so that was a deliberate choice. If we go this way now, we go to uh, Mol Miner's Folly and the dreaded bear. I hate that bear. I call that bear Boris uh, because on my main run where I've survived 900 days, I have killed Boris five times and out of those five times, he has mauled me four times. And that's pretty much the only bear that consistently mauls me. I hate that bear. 
You could go that way. There's, there will be some loot in Minus Folly and Foreman's Retreat. You can also get another stim if you're lucky. It's not always there, but it's used sometimes in the first aid kit. And we're not going to do that. We're going to go this route to Minus, the Minus, to Gold Mine and get the backpack so we can leave. Uh, over here, there's also a bit of FPS issues there. Uh, there's sometimes a rope. And there is a rope today. And I think we could take the rope just to illustrate getting this. back down to the minus, the, the, the gold mine rather. So I'm going to be a bit heavy carrying that. We don't really need to take the rope. It's actually very easy to climb down to the gold mine without the rope. It's a very, very easy uh, uh, billy goating down. It's one of the easiest ones in the game. But we're still going to take it just for the sake of it. And because it's late in the day and it's not windy and I have a torch, uh, we're not really that cold, so we're really, really good right now. We can pretty much get there without taking any damage. Usually there is, yep, here we are, there is a granola bar hidden in the snow. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna grab some of these sticks as well. And I'm actually going to take and drink one of these teas to warm up a little bit. And now I'm gonna uh, be even less cold. All right, we're gonna run though. I'm gonna get tired doing that, but who cares? I just want to get there as fast as I can. So let's cross these bridges and just get there. You don't have to really worry about these bridges or falling. You'll only fall down if you happen to peek through one of the gaps on the side. You can't fall down on the bottom. All right, so now begins the long journey to the gold mine. It's not that long, I guess, but I guess it's a little bit annoying uh, because uh, we have to climb a few of these like regular climbing, uh, the rock climbs, whatever you want to call it. It's actually kind of strange in the game that you can't climb ropes if you're heavy or tired, but you can climb the regular rock uh, climbs, which is weird, but oh well. But we're going to go a little bit back and forth, cross a few bridges, and then we're going to get to the gold mine. And we're also going to see what kind of loot we get today in the little alcove that's on the way to the gold mine. Maybe we're lucky, maybe we'll get something good. There's maple, which we're not going to need. We're going to grab all of these things. Uh, I'm one of those players that very often leave uh, roll sips and mushrooms around uh, for later use on my main run and actually on my main run there are several places that still have mushrooms and roll sips on them uh, but in the early game especially I would recommend just looting everything really because you need it for well for warmth is one thing but mostly you just want to do it to level cooking faster so I would recommend looting everything you find in the beginning once you're settled once you have a uh, uh, once you have a bowl and you can start hunting, and then I wouldn't worry about it as much. You can loot them if you want. Just make sure you always have bandages and you're ready for, for a bleed or something like that. And make sure you have rose hips tea to spare in case you get stumped by a moose. That's really the most important thing. Okay, and then there should be some wood on the right here. We're going to pick up that wood and take it with us. We are going to be heavy, but we are also going to sleep in the gold mine. And then we're taking the wood with us so that we can sleep in the secluded corner and get warmth and f fatigue. And then we're going to head to Timwolf Mountain and Summit because I am 99% sure that the um, might have to drop some gear. The hacksaw is on the summit, so we're going to do that. But we're not doing as much Ash Canyon exploration as we did last time in the tutorial. We're just going to get to the gold mine and then sleep. We're actually really only doing this. The real reason we're going to Ash Canyon is to sleep after climbing a rope, so that we can enter the deer clearing with almost full stamina and therefore climb the summit without a um, without a stim that's what we're doing but as a bonus we'll be getting the um, oops 
Oh, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> As a bonus, we'll be getting the technical backpack. Ugh. Yeah, that's one of the little interactions with the long dark. That's a little bit silly. Sometimes that happens. I'm just going to jump down here rather than climbing back down. All right, let's do this. Let's see if I can actually loot this. There we are. Then we're going to throw this up. It's usually best to throw it on the side. I failed. Side here is better though. So let's try again. Let's go. There we go. Now we climb up. Sometimes the, the torch will be blocked. You'll try and throw the torch up and it will be blocked by the actual climb. Like it won't allow you to throw it up. Like I'm not sure if that's the case here, but we can try. Uh, yeah, you see, it did happen. If I throw the torch right up here, it will hit this invisible wall. See, boom. It's kind of like the developers don't want you to do this. But instead, if you just throw it on the side here, it usually works. There you go. And a bit silly, really, that they, <laughs> they done that. <coughs> but that's how it works. That's how you get the torch up there. Okay. And now we should be approaching the little warm uh, alcove up here, where you could, if you're very lucky, you'll find a bear coat already made right here, which is going to be amazing. But it's quite rare. I've only found it once before. But you can also find a storm lantern or a rope. So again, if you don't know about this, when you come to this area right here, I can loot some sticks while we're at it, I guess. Come to this area right here, this little passageway. You'll see this little campfire in front of you. And you'll be like, oh, that's a, that's a nice area, a bit distracting. It's actually not a campfire, it just it looks like a campfire, it's just wood. So you loot this, and you loot this, and then you grab the wood, and then most people just, they just move on. But you need to turn around here and check behind you because over here is the secret loot area. And it looks like we actually hit the jackpot. Can you believe it? Look at this. We found the bear coat. Ooh, can you believe it? Wow, wow, wow. That is insane. <laughs> we got the golden luck. We got the bear coat and it's at 55%. Can you believe that? And a book as well. This is only the second time I've actually found it. And uh, that is a, is a very good and very lucky start. And that's one of the reasons why this detour is also worth it. So now we have a bear coat. Look at that. Which gives us three warmth. In addition to what we already have, which is just really, really good. So now we are really well protected uh, against the elements and animals, really. This early in the game on day two. I think we're on day two, aren't we? Let's see. Yeah, day two. So, uh, that's another reason to take this little detour if you spawn in Timberwolf Mountain, because you have a chance of getting the bear coat. Can you believe that? Uh, so now we're going to head to the gold mine then. I'm quite heavy because I'm tired and I, I found the bear coat, which is really heavy as well. But, you know, that's, no, that's okay. That's worth it. Um, but yeah, taking this detour via the gold mine, which you don't need to do. We can just head straight to the air clearing. And we can uh, go through and go up and sleep in the, the little bed that's um, in the other side by Ash Cannon. We can just do that. But taking the little detour going via Angler's Den and then here gives us all those cattails. It gives us the gold mine and it gives us this bear coat at least today. And again, remember, there's a stim right here. When you come, come to this area, remember to look to your left. And here is our stim that's always there. This, stuff will come this is the guaranteed Ash Canyon stim. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. So the so taking this little detour, which isn't really that long, it gives us uh, close to a uh, hundred cattails. It gives us a bit more of miscellaneous loot. It gives us coal. It gives us a stim. It gives us technical backpack. It gives us crampon. It gives us coal. And in this case, we even got the bear coat. I don't think I'm going to go in there at the moment. All right, now we're approaching the coal mine, coal mine, gold mine rather. I think I'll actually run in a little bit because we are going to get coal soon. And it should be right up here. Here we are. This is the entrance to uh, the gold mine, which is down there. You can see it. So if this is your first time watching this, 
And we found the find a place to rope rest. earlier, which makes this much easier. We found a flare head, that's nice. So you just attach the rope here. My torch might actually go out. So, whoops, but that's okay if it does. Ah, it didn't go out. So now you can just climb down. But of course, in our case, we're heavy. We're actually quite heavy, <laughs> which isn't too good. So we're gonna billy goat down. We're gonna Skyrim our way down. And this is also a very, very easy route to get down. Let me just grab this as well. To do this, you just leave the rope behind and just continue going towards the back way out of there where there are three ropes to climb down. But we're not gonna go that far. We're just gonna go around this corner here. I'm lucky that it's not too windy, so the torches are still burning. And then we just go here, past this birch tree, through these two trees right here. And then we're gonna go down some slopes all the way to the gold mine. Nice and easy. Here we are, here's a little cliff. Just walk down here. If you're worried about sprains or damage, you can just crouch down like this and you'll be perfectly safe. But you should be able to walk down as well. But crouching is probably a little bit safer. Like this, you do a little bouncy bounce. You know, that's you going down a very sleep, sleep, steep edge. Uh, is, there's no slipping mechanic in the long dark, so you can't like slip and suddenly fall. So you're perfectly safe doing this. And then we can head down like this. And now we are at the bottom of the gold mine canyon, I guess. And there's the rope to climb back up if we want to do that. We got a little bit of stamina, so let's just run. Over here near the edge, there is a corpse. I would like to loot that corpse quickly for no other reason than to get some feathers and maybe some random loot. You can get perhaps some bunnies if you want. There's usually anywhere between two and sometimes four bunnies here. So you can get some meat, you can get some uh, rabbit pelt if you want. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do uh, there. You get some extra food. And, Pelts doing that. I am getting a little bit cold, but it's not too bad. Uh, we're gonna go into gold mine anyway in a minute. I just want to go here first to check this carcass. It's not really that important. You can easily just skip this if you like. It's really not a big deal. But I like just doing it because it's here, it's out of the way. I mean, this, this corpse that's lying here right now is <laughs> probably the most remote corpse in the whole game because it's the, the hardest corpse to find and, and loot in the, in the whole game. But it's so far away. And even when you get to the gold mine, it's all the way over here. Oh well, didn't have anything. Usually doesn't have anything, but... We checked. Then we'll head to the gold mine. And before we enter the gold mine, there's two things to loot. It's usually a plastic container or some, something like that. And then there is a, a supply bin. I very rarely find anything outside of the gold mine, but inside the gold mine I can find all sorts of stuff. So, let's try that. Uh, let's go into the gold mine and we'll sleep there and we'll get our backpack and we'll get the coal and any other loot that might be in there. And then we're on the way out of Ash Canyon already. So this is quite good, this is day two. So it's gonna be day two backpack and we're moving towards our well-fed bonus. All right, so uh, I do have a little bit of stuff. I'm gonna get exhausted now, there we are. Hard to think straight. And here's the, um, the plastic container. Let's actually grab another torch. Light that. Let's see what this is in here, this is random. So in, in Interloper you have loot tables, but those loot tables, which are sets of items, they only determine where the major loot items are in the game. I don't know if the bear coat is connected to that, I think not. Uh, pretty much everything else in the game is pretty much random, where, what you find. There are certain exceptions though, like the summit and some other things, but for the most part loot in the world is randomized. Uh, and then there's certain locations that have specific loot, like you get a Machno uh, jacket in the Signal Fire and HRV and the stuff at the summit that's always the and stuff, stuff like that. But for the most part, things are random. And I actually never found anything in those bins outside the gold mine, like ever, I don't think. Okay, so here we are in the gold mine. We're now warming up. Seven degrees, not bad. 
and we're very heavy. Uh, well, actually, we're not that heavy, but we're tired, so we're moving very, very slow. So let's loot everything in here. We want all this coal, if not for now, but for later. So here we have accelerant. We have another hat. That's nice. We here. can wear that. Nice. Let's check this container. Usually a book in here. Awesome. So there's the book right there. There's usually matches about. Uh, usually there is matches in. No. Hmm. In the other video, I believe I said the matches were guaranteed, but I may be wrong then. I was under the impression they were, because they're pretty much always there when I play here. Uh, unless they are now further in, maybe they're in a different location. Now here, this uh, Ash Canyon is a little bit unique in that the gold mine has water you step on. There's not many places in the game where you have actual water to step on. There's a couple, but this is one of them. And what you can do is you can just take off your shoes and your socks. But if you, if you don't, then they're going to get wet. And as you can see now, I took a little bit of cold damage and I'm actually getting cold. Not because the actual room is cold, but because the ground is cold. It's like freezing cold water and walking in. Now I'm warming back up again. If, however, I, I wear my shoes and my socks, they will get wet and maybe even frozen very quickly. So it's not really worth having them on. You can just unequip them. Uh, on my main runs, when I come here and I'm usually not that cold, then uh, I don't really care. I just wear the shoes, who cares? But this early, you want to take every advantage you can get. And I'm also going to loot all the coal and woods that I can get as well. I think there's even more of it over here. And there's another flare. These are marine flares, so they don't burn very long. So they're more of an emergency situation against wolves in, uh, in wind. But they are handy, and of course, you might go to Bleak Inlet and, uh, and they will use them for timber wolves there. Alright, so let's cross this water as well. Again, we're going to take cold damage. But once we get through on the other side, we'll have the backpack as well as the crampons. The crampons I'm not too bothered about, they are an interesting addition to the game, but they're not really that important. The crampons will help you uh, avoid sprains, it will also make it so that it takes a little bit longer for you to fall through the ice, uh, but, and it also gives you some animal protection. But those things aren't really that interesting, to be honest. They are mostly used for climbing purposes, and I usually just carry them in my backpack and I don't actually have them on me. So here we are. Here is the famous golden loot. So here is the crampons. Uh, I could equip them right now. As you see, they, they, are, they have some wet resistance and they give animal resistance as well. And together with my bear coat, since I found the bear coat, okay, we actually have 33% animal protection now. So as long as we were rested, and had enough health. If we ended up in a wolf struggle right now, we would probably win it pretty easily. Well, actually, no, we don't have any weapons, so because of that, we, we might still lose. But if I find a weapon of any kind, uh, we would win the fight. But I'm not going to wear them because they will, they will just make it lose durability for no real reason. I only equip those if I am climbing or if I am on thin ice. And we found some combat pants. That's handy. very cool. They don't have much condition, but pants are pants. And then we have the tactical backpack. Again, remember that if you click on this and then choose to leave it, you can actually lose this. So let's click that. Ding. Carry capacity increased. We have now more we can carry. Candy bar. Thinner sardines. Tomato juice. Another can. I guess I'll take if you don't really need it, I guess. Coal. I want all this coal. Anthem fuel, scrap and Ah, there are matches here. They are just over here this time. Ah, so I wasn't wrong. I thought so, yeah. I was pretty confident that the matches in this mine was guaranteed on Interloper. And here we are. They were just on that table instead. Now we could sleep right now, but we're not going to do that just yet. We're going to check this out. We might make a little fire as well, just to get some more cooking done. And get a little bit into the night. Uh, we don't this. need that. We don't need this either. Uh, I might though, like pretending this was a real run. Oh, this happens a lot when you 
when you load a container for the first time. Uh, I'm going to take it and just place it over here. If this was a real run, uh, where I would invest in it for a long time, uh, I would probably loot it, and then I would either leave it uh, here, just so I see it when I come back in case I don't pay attention, or I would take it with and store it in the main base or something like that. Let's start a fire here. Then we can make some more water and everything. And then we'll sleep afterwards. I don't think we need a fire to actually sleep because we have pretty decent gear. I wish we had some cloth though so we could repair the clothing a bit better. That would have been very good, but what can you do? Okay. I'm going to put the heavy stuff on and put that on. And then let's do uh, this. How much water? Not a lot of water. So let's make water first. And then we'll drink a bit too. And while that's cooking, we'll prepare some stuff. Prepare two of these. I'm gonna need to eat soon. And actually, what we could do, I don't know if it's worth it really. Nah, we'll leave it. Let's make some more water. And then we'll make some more teas, mostly to level that up. And we'll make uh, some more this. Okay, those, those teas. Let's make some more water now. And let's make what's left of these two. We got a lot of teas we can make now, which is great. Okay. And we're going to put some more of this, and we don't really need to. We need this much wood, I don't think. I think I would like even more water. We'll make one water though and one tea. And we'll also make this. We don't really need it, I guess, but we'll still make it. Alright. And then we'll make some more tea. And while we're doing that, we're going to do some inventory management. Shall we leave any of this? Well, we can use this for fire, I guess. And in fact, I'm going to drop this and not take it with me. We'll come back for that, because it's just a regular book, really, and it weighs a lot. So the books I can take with. I guess we don't need three of these cans after all. It's just a necessary weight. What else? <coughs> uh, we'll take the rest of that. We'll take all of this. Uh, I could eat these things. They're low condition, but I have tea to cure it, so I could just eat that. I think we'll wait with that until we're safe for location. Only eat low condition food if you have the option to cure it if you get food poisoning. If you don't have that option, I wouldn't bother doing it. It's too risky. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it. Let's wait for that. And I'll make another tea. And while that's boiling, we'll eat some of this. Let's eat the cattails. Let's eat a bunch of those. We could also get rid of some of this stuff. Let's simplify the inventory a bit. So let's eat that. Let's eat this. We can also eat, eat the crackers, although they're quite light actually, so I'll wait for that. I'll, instead, I'll eat these. Get as close to well, uh, or proper fed, I guess, as possible. That's cool, and I think I can hear that it's done cooking. No, it's not. That's done. I'm not now. sure I can uh, carry it. We can more. actually do one more of these. And we can make one more tea as well. So we're just leveling cooking here. And let's have a drink. Just a little bit to avoid too much damage. Keep eating this. And I think that's enough. Okay. And then we'll let's do that. And we can do one more tea. Uh, that needs another 20 minutes, so we'll put on a couple sticks. Yeah, we can do one more tea if I have. Do I have? Yeah, I do. How much more do I have? I think that's... Oh, I got three of these. Okay. Uh, I can put one more stick on, I guess. There we are. We'll take that. There we go. That's not that much water, actually. I wish there was even more water. Yeah, actually, I'm going to make... 
and one more batch of water because that was very little because I used it of course I used it for the teas uh, so I'm actually gonna make some more water uh, and we can make one I if I can one more this gear and then we have plenty I would say all right then we're gonna grab a torch or two because I I am running out of torches as well. I uh, have four. I would like to have at least six. Oof, that's a terrible torch. That's terrible as well. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. Wow, these are really bad torches. Uh, let's put some more on here. That's good. Now we have the luxury of, you know, getting good torches. Uh, that's a bad torch, but I'll keep this one. It's kind of borderline. That's a good one as well. How long has this got? 11 and 11. Okay. We can grab another one. Oof, to that's another bad one. That's a good one. We can grab one of these and uh, break it down. <coughs> and then we can put that on here. I think we need to put one stick on here. And there we go. That's enough. And just to make sure that I don't freeze to death, I'm going to wait for this to expire. There we are, that's embers. Just to make sure that the temperature is correct and I don't freeze to death. Should be alright though, uh, in here as long as the temperature is above freezing, it shouldn't really be an issue in here. Especially if it's a few degrees above freezing. I have however died in here, I have clicked on the bed and I've seen that it was like plus five and I was maybe like one degree or minus two or something and then I slept in it and I died. In this case though we're quite far into the night. Uh, we are at 10 degrees and it's, it, it will get colder but it shouldn't get 10 degrees colder. It's gonna get progressively colder until the morning so early morning is the coldest uh, but it's not gonna go down by 10 degrees so we should be fine sleeping this. So let's just do that. Let's go. Yeah, so as you can see, we're fine. Uh, didn't really change at all. Uh, usually when I go here, it doesn't look like it changes at all, but I have died. It has changed at night. I think there's only like a very slight change. Uh, we don't, and I'm not sure if we need to rest more because we're not going to go that far. I think though because we're going down two ropes, we'll still sleep two more hours. And then we'll head out. Climb down the ropes. I want to be, make sure I can carry everything also. We got quite a lot of health now. Not completely full though, but we got a lot. I'm going to drink, uh, eat some of these things also. See if I can... Uh, get under 35 kilos and now what we're gonna do we're gonna head back to Tim Wolf Mountain but we're gonna do it via the secluded corner that is near the exit of Tim Wolf Mountain just to ensure that we have enough stamina to climb the summit without using the stim although we could just use the stim really if we wanted to we're gonna use another match because I can't see anything and then we're going to leave so here we are bye bye and we're doing pretty well with equipment and we also have the backpack so we are pretty good we're good with food and we have survived a little bit over was it just over two days yeah so within 24 hours that is to say when we sleep next or thereabouts we will be fully rested uh, and have well fed so we'll probably have the well fed before we climb the summit or maybe around the time we climb the summit I am nevertheless going to pick up all the coal that I can. Uh, but I can run now, I suppose, yeah. Uh, because we're only really going to go through the ropes. We're going to head through the birch forest. That's why I'm not too worried about my health right now. I'm only about two-thirds health, health. But we're going to pick up a lot of birch soon. So I can use that to regenerate some health as well if I want to. So I'm really not worried about my health right now. Not to mention there are no wolves at all. There's not going to be any wolves from now on, all the way until the summit, except one wolf near the deer clearing. Maybe two wolves near the deer clearing if I'm unlucky. 
But in this area right now, there's no wolves, none at all, because they are locked in by the wolf barriers that I showed you earlier. Those barriers are preventing me from being attacked. Okay, so on Interloper, the world gets progressively colder every day. And you want to get, if you get gear really early in the game, like we did now, like the bear coat or going to the summit, then you're going to be warm quite early. And the first 20 or 30 days of your run, you're probably not going to struggle with cold that much. Okay, so we are now heading back down. Let's see, where's my torch? Now, if you're wondering why this torch is on the ground here and not in my hand, it's just because while I loaded this area here, that my game crashed and I, uh, I, the screen got black and I could hear that my torch got thrown. <laughs> and then I exited the game and I came back in and um, the, the torch was on the ground. A bit weird that that happened, but you know, sometimes this happens. It's not co co uh, collaborating today. So now we're going to head back down here. To this little route here, back down. You can't go up to the gold mine from here. That's like a shortcut up there, but it's not possible to get there. Oh, here's a maple. And if you do want to come this way, I always point this out, that it is possible to get to the gold mine from this way. You have to climb three ropes. That rope down there. This rope up here. And then finally this rope up here. These are the three ropes. So you can get to the gold mine doing this, but I highly recommend you don't do it. You can, of course, nothing wrong with doing it, not technically, but it's risky because it requires a lot of stamina to do so. Let me just check here. Sometimes there's some hidden loot here, sometimes. Not today, I guess. It's very risky. You're going to drain your entire stamina doing it. Uh, so it's quite risky to do and even if uh, you know you have a bedroll there is a chance that you maybe can't uh, you can't sleep because it's just too windy or something so it's it's very risky to do that I, I wouldn't do it if I if I were you okay let's drop like a few of these there we are now we can climb let's go So yeah, you, I have climbed this way up once, uh, and I'm probably never going to do it again. I did it on my main run, and I almost died. It was just crazy. Whoops, I forgot to... Oh, well, we'll do it later. forgot to put the crampons on. It doesn't really matter, though. Uh, but I forgot to do one. Uh, but I have climbed up it once on my main run, and I almost died, because I got to where we just were. I got up. Uh, this rope here and I was quite low on stamina so I decided to uh, where's my torch gone I decided to um, sleep and then a blizzard hit and I ran out of wood I couldn't like change position and I almost died I just barely made it back up now where is my torch did it actually fall all the way down here or something did it, did it really go that far I don't know it looks like it might have that's weird. Uh, <laughs> or did it land on? I don't know where the torch is. That's really bizarre. It may have fallen all the way down, maybe. Maybe I can see it from this angle. Is it, is it down here? Oh, wow, there it is. <laughs> it's all the way down there. I don't think I can actually get it in time. I think it's going to burn out in time. We can try, though. But <laughs> I think that torch and that match is lost. Uh, we'll give it a try though. Okay, we're too heavy again. Uh, not too heavy though. I'll drop a few of these. We don't need to carry this many anyway, so let's go down. Again, I forgot the crampons. Whoops. But the crampons aren't that important, especially climbing down. What the crampons actually do is that they reduce your sprint meter, or in this case, your climbing meter. Your actual fatigue or your stamina, indicated by the eye on the left, it's not actually affected by the crampons at all. So your energy is going to be drained exactly the same, regardless of whether you have crampons or not. Let's see if I can make it to this uh, torch here. Oh god, it's all the way up there. How, how did it end up there? Oh, this torch has gone on quite the journey. Oh god, I can't even get to it, can I? Okay, we're going to do a little... Glitching it. Let's 
because I, I want my torch. What I'm doing is spamming a campfire and cancelling it, and this will elevate you slightly. Almost there. Ah, oh, it burned out. No, I didn't make it. That's <laughs> so annoying. Oof. All right. What I did there is a little trick. You can actually climb up a path that you can't access by selecting a campfire and placing it, or like trying to place it, and then cancel. And you, you see this little jump, like this? It's a small jump. So if you do that and spam it, you'll, you'll move upwards, see? I'm moving upwards a little bit. So that's how you can access areas that are inaccessible, at least a little bit. But as you can see, you're very likely to get sprains doing it. So I got sprains doing that, which isn't great. Uh, it wasn't worth doing it, but I was so close to getting that torch. And I didn't make it. <laughs> it's so annoying. Oh well, what can you do? Alright, so let's see here. Do I have any rose hip teas? Because uh, I might... Uh, how many paint? I have two paint. I'll just wait them out. Because it's only going to last two hours. So that's a shame that I lost the torch. <laughs> oh well. We're now going to head to the uh, secluded shelf. Or the secret shelf, or whatever you call it. Uh, the, sometimes there can be a moose there, but I know it's not there now. Because we already saw the moose. It's over by the bitter marsh. So I'm going to grab all of these, um, <clears throat> all of these birch barks, because I can use them to recover health if I need to. And we're going to head through to the shelf and sleep there tonight. How much wood do I have? Quite a lot, especially with the coal. But even more wood is, well, even better. So I'll grab all the sticks that I can find. Doesn't matter if I'm heavy, because I'm not going to do any climbing. But I'm going to sleep outdoors for one whole night. And if I'm going to do that, I want as much wood as I can carry. Just to make sure I can sleep a full 12 hours. That's what's important. So, there's no wolves here. I do apologize that the visibility is a little bit limited. But I would have to drink two of these teas in order to change that. And I don't really fancy doing it. Within two in-game hours, the blurring is going to go away because they only last two hours. And they are healed by themselves, so it's really it's not a big deal. The sprains, they need to be healed by bandages or, or uh, the sleeping. So we're going to head uh, through to Climber's Cave, which is close to the exit to Timberwolf Mountain. But we're going to go through the birch forest here. Uh, since the weather is good, I could take a little detour and grab some more loot, but I don't know if it's necessary, to be honest. Uh, we just want the birch spark, that's what we really want. The time of day, uh, it's getting there. Let's grab all of these. We're doing getting them for cooking, but also warmth, but in, mostly we're getting these for health, in case it gets very cold and we start taking damage. You know, we're getting kind of close to taking cold damage, but not too bad. You can see it's uh, minus three. If I had my torch, it wouldn't be cold right now. <laughs> it's just, that was really unfortunate. I just, I didn't think this torch was going to go that far, considering I threw it down on the ground for it to bounce. So I deliberately threw the torch the way I did, so that it would land on the ground and then bounce down next to the rope. I did not expect it to go that far and down into the canyon. Oh well, what can you do? These things happen. Bit of a light glitch then. Let's grab these. Grab the sticks too. And I'm just gonna keep running. Let's get there faster. Uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, we got a magical birch here. Yeah? One of the large ones. Is this uh, larger than it should be? As you can see. Not a big deal though. Has another large one. This is an Ash Canyon special. Um, I don't know why it happens, but it tends to happen only in Ash Canyon for some reason. They used to be even bigger though. Uh, Athenan probably has the biggest one I've ever seen. You could even crouch under it. You can see it in my glitches video, which I'll put a card up, a link to, on the top right corner right now. You can click on that to see it. Uh, but I haven't seen that big ones lately, but you do get small ones like that. 
All right, so sometimes I go up here, I take this path up there, up here and cross the uh, tree and loot the area over there. There's another birch forest there. You can get even more birch and you can get um, sometimes a little bit of loot like a candy bar and some dog food and some other stuff. But we don't really need any of that stuff. So I'm just going to leave that and instead going to start moving. Uh, make our way to the secluded corner. It's actually called secluded cove or something like that. Um, but I just call it the sec the secret corner or something, you know, it works for me. <clears throat> Alright, so we are now approaching Pillar's Footrest. I am losing my stamina because I'm sprinting a lot, but that's okay, you know, we're gonna sleep soon, so I'm really not bothered. Especially because there's no wolves here. It's really, you're in a pretty threat-free area. In fact, Ash Canyon is a really, really safe area. You wouldn't think so because it's so... Uh, <laughs> terrainy. There's so much terrain um, that you, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it's safe because you can fall down and there's so, so much stuff that can happen. Oh, what's over there? Let's check that out. Uh, but it's really safe. The, the wolves are only in certain locations. The wolves are near the the uh, marshes and anglers then and then there are no more wolves there's only the bear and minus folly and that's it there are there's nothing else so pretty much the entire upper level of ash canyon is completely safe except for the bear it's completely safe and the lower levels are partially safe uh, so it's quite a good area to be in. Looks like there's two carcasses. I'm guessing this is a body and then the deer is on the other side. So let's check out this. Yes, it is a body. Oh, oh uh, it's got the couch and sweater. Give it to me. Give it to me, lady. Ah, uh, she didn't give it. Yeah, you can't find that on Interloper anyway, but it would have been funny if you could. Didn't really see any more feathers, but... That wasn't really worth the detail, but... You don't know until you looted it. And I can hear some more crows over there, which I can see already is the deer carcass, which I think I will actually harvest. We're going to go up this way to cross over to Climber's Cave, but I might make a fire right here to for this and to warm up a little bit, take a little bit less damage. I can make some teas and then I can continue. Worst case, if the wind catches up and, you know, the campfire blows out, it's not a big deal. So we'll just go and grab this deer here. Uh, you, uh, I might grab the hide as well. I'm not going to grab the guts though, but we'll see what we do. Uh, let's see. Get up here. There we are. Having a bit of a glitching here with the lights. Alright, so we can't harvest it because it's frozen. But we can start a fire and then harvest it. So let's just do that. Start a fire. 80% chance. Let's go. Come on. It worked. There we go. Let's put a coal on here. We can't harvest this yet, it's too early. But we can make some water, which we're going to do. Wait, and while that cooks, I might even put on another a couple sticks, so maybe two hours. Yeah, there we go. And while that's cooking, we'll make some of these birch ones. We'll do 20 minutes at a time. Let's see how far we go with that. 75, okay. So it takes roughly 40 minutes for it to fall, it seems. We have three of these. That should do it. And we'll do that. We'll make another water here, but then we'll make some perch tea. It's still frozen. That's alright, we'll make this. go and uh, that's almost done that's almost ready to be harvested and we'll make another birch here so and then now we can harvest this I'm gonna take 0.5 kilos and harvest that just for more food we don't really need this though we have a lot of cattails 
Ah, uh, we're still gonna do it. Let's grab that as well, nine minutes. And we'll just cook these right now, I think. Ah, actually, we might cook them uh, nearer to the... Uh... Ah, we'll cook it now, I think. Let's do, like, this. let's drop the food. 29 minutes. How long is this? It's 18. That's fine. And we'll put on a couple more sticks. And I'm actually going to take this hide. It takes 40 minutes. I'm not going to get the guts, but the hide I want. Because then it's going to be faster to craft the uh, the leggings. Or like the, the deer legs. And, or the uh, boots later. We're going to take these. Uh, and I think we'll just eat them right now. To maintain well fed. Go. And we'll have a little bit of a drink as well. <coughs> and we can grab two torches. It'll be exactly two torches, I think. There we go. And now we can head up to Climber's Cave. So that was pretty good. We didn't get the guts. I could have gotten the guts. Uh, it wouldn't make that much difference. Oh, the pain has been healed. Uh, I don't know if you can go up there. I don't think you can go this way. Let's just try that. I never actually tried going up here. Uh, I don't think you can. I think it's too steep. Yeah, we're not going to use a campfire trick for that. You have to go around. Um, I could have grabbed the guts and I could have cured them while we were sleeping in different places from here on on. And if this was my run, if I was playing this how I normally play it, and Zach plays kind of greedy, I play a bit greedy, uh, then I probably would take them. But I'm not going to do that now because it causes unnecessary attraction. The wolves are going to detect me faster. But the hides don't really give that much scent. So it's really no problem. So, And I want that. You know, the, the guts are easy to get. You can get guts from just rabbits, for example. So it's really not a big deal to get guts later. And they don't take long to cure either. Hides is a little bit different. So <coughs> if I am... Uh, cooking a deer carcass anyway I usually go for all the meat and if I can I go for the the hide as well okay I think I'm just gonna walk for the rest of this to make sure I don't uh... now let's run up here though close my eyes. there's a campfire right over this hill <laughs> you can find the distress pistol here let's see if we do this time and uh, no well, we have the snow shelter here which you can you can actually use this if you want. Uh, I'm not going to, but you can. Alright. And here there's some... Wow, oh, we got a big birch uh, bark here, look. A really, really big one. Uh, three really big ones. Look at that, this is a very big... <laughs> Hello, birch bark. Uh, yeah, weird stuff. Um, uh, that's, okay, that's, that's pretty big. Uh, some mushrooms back there I didn't loot. Oh yeah, we get, <laughs> we're getting some big, uh, big birch here. <laughs> really weird. Really, really weird. That can be uh, something for later. So we got more of that. And then we're going to loot these rose hips as well. And we're going to check under here. Just to see if there's a corpse under this bridge. I don't think there is though. I think I would have heard the crows. Even if they are not necessarily there now. So I don't think there is anything. But we'll check. Uh, no, nothing there. But there can be a corpse under there. Uh, and uh, that person can have loot. Okay, and from now on I don't think they'll sprint anything. Alright, uh, let's... Actually, can I eat a warm tea? Or did I... Are they cold? Yeah, they are cold. I didn't really uh, warm them up. I didn't really think of it. It is possible to get down to the canyon below me from here. You can just go down on this side here. And over there, there are some logs you can step on and it takes you all the way down. All right, we're going to go now to the secret shelf and sleep there. We're going to drop by Climber's Cave just to see what loot we have there. Because it's hardly a shortcut uh, or rather detour at all. And then we'll head to the cave and then we'll head to the summit. And I am pretty confident 
that the Hexor will be there. And then we'll have Summit on day three with extra loot, which will be great. Well, in the previous run, and uh, my previous tutorial where I actually spawned the Nash Canyon, things were a little bit different. We still had the opportunity to go to the summit, which I did. But unfortunately, I had no way of knowing whether the Haxa would be there or not. So I just had to gamble. I had a pretty much a 50-50 chance in that tutorial on getting the Haxa, and I didn't. Here's a shortcut to the Climbers Cave. You can go around here, but you can also just head down here. It's a little shortcut. And there we are inside the Climbers Cave. It's coming in from the back entrance. And Will is complaining as always. Let's see what we got. Looks like we got coffee. That's great. Well, that should make this a lot easier. Okay, we got coffee. We also got a fiber. That's fantastic. So we also have, oops, we also have things to defend ourselves with now if necessary. The fact that we have coffee means that we are now, I can guarantee you, we can manage to climb. Even if I were to use some fatigue by running or whatever, whatever. I will be able to do, to get to the summit because I have coffee. And I'll cook some now before we go to sleep, just to make sure. Uh, I will take this as well, but I'm not going to go further into the lake. I can go around this lake and grab some more cattails, as well as some more mushrooms and some more rose hips. But we're not going to do that. We don't really need it. We have a lot already. We're just going to get these ones that are here anyway. And then we're going to head back up here. I'm quite heavy <laughs> and tired, so this is going to be a little bit slow. From here on in, if you have watched my uh, Ash Canyon tutorial, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same until we get to the summit. The only difference is that in the summit itself, we're going to find a hacksaw. And in that, then we're going to use that to open the containers. But after that, it's going to be different from the tutorial. Okay, so let's... I can sprint a little bit, but it's not really going to do much. I'd rather save the health. So we're just going to do a slow walk now to the secret corner. And we're going to sleep there. I'm still heavy because I'm also picking up a lot of sticks and things. On the way there, uh, where we're heading right now, we should find a pot on the way, which we can use to cook things faster. And we'll probably find the famous towel as well, <laughs> uh, which we'll probably leave alone. Uh, although I wouldn't say no to some cloth, to be honest with you. And then we'll sleep in our secret little corner. Let's see if the pot is here. Escape this cold. Should be just around the corner. So we are going quite slow now. Let's see, is the pot there? It is the pot in the snow. Oh, it's not. Have this torch pan out. There we are. Pot for me, thank you. I'll take that. Oof, we are walking very slow, but we're not far, so we'll be okay. And is there a towel? Uh, yes, it is there. I could harvest this towel just to get some cloth and do a little bit of repairs. Uh, let's see. It takes 10 minutes, I think. You know what? I'm going to take it. I'm going to get cold doing it, but that's okay. Uh, the reason is because it gives me two cloth, and there's, there's not a lot of cloth in Ash, Ash Canyon. Very, very little cloth. Uh, you'll find most of your cloth inside uh, Foreman's Retreat. So if you go to Miner's Folly and then you go to Foreman's Retreat, you'll find quite a lot of cloth in there, like cur from curtains and things. But outside of that, uh, there is very little cloth in Ash Canyon. It's one of the few things that's not great about Ash Canyon. And I don't have much cloth to be in it. I don't actually even have bandages. So having that so I can make a bandage makes me more prepared. Uh, so I'm glad I got the towel. All right, we're heading uh, very close now to this secret little corner. Let's just cross this bridge here. Make sure you don't fall down. 
so tired. And this is down. where I usually would talk about the song of the aurora and the beauty of the long dark. And last time we were here on a previous tutorial, there was a beautiful aurora. But today we have uh, some light snow. You know, Rand's childhood kind of snow. And uh, we'll be working very slow. I might actually ignore the corpse that's to my right coming up here because there is nothing really there. Sometimes you get a little bit of loot, but usually you don't. Um, although there are feathers there. And, but I'm walking so slow. And uh, I guess I'll probably take about 1 or 2% damage looting the corpse. Does that matter? Uh, I guess it doesn't, because also we have birch tea. Celeste is to, for good measure, loot this corpse that's up here. Uh, I hope these tutorials are useful. I mean, if you don't know your way around, this might seem like I'm walking just in a random, aimless direction, you know? And like, if you don't know the train, it seems like, where would I go? You know, you don't know what's around the corner, and you're just going in circles and up and down, and like, it all seems so confusing. But I know exactly where I'm going, I know all the areas. I know Ash Canyon pretty well, all the nooks and crannies, but I'm sure there's a few areas here and there that I still have not found. Even after 120 days of Ash Canyon on my main run, I still found a few bits and bobs that I had missed. Uh, like some hidden maple or birch or something like that. Ah, okay, we got some uh, wood here. We don't actually have a corpse that I can see. Huh. We have wood though, which we'll use for our this fire, which is too heavy great. To carry. Uh, nothing in there, and no corpse. That's actually unusual. I, I always thought this corpse was guaranteed. This is actually the first time I've ever been here, and there's no corpse there. How weird. Well, we found wood. I, I prefer getting the two pieces of wood rather than the corpse, to be honest with you. <laughs> Alright, so let's head to the corner now. The secret corner is just over here now. And then we'll make a fire, and we'll sleep. So it should be just just ahead. It looks almost like a dead end, but it's 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 not. And this area we're going to now is protected, and I'm very heavy. I'm carrying 45 kilos of stuff, and the reason I'm doing that is just because of wood. I want to make sure that I have enough wood to last the entire night here, so I can sleep outdoors be warm and be fully rested for the climb to the summit. That's why I'm doing this. So I'm gonna do that right now. And we'll also cook uh, some coffee while we're at it because that will make it easy to climb the summit just in case. Um, and I probably will drink them as I climb the ropes. It will make it a little bit easier. Okay, so here we are. So it's very easy to forget about this. It was quite hidden. We came from down there. People tend to go down here, but you want to go up and around this little corner here where there'll be a secret little alcove, a little safe area. And here is our bed that we can sleep in, which is just fantastic. Uh, you can find a Polaroid here as well. Sometimes there's a backpack here, and the backpack will have a Polaroid in it. Uh, but there's none, no backpack or Polaroid today, unless it's like hidden up here or something. I don't think so though. But we can check for good measure. But it doesn't look like it, no. But this is an actually that this is basically a cave. It's a hidden area, a little secret uh, alcove we can use, and we'll be perfectly safe here. So we're going to make a fire uh, here, and we're going to be perfectly fine. We're not going to uh, freeze to death. So if wind comes, like a blizzard hits, and it hits hits right at me, hits hits right on the bed, right on the fire. It will still not blow out. Come it's on. it's equivalent to a cave, even though it is in the open. But I think it kind of treats it as if it's protected from, from all sides. So we're going to put all the heavy stuff on here. So we got fur, firewood, we got cedar wood. I'm going to just dump pretty much all of this stuff, as well as a bunch of torches. And I'm, I'm going to have a full fire on here, full 12 hours. And 
and uh, I'm gonna make some water. I'm actually gonna make a seem so crazy right now. One liter, I think I'll make. And then we're gonna make some coffee as well because we're gonna use that for the climb. So that was a lucky find. Uh, and then we're gonna harvest this while that does that. We don't have that much health, but that's okay. Uh, oh, so did I house the wrong torch or something? <laughs> uh, there we are. I also want some torches, but we'll do that later. Let's make the coffee. Let's make another. I want at least two coffees. Uh, we might make more though, but let's make at least two. And let's prepare some more birch bark. I'll wrap it as well, because I want to drink some when I sleep now. Oops, did I not do that properly? Yes, I did. I accidentally picked it up too early. That was a bit of a mistake there, but uh, oh well, a little bit of an error. All right, we're taking some tired damage, some fatigue damage, but it's not too bad. I'm gonna make one more coffee. And let's also do uh, I'm going to make a bandage, so that I have that for sprains or a potential wolf attack or something like that. So we got that done. Okay, we got three coffees. I'm going to make um, another birch tea. That's boiled. We'll make one more birch tea as well. You can see the wind is kind of picking up, but it should be... As you can see, there is a protected symbol here, so we'll be perfectly fine. Uh, we'll make one more of these. And then I think it's ready to... It's time to go to bed, I would say. Alright, so we'll do that, we'll do that. And then before we go to bed, we're going to eat some more of these. So let's just get as full as we can. And then when we wake up, we might actually have a well-fed bonus, or very, <coughs> very close to well-fed at least. So let's just eat as many of these as we can. I would eat the dog food, but because I don't have a way to open it without a can opener or a knife, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm go going to drink a couple of these though, because um, they will make me regenerate more health, because I'm kind of low on health, so I'm going to drink three of these. Because they stack, they, re they regenerate about one and a half percent extra. So they give me, uh, they give me, provided your meat stuff, well, they give you three percent extra health, or is it five percent? I can never remember. But in any case, uh, they, they do stack on top of each other. So as you can see, this duration of remaining is six hours. So I'm going to be healing some more uh, for quite a while. Okay. So now we should be fine, we can sleep. This this is for 10 hours. I'll put another, some more sticks on here. So it's 12 hours. We're gonna sleep for 10 hours. And that should, with the birch tea and the 10 hours, should restore quite a bit, like probably 40% or something like that. So at the moment we are at 32% health or something to that effect. So let's sleep 10 hours. Even if a wind or blizzard hits, we should be perfectly fine because we are protected. So let's go to sleep. Here comes the wind, here comes the blizzard, and as you can hear, it's a blizzard out there, but the fire is good. See? The blizzard is even hitting me. It's hitting me right head on. If I actually go out here now, I think we'll lose it, and you see, oof, boom, I'm being hit straight in the face with this blizzard. But it doesn't blow anything out. And I'm still protected. So let's put some more of this on. Let's put a coal on here. And I think I will make some more birch. I uh, drink some more birch, rather. Uh, we're only going to sleep two more hours, so that's fine. I'll only drink one, and I want this to make sure. I think I'll put the cedar on here, and then we're going to sleep two more hours. Blizzard or no blizzard? Let's sleep. Blizzard died. The fire was about to go out, but that was 
Uh, not because of the blizzard. It was. It could be because it expired, but sometimes you get a bug. Most likely because I stepped out into the blizzard, the campfire reacted to it. So sometimes that happens. I'm not entirely sure about why that happens. It's a little bit strange. Uh, but sometimes uh, the a campfire will there will be wind, but it won't hit the campfire, and it will still act as if it's going out and will go down to like nine minutes left but you can just put firewood on it and bring it back up i don't know exactly why that happens and uh, this wind will maybe blow out the torch but we'll see i want some more torches regardless so i don't have that many this one's good so we'll take that this one's not good so i want to leave that this one's good let's take that i want at least six i think uh, that's good uh, let's take one more, I think. Yeah, that's good enough. And I'm fully rested now, and I also have coffee if I want that, so we're pretty good. I'm gonna leave these teas here to warm up. And let me do one check quickly. I that everything is fine here. It is fine. Good. And then I think we'll just take this with us. Yeah. Take this and take. Uh, well, we can wait those five minutes. Oh, we level cooking to level two. How about that? And we'll take these as well with this hot. There we go. And now we are fully rested. We are. We regenerated a lot of health. We're actually almost full health. We're very close to well fed as well. So now we're going to head to the summit and climb up there. And look how fast we're moving because we are no longer heavy because we used all of that heavy wood. For that fire but we regenerated so much health and we're fully rested now we're going to go back to Tim Wolf mountain and up to the summit we're going to go down here this is a one-way ticket once you go down here you cannot come back up uh, up there that is without going all the way around back up to climbers cave and over like we just did so this is a one-way ticket in that regard and we're going to go through this little protected area here. I'm not going to run at all because I'm saving my energy. Although I do have coffee, so it should be fine. But even if I didn't have the coffee... Ooh! Hoo, hoo, I almost fell off the... Gosh, my nerves were on fire. Uh, I, I think I had auto walk on and I didn't think. <laughs> and I almost walked off the edge. Oof, that was close. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> the auto walk is simultaneously the best and worst thing to happen to the game. It's just such a great mechanic because it allows you to walk without holding the forward button in all the time and it's a great uh, stress relief on your wrists and your fingers. So I, I love it. So when it was introduced I immediately started using it. Let's leave this. And I'm also going to drink one of the birch teas. Uh, is it? Yeah, drink that. Get some warmth back. Yeah, we'll loot these cattails too. So, oh, I think we got well fed, didn't we? No, we didn't. Uh, that was the restore condition. Um, but yeah, uh, the the I also have the hold function during struggles. That's something that's not recommended because you win wolf struggles more often by spamming. The struggle button by clicking the mouse button you will win more struggles that way uh, but uh, i um i have the hold function so instead of spamming the mouse button i hold the button down and that makes wolf struggles more consistent that is to say uh, they tend to last a more fixed duration but you have no control over it so as long as you're on high enough health, uh, you will manage to win that fight, but you have less control over it. But I, it's just because it hurts my wrists and it hurts my um, um, my hands. So I have the hold function. All right. There we are. So we're going to head through this cave now. This is the other exit or entry to the uh, to Ash Canyon. And there we go. Well fed. We got well fed. So now we can actually carry 
40 kilos of stuff. Not bad for day three, right? So we're, well, we're on the fourth day, but we're survived three days. So we can now carry 40 kilos of stuff. We'll be handy for the, the summit for sure. Okay. Let's see here. We're going to leave Ash Canyon. Into this cave here. And here we are. This cave is kind of long. Nah, it's not that long, I guess. But it's got some little secret areas in it that we're going to loot. Not really secret, more like alternative passages, I suppose. So we're going to do that right now. And come out at the deer clearing on the other side. Let me just loot some coal. I don't really need this, but I'm going to loot it anyway just for extra warmth and uh, just being safe. So look how well we're doing. We're warming up. We're doing really well with food, really well with everything. We even got the bear coat, so we got lucky with that loot. We're gonna, the way out is to the right. We're going to go to the left instead, though, because there is an area here that has wood and a carcass that we might use. Let's see, there's usually some wood here. Here we are. Not anything else that I can see. Let's go back out then, and then we'll go to the left rather than straight to where we came from. This should lead us to like a blind passage where there is a little bit of loot. Let's light this torch. And it looks like we got coal. Coal, and here we have the corpse. Let's loot that. We got another can, we don't really need that. But we got beans. <laughs> we got another cup of coffee, how about that? That's handy. We got six cup of coffee now. Nothing there. Sometimes you'll find a wolf carcass in there too. Not today though. Alright. Then we're gonna head out. There won't be much more on the way out, but even with all this coal that we have. 18 coal. We're still not heavy because we have the technical backpack and we have well fed. Uh, spawning in Ash Canyon you can easily go for well fed right away, especially if you head to the Bitter Marsh and start looting the cattails there. There's close to 400 cattails in Ash Canyon, it's fantastic. Uh, I didn't do that on my Ash Canyon spawn tutorial because it wasn't really necessary to go that way. Uh, but you can and because we went through it we have so many cattails that we could maintain we could maintain this well fed for probably uh, with all this stuff we have probably for like close to a week I would say so we have no issue with food at all for a while let's see here uh, I don't think it's worth going down there I just want to head out I think And here we are, this is the exit, which is perfect. Grab these. And we'll head out. And I'm gonna exit to Timberwolf Mountain now. But then I'm gonna go back into the cave because I want to save the game. So just so you know why I'm doing that. So now we are heading back to Timberwolf Mountain. See? There we, here we are, Timberwolf Mountain. But I'm going to go back in just to save the game because it doesn't actually save when you enter the area, it saves when you enter an indoor location like a cave. So I'm just going to save it here. All right, we are now going to go out into Timberwolf Mountain. And uh, actually, before we go out, why don't we have the word of today be, for those who actually watched me go through Ash Canyon, uh, the word for this video, the keyword you can post in the comment, can be uh, maybe deer hide. That can be today's word. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to go back outside and enter Timwolf Mountain and start the climb to the summit. Let's go.
taking a little while to load there. There we are. Okay, and here we are back at Timberwolf Mountain, back at the deer clearing. Let's light this torch. All right, so here we are back at Timberwolf Mountain. If you click the skip button and you jumped to this point in time, then welcome back. You missed Ash Canyon and you missed us finding a bear coat in Ash Canyon. <laughs> and now we're going to go up to Timberwolf Mountain and uh, climb the summit itself. We're going to head there straight away. I don't have a hack, so I'm not going to go to check the container that's over there. I'm not going to run anything at all, actually. Uh, because I'm gonna save my stamina for the climb. Now I am pretty sure that the the hacksaw will be at the summit, which means we can loot it on what will be effective day three or day four. Oops, it is possible to do it sooner if you decide to ignore the. Um, oh, hello again. Nice to see you again. Um, if you don't loot the um, the gold mine, you can just sleep in that corner right away. So we got a flare, some soup, another flare, and a shirt, okay. Wood, we might have to dump some of this for the climb, but we'll see. We'll take all of this stuff, but I might not actually use it. When I get to the first rope, I am going to drink my first coffee. Right, what time of day is it? Okay, so the good thing now is it's, it's past noon, which means that for the rest of today, it's going to get gradually warmer and warmer. So right now it's actually minus four. If the weather stays the same, it's likely that it will actually go to roughly zero degrees uh, by the end of the day, which is fantastic. So we don't get cold and we're actually not getting cold right now, except for a little bit, but that's not so bad. And that's mostly because of the bear coat that we found. So we're going to head to Timor Mountain now. Uh, I think this time I will do the other route. So normally I go via the uh, cave, but I might go the other route this time just for variety's sake. Just to see if we can get past the, uh, the bear. But we'll see. In any case, uh, let's keep moving. We got a lot of stuff, and if the Hacksaw is at Timberwolf Mountain, then we can have a lot of loot by day four already. Let's grab this mushroom. The weather's pretty good. We should be in for a pretty good summit climb today. Let's keep lighting these torches. Of course, the torches give a warmth bonus so of plus uh, four, so that's why I'm not that cold. But right now it should be zero, yeah, because I have two torches. But that's just because I threw it on the ground. So we are pretty safe from predators really going to the summit here if we take the shortcut via the uh, cave. So we could do that. And uh, there's only really one wolf to worry about. Sometimes there's a wolf back where we just came from. And there can also be a wolf here right in front of me. But it, it's not always there. Last time I was here, it wasn't there. In any case, we have a torch, so we're not afraid of wolves at all. Even if we didn't have a torch and it goes to go windy, we still have the marine flares. So we should be fine no matter what. I will possibly drink a coffee soon, uh, since we're not taking the nearest shortcut. Just to make things last a little bit longer. Let's see first if there is a wolf here. Might be okay with one coffee cup actually. Let's see. Is there a wolf? I don't see a wolf. Good. Let's grab these uh, roll sips for more teas. Oops. But be a little bit careful. There could be the, the wolf could be around the corner here, so. Uh, where I'm walking right now, eh, it's got some risk to it. It's possible that the wolf will just jump out. Let's see. I don't see a wolf today. No tracks either, so I think the wolf isn't here. So you can just little note there is a shortcut here. Uh, oh. Okay. 
Can you hear that? I think the bear is right up here. Let's just check. So normally you can go this way and around the corner, but there's also a shortcut up here. Let me check. Yeah, he is here. You can hear him now. So going this way is very dangerous right now, but I just want to see. There he is. The benefit of going this way is also you can sneak past the bear. Again, his aggro range is very limited if you're crouching like this, so you can sneak right past him. Now, we don't have to go this way. We can actually go the other way, which is straight where the bear is heading now. And then there is a little, like, alleyway there, if you want to call it, a little canyon. Leads to a rope. You can take that rope and go through a cave and come out up in front of me, this plateau that's right ahead of me right now. You come out the, on that side. But because uh, I want to, just for variety's sake, go somewhere else, we're going to go this way. And we got past the bear. Like you, could, you could hear the bear there if you listen closely, and then you can take this little shortcut uh, by this broken tree that's fallen down. And now we are in front of the bear. We don't have to worry about the bear anymore at all, and the bear is no issue. If, however, this wasn't the case, if the bear was maybe right in front of me, if it was maybe walking here out in the open, well, you got different options. You can, for example, distract the bear with some stones, uh, or you could just climb up. Uh, near the edges and just, you know, crouch like this and just wait for him to pass you. So there's all sorts of different ways you can get past him. And you can see where he's been walking on his little route. <laughs> so getting past the bear isn't that big a deal. Also remember the bear, if he aggros you, he's not going to stalk you like a wolf does. A wolf that uh, aggros you will stalk you until you go a very long distance or you break line of sight or you scare it off. A bear, however, is kind of static. It will always walk the same speed. You know, you'll hear the growl and then it'll start walking towards you, but very slowly. And when it gets too close, it will start to charge and attack you. But it doesn't run to like catch up or anything. So it's quite easy to outrun a bear. If the bear has noticed you, it doesn't really make a difference because it's not going to affect uh, whether you get attacked as long as you keep that distance. So the bear, the bears are scary, but they are less of an issue than you'd think because the bears are quite predictable. They are more predictable than wolves. Okay. One benefit of going this route rather than through the cave is that you can get more food this way. If you go up through the secluded cave, I think, uh, I think it's called secluded, uh, what's it called? Secluded shelf, it's called. If you go the other route, uh, then you go through a cave and you can find some more coal, you can be warm, uh, you can even find a maglens inside that cave, which would be great. Uh, but if you go this way instead, you can check this cave out over here, and you can also get some cattails while you're at it as well. Now, if you have a bedroll, if you're coming this way, if you're watching this, but you don't actually play interloper, you play a lower difficulty where you have a bedroll, or you're coming here on interloper, but later in the game, and you have your bedroll then, then you can come here and you can rest in this cave. And this is perfectly fine. It's a nice, warm cave that you can use. This is the Erex Falls Cave. Uh, Waterfall Cave is also called, yeah. Doesn't seem to be any loot in here today, though. That's a shame. Uh, we'll grab these sticks. And we're just going to head that back out and continue. We don't, it's not like we have a bedroll anyway. Let's grab these uh, mushrooms here that I passed. And we're going to head up to the summit. There is one wolf in this area. This is the last obstacle in terms of wildlife before we climb. I'm not too worried about light keeping this torch lit because um, I'm going to climb the rope suit anyway. And in fact, I'm going to drink my coffee. Uh, I might drink it now because it's going to last for a while. But let's grab these first. So you can see there's a lot of cattails here. So there's a lots and lots of food that we can have. So we're going to loot all of these. 
But we need to eat soon anyway. So that we can maintain our well fed bonus. Let's see. Uh, I will light this for the wolf. But I'm not gonna i I'm not gonna loot those over there. I'll leave those for another time. It's Eric's Falls. And I'll also show you, let's see if the wolf is about, because if it's not, I'll douse this torch. Let's actually drink our coffee now. And we'll reduce our fatigue for a little while. And we'll gain some stamina back as well. So there we are. Should make climbing a little bit easier too. And I'm going to put the crampons on because uh, we're going to be climbing now. We might even encounter a wolf and we'll get protection. We'll have 38% protection, which is pretty good. Before I climb up to the summit though, I'm just going to show you this part. I could go here on the way back if you like. But over here on the left is the rope. You'll see it. Oh, you can see it there. That's where we're going to go to get up to the summit. But just so you know, for future reference, over here where these crates are, uh, you can find some loot. I've never found loot inside these crates, but uh, you can find it randomly. Uh, you can also find a container of loot right here. I need to see, is there a wolf? No. So then I'm going to douse this. I can use it for torch, uh, sorry, for, um, for um, uh, campfires later. On lower difficulties, you'll usually find one or two containers right here by those crates. So that's a bonus container you can, you can loot. Over here is the rope anchor. So if you find a rope, what you can do is you can attach it here. And you usually will find a rope in Timberwolf Mountain higher up. So if you attach a rope here, you can take a shortcut to the summit feet. next time. This rope leads down here to this river. Again, there's some crates down there. And again, on lower difficulties, you'll find more containers down there. And then you can just follow this river back to the mountainous hut. And you can do the same in reverse as well. You can do from mountainous hut, just follow the river, climb up this rope that's by this uh, the waterfall over there. Follow the river again, and now you can climb this rope, and then you get up here. And then you are pretty so much by the feet light. of Timberwolf Mountain. So that's the shortcut to Timberwolf Mountain that I was talking about uh, in an earlier video that you can do. Uh, you usually won't find ropes about here, but you will very often find a rope up this climb uh, in a little cave. Uh, or you'll find a rope on the summit. It's not unusual to find two ropes. So you can bring one of those ropes back down here and attach it. And if you're in it for the long run, if you're going to survive for a very long time, then I probably would recommend doing that because then you um, then you have a shortcut set up to return to the to the summit. All right, let's climb this. Yeah, we do slightly less fatigue because of our coffee, but. The coffee doesn't really help that much with climbing. Uh, it helps mostly with walking and sprinting. But it does help a little bit as well with climbing, as you can see. I'm going to keep the crampons on. Now, uh, if we took the other route through to the summit, by going through the cave by the secluded shelf, we would come out right here. There's a cave right there. It's a bit hard to see from here. But there's the cave right there. Uh, if you want to get to the cave, you can do that by just going up up here. Or you can climb up this this uh, tree here, like this. Uh, and then you... This one actually, I think, is invisible. Yeah, those branches don't hurt you. So you can just do that. And here's the cave right there. So you can go in there for warmth, or cold, or a different route back to their clearing, if you like. We're going to head this little cove over here. <laughs> you can actually survive up here for a little bit, because there's rabbits, which is fun. Um, I don't know if I ever hunted a rabbit here, but uh, they are available. We're going to go into this little cave here, uh, by this uh, lichen on the tree. And there's very often a rope in here. Not always, though. But usually there's a rope and a book and some wood. So we're going to grab all of that, but we might leave some of it as well, because of how heavy we're going to be when we climb. And see, yeah, there is a rope. Let's grab the wood, let's grab that. And I'm actually going to attach this wolf to the this. Uh, wolf, this rope to the other shortcut. Because if you now go out of this cave and head towards the summit itself, 
there is another rope anchor you can use. A rope anchor that I think I've never actually climbed up in my entire life. But it is a shortcut to Timberwolf Mountain Summit. I need to drop something. What you do is just go over here. <coughs> and right now in front of you, you can see the, the rope up to the summit, which we are going to take. But down here on the left is another rope anchor. This rope anchor leads down to where I encountered the bear earlier. So that's where that leads to. Uh, I wonder if the bear is still around. Let's see if we can see the bear. Oh, the fatigue got reduced. That, ooh, that lasted a bit less than I thought. Is the bear around? I don't see him. But anyway, you can attach this. I'm taking some cold damage during this, but that's okay. All I can think about is food. And if you now climb up... Uh, there's the bear. There he is. He's coming back from his little trip. So we came out of the air clearing, which is over here behind these uh, rocks here. We walked around this way and up here. And then over there is where we took a little shortcut. Normally, though, you can go this way and then go around the mountain, up the cave and through the mountain. And you come out in the cave over there. Here's the bear that we dodged. He's on his way back. But if you have this rope attached now, next time you can just come through like this, walk up here, and then you can climb this rope up. And it's a shortcut. So that's one thing you can do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave these rolls if I have a lot of teas. We don't need them right now. You can come back for them later. And also I'm quite heavy. I'm going to drink another coffee before I do this climb. It's not strictly necessary because I have crampons. I have more than half of my fatigue. And I have a stim uh, just in case. So I don't really need it. But I am going to use it anyway. Uh, just to be safe. Let me first have some food. I'm going to eat some of these. It also lighten my load a little bit. Uh, let's do that. And then I think I'm going to drop some of the wood because it's quite heavy. We don't need this much coal. So I'm going to drop about eight of those, uh, I think. And let's drop one of these as well. Uh, actually, we'll drop two of those. I want to be 35, more or less. Something like that. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll drink one of the coffees, which again is not really necessary, but I'm going to do it because I have them, and they are usually full situations like these. So there we go. So let's climb up to the summit then. I am going to take a break uh, at the first ledge, but then I'm going to climb the rest of it in one go, I would say. Once the stamina meter is halfway, you start taking carry uh, penalty. So right now I can still carry 40. Let's have a little break here. And now it should be slightly less than 40. Yeah, you can see it's the, my inventory numbers has, have turned red. 39.99. And that's going to keep going down now. Because my uh, fatigue meter has crossed the halfway mark. The first half of your fatigue meter or stamina meter. I, I guess I could refer to this as stamina and the other is the sprint. Um, the first half of this does not affect how much you carry. However, once you reach halfway and you become tired, and then a quarter is drained, once you reach this part, you will start taking carry penalties. And this is going to start going down. And that, if you are then too heavy while climbing the ropes, you can risk actually being stuck on the rope, being too heavy to climb both up and down. So you need to plan a little bit when you go up a rope. Uh, do you think you're going to become too heavy, too tired in the middle of the climb? If that is the case, you might want to consider planning a little bit what you're carrying before you start climbing the rope. Otherwise, there is a risk that you could get caught on the way up the rope and be too heavy. And here we are. We are at the summit. We made it. We didn't even need the coffee, to be honest. As you can see, we still have a quarter of it left. We would have made it in one go, but we're going to reuse it anyway, just as a precaution. If you found coffee, you might as well use it. You could save coffee <coughs> for some emergency in the future. And in the long run, I often do that. I, I, I keep maybe two or three cups of coffee for the late game. That I, and I carry one of them on me at all times. Just in case I happen to be in a situation where I really need it. And I'll tell you about one where I did need it. Before we go to the actual tail section, we're going to go into this cave. And I'm going to loot what's here. And there's usually another rope here. And there is indeed another rope. So if we wanted to, we could take this rope down to Eric's Fall and attach that to the rope anchor. 
Salute this. Could and there's the guns, 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 guns books. I think this is always there. At least I have always found it, even on Interloper. But of course, it's completely useless, really, for, for Interloper. So we're going to loot this. Let's check in here. Nothing really there. I'm going to take the crampons off now. We're not going to need them. Uh, there was one situation I used coffee. So in the early game, I tend to use coffee whenever I need to, really. It's just another energy drink. It gives you more stamina and all that. But after a little while, uh, I try to keep a little bit of them. I, I keep maybe three cups of coffee. I always keep one in my main base as a reserve and at least one cup of coffee on me. But I usually don't drink, but if you end up in a situation where you really need a little bit of extra stamina, it can make a difference. Usually though, it's not going to be a life, life-changing thing. But there was one situation I was in, and that was <laughs> climbing the gold mine that I talked about earlier. Climbing up to the gold mine through the three ropes. And I was hit by a blizzard, and I got fatigued, and I didn't have wood. And the only way I was able to climb up uh, to the gold mine was to use my cup of coffee that I happened to have on me. And because of that, I uh, reached the gold mine without dying. And here we are, here's the summit. We made it up here. I can eat a horse. And let's grab these feathers for future hour crafting. So here we are, the legendary summit. It has arguably the, be the best loot in the game. And there should now be a hacksaw here. It should be in one or two places. When I come in, the hacksaw should be either on the right over there or on the left under that broken, whatever that is, broken metal or something. Let's check over here first. Nothing there. Then it should be over here. Let's have a look. Uh, I don't see it, but there should be a hacksaw here. Oh, fire striker. Let's just make sure that there is... Ah, here it is. Okay, here is the hacksaw. It was <laughs> on a third location that I forgot about. Yeah, here it is. Here's the hacksaw. So that I it was, like I said, the hacksaw is at the summit. This is the only loot prediction that I have memorized because it determines so much uh, how you can play when you spawn on Tim Wolf Mountain. So we're going to take this. Use this. It's a hundred percent as well. So we're not going to need to worry about it breaking. But even if it was low condition, I did find quality tools in Ash Canyon and I do have some scrap metal so worst case scenario I could have repaired it and here's our stim our second stim for this run guaranteed here on Tim Wolf Mountain I'm now going to make a fire with my last torch and we're going to start warming up and then we'll be situated and we'll start opening these things we'll start opening the goodies and we'll see what we have and when they uh, well, on the fourth day, well, we survived three days. Ago. We're on the fourth day on an interloper run, and we've been to Ash Canyon and the summit, so we're going to be really, really well off. Let's keep trying this. Come on. Come on. And I'll probably make some water while I'm at it. It's funny, the hacksaw was actually right in front of me. I was standing right in the doorway, and I was like, oh, it's over there, oh, it's over Thank there. Uh, oh, here it is. <laughs> I messed that up. Um, okay, we got a lot of coal. We got these. Well, we don't really need to carry that around, so we'll just do that. Uh, let's douse this, and let's actually grab a couple of torches. I think I would prefer good torches for this. I want at least three good ones. Let's just do that first. Let's grab... A few good torches. I think three. Nah, I think I would like some more torches. Probably five. Maybe five or six. That's four. Ah, that's not the greatest torches. Okay, that's bad. Bad. Good. And one more. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Let's just grab these and move them just so they're not as distracting to look at. There we are. And let's do some eating first, just so we don't lose our well fed bonus. I'm going to eat these, just to uh, thin those down. We'll also actually eat these ketchup chips. And let's continue eating some of these to um, get some calories up. Let's actually make some water while we're at it. We can make two liters, because we're probably going to be here a little while. And uh, we'll make another water as well. Let's keep eating. I just don't want to forget about it and come back to it later. 
So I'm just gonna do that, just so I don't forget, because especially when you're narrating a tutorial like this, it's easy to forget what you're doing, and then you suddenly realize that you, you lost your well-fed bonus. So I'm just gonna make sure that I am properly fed here. So I think this is probably good enough for now. It will also help with the, the carrying capacity. Okay, it's time to explore the containers and get all that good loot. Before we do that, let's give me one minute and a quick break. We are back. All right, we are back. Let's continue this. Let's open up these containers and see what loot we got. Let's also loot these little things first, the non-container parts. So we got a book here on sewing, that's nice. And then we got the distress pistol, we definitely want that. Where we got the eight shells. Ding, ding, ding. Let's get all of those. And then we have the spray pan, a spray pan can, we don't need that. And we have the fire striker. Place your bets. Just, just 82%, wow, that's a very good one. This one is guaranteed, it will always be that. So that's really, really great. And then there's some extra loot behind, uh, or in one of these two crates. It will vary which one it is. So let's start opening some stuff. Let me just have a look. How long has this got? Ah, I've got a little while, but we'll be fine. So because we have the hacksaw, I predicted correctly, it would be up here. We can now loot the summit on what is effectively day four. And we're going to be golden for quite a long time. So let's open this. Let's see what we got in here. This one, I think, is medicine. Oh, I've left might be medicine. Oh, these are the hives. Okay, so we got a bear hide, rabbit, cured, wolf. Alright, I think this one might be the medicine one. Let's see here. Yeah, an antiseptic, bandage, antibiotics, painkillers, that's it. As you can see, there's not much loot at all on interloper. There's only like a few things in. We got that, we got that, and that. And uh, not a lot of loot really in, in here, but there is some. Let's move on. Uh, I don't think there's anything I missed on the here. No. These ones, I think one is food and the other is tools. Or is it clothing? I can't remember. I don't remember always the order of what's what, but it's not important. Oh yeah, this is the tea and coffee ones. We got tea, coffee, more coffee, and that's it. That's fine by me. And then this one. Let's have a look. We got food. Lots of salty crackers, by which I mean four of them, you know. So the good thing about the loot on Interloper is that you're not actually going to be too heavy coming down from the summit because uh, it's not like there's a lot of loot in the containers anyway. <laughs> so it's a bit limited what you can actually find. All right, let's open this one. One of these should have some clothing in it. I think one has water, and then this might be the water. So probably, okay, we got a sports vest, a hat, oh, nice. Ski jacket, nice. Mittens, oh, and here's the air wrap. I think you are guaranteed to find one air wrap on the summit. Uh, on the interloper, as far as I know. Okay, let's keep going. The excitement awaits. Shoes, socks, boots, shoes, socks. All right, let's do a little bit of inventory management here. So we're gonna put this on here. We're gonna put socks on. I don't think the socks we found would necessarily that much better. We got some shoes that are probably better. Yeah. We got gloves that maybe are better. No. Nope. Ski jacket. We have two of them. This one is better than the other. And then we have the wool tooth, which is definitely better. So yeah, that's pretty good. We'll do some repairs as well. All right, let's do that. Let's keep cooking these teas. And let's open the last one. I think one is water and one is might have tools in it or it might be pants. I can't really remember. It takes a little while. This one might be bug. This might be a double one. Let's have a look. We got food in here. That's great. Let me have a quick look here. Uh, no, it's not bug. I can see there's like a little gap there. 
Yeah, no, it's not. Sometimes these things bugs, and you can get a double of these containers. That was a bug that came with the Winter's Embrace, so that when you opened it, there would be another one behind it if you did it quick enough. Like that. See? And you can click the other one underneath. It was some sort of bug. And they seem to have fixed it, although when I do challenges that involve the summit, such as Hopeless Rescue, uh, you sometimes find that that still happens. Okay, then we got the last one. I'm gonna saw through that. We're also gonna open two more containers, but not right here. This is the drink one. All right, I believe that's everything. Uh, I don't think I missed any containers. As you can see, there's only four of them on this difficulty, and that's it. But there are some further down that we can also loot. Okay, I'm gonna make. How much is this? Uh, Forty-eight minutes. Okay. We're going to open these crates here. Because one of them will have loot as well. It, it, I think it's random, whether it's this one or the one over there. Let's do this one. Uh, it takes an hour. Mm, I guess we could do that. Uh, this might... Uh, I think it'll be alright. But I don't have the hammer, you see. So we'll just do, the, do it by hand. Uh, it seems to be this one, yeah, it's a bit dark, but you can see this matches. So I found two more sets of matches, and I found the Maybe accelerant. Place to rest. So yeah, it was this one. We're going to head down to Mountain Air Top, but we're going to take a, a moment here, and... Uh, oh, this did <laughs> get vaporized. And we're going to make some more water, and sort ourselves out. Uh, we'll make some more birch tea, I think. This gear is starting to Let's slow put me on, down. Uh, this and let's do some inventory management. We're very heavy here, but we don't necessarily need all of this stuff. So let's see what we can eat first. I'm not going to eat these because they're so light and have so many calories. So I pref preferably would like to eat something that's heavier. And we don't have a can opener, so we're not going to open the dog food. We're going to just eat more of these. And I'm also going to drink the cans of soda. So let's just keep grabbing these. Uh, cattails, it doesn't matter if we're heavy because we're going to take the shortcut down the summit. So it's really not that, that big a deal. And then I'm going to drink some of these to lighten the load. There we are. And then let's do some inventory management, specifically clothing. Let's reload the flare gun. The flare gun is the most powerful weapon in the game. And you can one shot a bear with it, you can one shot a moose, but mostly we want it for protection, which we now have. Right. We can make another tea because uh, we're going to be doing some more management. Uh, we got these. One of them is a fresh hide, which I need to cure. And let's see what else. I could have cured this maybe when I was sleeping in Ash Canyon. I didn't really think of that. Oh well. We got some stuff to prepare. We got some books. This one we could just we could just put this on on the fire if we want. In fact, I'm just going to do that. Um, we'll just put that on. We don't need it. Feels bad. Now I'll put this on too. Just doing the inventory management right now. We got a lot of medicine, but we don't want to leave any of this stuff up here. So I think that will be okay. Got a lot of these things, I guess. And we might repair this. Uh, how long does that take? 30 minutes. Just to make it a bit more condition. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's give this one quick repair. Just to make sure it's higher condition for the next ones we're going to open. Alright, now it's 85. That's good. Alright, 7 minutes. And that should be enough then. Let's see. In terms of cloth. I got one cloth, but I have some stuff I don't need. I don't need this, for example. So we're going to harvest that. Alright. Uh, I think we can just take that. So let's see what else do we have in terms of clothing. We don't need this sports vest, so we can get rid of that. We'll get some more cloth that way. How much is the fire going? Two hours. Okay, good. Um, keep these I guess for now we don't need the sports socks you might want to keep extra sports socks or like extra socks in general in your base but these socks are so bad 
Uh, the sports are the worst in the game. They hardly even do anything. Then we got our shoes. We got a lot of shoes. These we could definitely break down, but it takes a little while to do so. Uh, instead, we might want to do some repairs. So let's see. This can be repaired. This could be repaired as well. A lot of different things could be. This is definitely to be repaired with combat pants. Let's grab this. How much water is that? That's plenty. I can barely walk with this much gear. All right, let's do that. How much clock do we have? We have four. I'm going to try and repair this. Let's see, yeah, we got it. That's good. I'm actually going to repair it again. Oh, that's failed. Let's try one more time. That's oh, failed. I have one more cloth, but I'm not sure I want to use it. And then I might harvest one of these. Uh, I want the fire to keep burning. Doesn't matter if I'm tired. I want to harvest these. Let's do that. And I think we'll head back down to Timberwolf Mountains, uh, the mountainous hut, with all of this stuff. Because I don't have a bedroll anyway, so it's not like I can stay here. Doesn't matter if we're tired. And I think I'm going to re-equip the crampons. And then we are quite heavy, but we'll be okay. We got well fed and everything. Let's drink another one. Uh, I might actually drink yet another one of these. You only get green sodas on Interloper for some reason. They all give the same amount of calories, so I'm not sure why that is, but here we are. Okay, so I think that's enough. We got everything up here on the summit. We're now going to head back home. Wow, these are all terrible torches. We're going to be very slow and very heavy because we're carrying almost 50 kilos of stuff. We're not going to leave any of it up here. We're going to organize it down in the Tim Wolf Mountain Hut instead. And we can actually see the hut from here. You can see it right there. That's it right there. The hut itself hasn't loaded, but it is there. That's the pier. So we're going to go there. And even if we're heavy, uh, going down the, mount the, the Tim Wolf Mountain will only take maybe maybe four minutes real time to get down there because it's all downhill. Before we do that, we're going to go down here. We're going to loot this guy. He can have some good stuff. We got maple. Do we have a second maple. This? We do have a second maple. Two maples. Very nice. Now we're going to go down here. And let's go down over on this edge here. Remember, you can go back up here if you, if you go down and want to go back in. You can go back up there. We're going to go over here. And go down here. Oh, this so gear is slowing me down. Very heavy. In fact, I might want to try and be under 50 kilos because I think you'll walk slightly faster if that's the case. Yeah, I think we'll move slightly faster now. Then we're just going to walk down here. And there's a very nice clear sky today. A starry night after long dark. This is actually a painting, by the way. Let me get a new. Uh, stop. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this sky is actually a painting or an image. Uh, because you can tell it is. Because if you do a time lapse, if you stand here and look at it for a while and record it, and then you fast forward it, You'll see that the moon will will move, but the whole sky will move with the moon, suggesting the whole sky is actually just one big painting. Uh, that doesn't change anything though, it's just a little fun fact for you. It's still a really nice sky. Uh, I'm still amazed at how much how much effort they put into making this a beautiful game. It's just a ridiculously beautiful game for long now. So just head straight down a Pretty much going a straight line. There's our first sprain. <laughs> Bound to happen. And we're gonna go down. Just keep going down. You can't really take a wrong turn. It is possible to take, I guess, a little bit of a bad turn and you can take a little bit of fall damage, but for the most part, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, you can pretty much just walk straight down here. Here yeah, you might, for example, take a little bit of damage. I didn't this time, but there are other ways to go down. You can go more to the right here, for example, over there. Uh, you don't have to go this way. It doesn't really matter, though. The best, you'll take a little bit of full damage. And I'm going to grab this birch here. 
because now that I have a hacksaw, I can actually start grabbing saplings as well. Now, of course, I'm going to be quite heavy <laughs> carrying it. But now, because I have a hacksaw, I can start cutting down saplings and I can start curing them in preparation of making the bow. So I'm going to do that. I could even go back to Ash Canyon if I wanted to and pick up some more saplings on the way there because there are lots of them there. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to take uh, this sapling here. There we are. And I am very, very heavy. Um, I never actually tried taking a shortcut down here. Let's just see if it's possible. I would imagine that it is. Let's see. Let's have a look here. There's the wolf. How is this looking? Oh yes, this should be fine. Place to we can just take a little shortcut here. There's Hulk on down. There's two wolves. Okay. Oh, that was not good, but that's all right. We can just barely go down here. There's two wolves in my way, but they're not really a concern at all. Yeah, this shortcut was just no problem at all. We got a couple wolves ahead of us. As long as an Aurora doesn't hit, we'll be fine. If an Aurora does hit, that would be not good. But what can you do? So we're being very, very slow right now. But that's right. Go away. The torches are less essential now because we have our distress pistol. So therefore we are very well protected. Even if we ran into a bear, we could scare off the bear. Even a moose would be afraid of the uh, of the flare pistol. So we are very safe right now. But I'm still going to keep using torches, partially to preserve the match, but also to just uh, you know scare away wolves a more efficient way. So we're going to walk down to the river. And we're kind of doing what we did when we spawned, but from a different angle. In fact, this is where you would probably go if you got the other spawn. Uh, that's outdoors in Timberwolf Mountain. And then we're just going to head down here to the river. Uh, there could be a bear, but probably not. You can go to the right there for extra safety. I'm just going to take this little shortcut down here. Let's just look around for wolves. I don't see any wolves. So it should be fine. And now we're getting back down here. Good. And we made it all the way down here already. How about that? I'm going to take the crampons off. They were mostly there to be used to avoid sprains. But we got two sprains anyway. We're walking very slow. We are very tired. We're even cold. We're just going to walk back to Mountainous Hut now. Uh, there's some cattails along the way that we can pick up, but we have so much of it already and we're tired, we're cold, we're carrying a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to pick them up. I'll pick them up another time. So now I'm just going to walk to Mountaineer's Hut and then I'm going to scare off any wolves that get in my way. And when we're in Mountaineer's Hut, we're going to do inventory management, sleep and head to Pleasant Valley. Just, uh, you know, take a bath. This is a good time for a bathroom break because uh, <laughs> we're not going very long, but it's taking us a long time to get there because we, we're not actually that heavy. We're carrying 50 kilos of stuff, but we can carry 40 kilos. So we're not actually that heavy. But because we're exhausted, it becomes a lot heavier. So we're walking really slow. So, yeah, we're pretty much just auto walking back to the, uh, to the mountainous hut right now. Uh, that's pretty much all we're doing, and we're going to be slow until until we get there. This is quite important to do when you go to the summit, especially an interloper, because there is a lot of stuff up there, and you don't really want to go back up. It, you know, it's a long trek to go back up to the summit, especially if you don't have a bedroll. So while we're up there, we might as well loot everything we can, absolutely everything. And then we'll take it down here uh, slowly, so we don't have to go back up in a while. 
There's another wolf. I'm not too worried about him. He might not even attack me, but I think it probably will. Yeah, you run. Ran towards the uh, hut, which is a bit annoying. Now, night wolf in ge uh, night wolves in general are not that bad. They are more or less the same. Oh, he ran away. It's because I have my bear coats, probably. Uh, night wolves are not much of an issue. Uh, they are more or less the same as regular wolves. There is not much difference between a wolf at night and the day, but there are some. For one thing, of course, you can see that their eyes are, are glowing, so you can see where they are a little bit easier, but they are also hard to spot because everything is dark. There's no light, and the wolves are dark, so they're easy to camouflage themselves. Yeah, you, you flee. <laughs> So they, they're easier to miss. Uh, other than that, the only difference I have noticed is that if it's night time, then a wolf coming up behind you won't make any noise. If a wolf comes behind you, then they'll still make the barking noise. Oh, woof woof, and then they'll attack you. Um, when uh, you are out at night, a wolf can attack you without you hearing the noise until the charge begins. Ooh, this torch might blow out just before I reach. Oh, that's unlucky. Just before I reach the mountain. It's like, how about that? That's annoying. Oh, well. Well, here we are back home. We made it all the way here. And how are we doing? One degree. Okay. We can pick these things up that we left behind. Is getting too heavy to carry. We're going to jump. Uh, this one that needs to be cured, and also this. And we're actually going to make a fire, I think. Because Timberwolf Mountain is... Uh, I keep saying Timberwolf Mountain Hut, but it's really called Mountain Hut. So it's, uh, it's warm enough, but not amazing. Uh, you can get cold here. If you have good clothing, you never have to worry about it. So even on my, my main run in the late game, Come on. Uh, if I come here, I will uh, sleep here without a fire. Because it, it's kind of like a cave, except that it's not outdoors. And you'll be warm enough. Uh, but if you don't have decent enough clothing, then, uh, then not. Die if I don't warm up soon. Okay, so we're going to sleep here. Turned out pretty well. Yes, it did. I think I'll put some coal on here. And we'll make sure to sleep for tonight. Uh, how late in the day? Okay, it's not going to be cold very long, so if I sleep 10 hours, I don't think I need a 10 hour fire. Probably 4 hours is enough. But, let's see, uh, let's eat some more of these. These cans I would love to open, because they're really heavy. I'm actually going to eat this, because, no, actually I'm not, I'm not going to eat that, because I, my health is quite low. Let's eat all this stuff. Uh, oh, this I could also eat, and that's quite heavy. But we'll wait until the morning to eat that. For now, I'm eating these cattails. Then we'll have a drink. And we were just barely cold, so uh, if this burns for six hours, it should then become morning, and I should be fine. But I'll put two on here just in case, just to make sure. And then we'll sleep for 10 hours in here. And we should be just fine. Actually, I should have drank a birch tea. I didn't really think of it. Okay, so let's go. Let's sleep. There's the fire gone out. But as you can see, I am fine. Four days. We have now survived four days. We spawned in Timberwolf Mountain. And we went to Ash Canyon. And we went to the summit. I'm going to eat this one. And then we'll drink, have a drink. See, we're, we're heavy, but not not that heavy. And we got lots of food. We got decent clothing as well. Uh, these ones are probably better than these if they are repaired, I would say. But work boots is even better. They are a bit heavy, though. We are carrying a bunch of stuff, but I guess that's all right. Okay, should we sleep more? Nah, we're going to be moving to lots of beds back and forth. Is there something we could leave behind though, or maybe organize? We don't need this one. 
And now that we have this rest pistol, we also don't need this many rocks. I'm gonna have two only. This one we can harvest. And then let's see. Uh, I think we'll take all of this stuff with us because this is not our main base. So we're not going to leave any of this stuff here. We could maybe leave one uh, liter of this or so for future Zach to come back to. And these boots are quite heavy. I don't think I'll be needing them though. I might leave these boots and they can be future cured leather to uh, to break down. And I think I want to take these though and see if I can use them. And this I want to take even though I don't really need it because I have this. But I will take it. Uh, let's see, we got a lot of teas. And in fact I am going to leave some teas here that are rose hip because they are for a future moose attack. So if I were to get attacked by a moose and I don't have uh, painkillers, I can just drink those. In terms of wood, we can, can we harvest this. Yeah, let's just harvest that quickly. And then let's see here. Uh, I think we're doing good. We got a lot of matches. Yeah, we're a little bit heavy, but not too bad. We also need this and this. And then we are pretty much ready to go. But before that, let me have a quick break. All right, let's continue. So we're now going to go to Pleasant Valley. And um, welcome if you clicked the skip button <laughs> that I put down and mentioned at the beginning of this video, where you could skip both Ash Canyon and Timberwolf Mountain Summit. And we're back here in Mount Nessart. And if you just wanted to know what happens next, if you had one of those spawns where you spawned in Timberwolf Mountain and you don't want to go to Ash Canyon first, you want to go to Pleasant Valley first, either because you just prefer to or because you know that the Hacksaw isn't to be found in the region at all, then welcome back. We're going to do that now. I don't know if this tutorial will go all the way to forging, but we're definitely going to go through Pleasant Valley and probably to Mystery Lake as well until we set up a main base there. So that's what we're going to do now. We've been through Tim Wolf Mountain, we're here in the mountainous hut, and we're gonna start, uh, start moving out. Okay, so we're a little bit heavy, but not too bad. Uh, there could, we, one thing we could have done, I said actually I would do it, but I didn't, is to go over there. <laughs> the bear is out. Uh, but behind the bear and over to the right, there is a potential moose spawn, and Right there is uh, there's one more container that you can open with the hacksaw. And I was going to do that, but because we're quite heavy already and we have everything we need, there's not really any point going there. So we'll leave that for next time when we come back. So at some point in the future, we'll return to Timwolf Mountain. We'll loot the container that's over there. We'll check out the ravine. We'll loot the whole rest of the area that we didn't loot the first time around. Because the Timwolf Mountain isn't an area we loot in the early game. So we're going to move and head on home. Usually when you spawn, what you want to do is move from high-end location to high-end location. You don't want to loot the small areas. If they're kind of near where you're going anyway, then sure, drop by and pick up the loot. But other than that, it's not worth staying around. So if you spawned in Tim Wolf Mountain and you went to the Mountaineer's Hut and then you're heading to Pleasant Valley, then just go. Don't hang around and start looting the little crevices like the little carcass there and the body there. And, you know, the little backpack there, it doesn't really matter in the early game. Because you don't have that sort of time and luxury to do that in the early game. What you want to do is keep moving from place to place to place. Uh, you want to go to all the high-end loot locations that has all the good loot. We went to the summit now, but let's say we didn't go to the summit. Then you want to go to Mountaineer's Hut, then you want to go to the plane crash, you want to go to the barn and the farm, Signal Hill, and so on. So you want to go to the places that have a lot of loot because in the early game you need as much loot as you can in order to be well equipped and find the essential tools to crafting arrows. You don't need the little bits and bobs, you know, the odd uh, can of food or the, the odd sardine uh, and the bits and bobs. Sure, you, you might go to one of those small loot locations like a corpse or a backpack that's around and you could get really lucky and you'll find a ski jacket or a makino jacket or combat pants or something but the odds of that is quite low and it's not really worth it 
it's better to keep moving. Focus on the high-end loot locations. Once you have looted those locations, so the main areas in the region, and found all the good stuff that they have, and after that, and you also have the bow and all that, then you can start going for each region and, you know, fine combing everything and find every bit of gear that there is. That's when you end up doing that, not now in the early game. It's very, very rare that I loot small areas in the early game. There's no real point in doing it. So I just go from high-end loot location to the next, and moving back and forth until I have the bow. And when you are settled, you know, when you, you start making some deer pants, maybe wolf coat or something, you have your bow, you can hunt, you're self-sustainable, you're getting more warm, then you can choose a region and stay in that region. Very many people will choose Mystery Lake as that region first because that's very often where people have a base. But it doesn't have to be, it can be anywhere. And then they move from region to region. That's usually how I do it too. So you choose one region, you go there, you set up a secondary base, you, you hunt to sustain yourself, and you start looting all the other areas. So for example, now in Pleasant Valley, we're going to loot all the, the big areas to get some good loot. Uh, but then we are going to move on. But when I come back to Pleasant Valley, I'll probably be looting all the other areas I missed, including the smaller areas, because then I have the uh, the resources uh, to do that. But right now we're not going to. Notice, by the way, that we are warm. We are three degrees plus. <laughs> that is, of course, we f did find this bear coat. But even if we didn't find this bear coat, I mean, instead used this ski jacket that we found uh, in the summit, uh, we would co be cold, but barely, just barely be cold. So we could be walking out and about and not really worry about the cold at all. So that is a major upside to going to the summit so early on day four that we we get so many resources and the world hasn't gone cold enough yet. It's only been four days. So the global temperature of the world has only sunken by like maybe two degrees or a bit less. So we are still quite warm. We basically, by now, have negated the cold fusion badge that we have, and that's it. Uh, so we are really warm. We have, I think, we have plus 12 degrees warmth. Let's just double check that once we load. Uh, the loading from Tomb of Mountain to Pleasant Valley is a little tricky. Sometimes it refuses to <laughs> cooperate. They won't actually do what you say, uh, what you want it to. And they, my game has crashed a few times here, which is um, very annoying. Let's see if it doesn't this time. Yep. So we have, yep, plus 12 warmth bonus, plus 12. So we are very good. Um, we're now going to loot Pleasant Valley. We're going to start with the prepper cache right here, because also we have a pry bar, so we can open that. That's kind of like a small loot location, but we are going to loot it, because it's on our way. Then we're going to head to the plane, and then we're going to head to the farm, and the barn, and maybe Thompson's Crossing, but I don't think it's necessary. Thompson's Crossing tend to have food loot. There's a lot of loot that is related to food. Uh, not so much in terms of equipment and clothing. So probably I'll go to that area later. Now, this rope right here, leading out of Tim Wolf Mountain, is very easy to skip. You don't need to skip it, of course. I usually just climb down the rope because that's just the easy way. But right now, in this particular situation, because we've been to the summit and we are heavy, uh, we, we, we can't actually climb it unless we dump stuff. It is possible to sneak out on the edge and, and dump stuff by uh, dropping it from your menu, but we're not going to do that. It is also possible to walk off the edge and then grab the rope in mid-flight, but I would not recommend doing that. I have practiced and I can do it probably with 80% success rate, but that still means that one in five times you're going to die. So normally if I am not heavy, I will just use this rope and climb down. But because I came from the summit and I have a bunch of stuff and I'm very heavy, uh, I can't do that unless I dump some stuff. So instead I'm going to Skyrim down. I'm going to skip the rope. You can go left here and down, which is perfectly fine. You only take minor fall damage. But a safer way is to go on the right there, and it's actually quite easy. You just look for this little crack in the wall. So just hug the wall here on the right, 
and until you find this crack. See this crack right here? And you kind of wedge yourself into this crack. Remember to crouch if you're not sure, then you can just be extra careful. And then you can just kind of glide down here through this crack. See, like this. We're already almost down. But here we are. And then just go to the right and find the, the next crack. And then you can do the same. And you just kind of slide down here. And there we are. Oh, I didn't actually take any fall damage at all this time. And that's it. So it's not that difficult to get down this way. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> get a sprain after I climbed down. Let's loot this. I'm also going to loot the prep with cash. So let's see. Here's the other pot, which I would like. Uh, so in that case, I might leave this behind. They're very easy to replace. And then we're going to loot this. And this. Oh, we got some chocolate. And then we're going to loot the... Let's check here quickly. Sometimes there's wood. We don't really need the wood. And also we're already quite heavy. So I think we will just leave the wood. Uh, but we're going to loot the prepper cache. This prepper cache up here is always there. Now, on lower difficulties, you can find these extra caches spread around the world. There will be one in Pleasant Valley and one in Mystery Lake. But they will be in random location. Well, not completely random, but in predetermined random locations. I think there are nine possible spawns per region or something like that. And the game chooses one of those nine by random, and you can find them. On Interloper, those caches do not exist, so you can't find them. But this one does exist. It's always there. It's just a regular spawn. And we're going to go inside and, and loot it. Hopefully we will have light. Because uh, I don't really want to spend a match looting this. Uh, so let's see. Now we can see pretty good. First things first, let me check here. Sometimes there's stuff behind this crate. Not today. On lower difficulties, make sure you check there. Because there could be a gun behind there. Loot all these things. Now we have a pry bar. Let's see, how much condition is the pry bar actually? Probably 100, right? Yeah. So that means we can open these even if they are locked. Let's see. Let's open that. Open this. Open this. So, sounds like a blizzard is outside. Check, this is the one of the few grates you can actually <laughs> do. Uh, uh, I was hoping for a storm lantern, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Let's see, was there anything else? This one. Not much in here, unfortunately. We didn't really find much. It does sound like there's a blizzard outside now. Let's just have a look. If that's the case, we're going to go back inside. Yes, it is a blizzard. Now, I do know my way around, so I could just keep going through this blizzard like I did with the wolves in Ash Canyon. It's no problem. But we are going to be out in the open a little bit because we're going to go to the plane crash and pick up the suitcases there and get some more clothing. So it's not the best thing to do. I think I would rather wait this blizzard out. So we're going to stay in here it's actually almost night time so we could stay the night here if we wanted to but at the very least we're going to go inside and we're going to wait out this blizzard by either sleeping or just passing time and then we'll continue on to the plane crash Okay, we're just going to stay here until either the morning. Mm, preferably not, though, or until the blizzard uh, dies. But because I might stay here, I'm going to drop the fresh deer hide and the sapling. Leave that, and I'm going to sleep for two hours just to see what happens. Doesn't sound like the blizzard ended, in which case I will probably just stay here. Tell you what we can do, we can read. Um, we can read an hour of the cooking one. The cooking is the most important book, so let's read an hour of that. Well, I'm not healthy enough, what's the matter? Oh, the pain. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. 
We're just gonna do some harvesting then. We're gonna harvest the shoes, I think. Or should we maybe try and repair them? How long does that take? 30 minutes? I think I will try and repair the shoes. Because I suspect these shoes are a little bit better than the jogging shoes. Yeah, they are a little bit better. Let's try one more time. It's not dark enough yet, so we'll try one more time. Yeah, there we go. You can see these, I mean, to be fair, these are wet. Uh, but these are just better all, all around, really. So let's harvest these. Pain is healed, but now it's too dark to read. Yeah, we're just gonna stay until the morning, to be fair. I think that uh, these are a little bit better than these. I don't really have much cloth, though. Well, uh, I think we'll just stay here for the night because the blizzard is going on into the night and there is no real point going out now. It's it's just too late. So let me just see if there's anything I can harvest or do any do anything like that. I could harvest this, but I don't really want to, at least not yet, because I might replace it with this eventually. Uh, let's see. These things, I think I will keep that for now. Let's see. Oh, we can, we can craft some of these things while we wait. It doesn't matter you're in the dark, you can still craft these things. Uh, basically, the way the game works is that um, if you're in the dark, you can still do any kind of crafting that doesn't require a tool. And when I say crafting, I don't really mean crafting, I mean more like harvesting or preparing. So like gathering cloth from curtains, breaking down a crate, preparing uh, berries, all that stuff. You can do that freely uh, at night, but once you use a tool, so for, you can't do it. So for example, if I wanted to break down a crate and I want to use the hammer or the ax, it won't let me do it because it says it's too dark. Uh, if, I, if I want to do it with my hands, then it will let me do it. Now let's see, uh, what else can we do in the dark? Not so much, I guess. But we prepared a bunch of stuff to cook, which is great. And I think we're now going to just pass time a little bit. Uh, let's just do that, maybe maybe two hours, but let's just see. So now it's midnight, we're on day five. If you didn't know, when, when the moon is in the middle here, that's when the day changes in the calendar. So we should be on day five now. Or oh, is it six, my bad. Oh, six. I lost track. Yeah, my bad. Uh, let's eat some stuff. I think we'll eat whatever I can. The heaviest is the best. We'll eat this. And I also want to drink these things. Let's just continue eating cattails. They barely weigh anything. But um, I'm going to maintain the well-fed bonus. We're not going to have any problem with food because we're going to go to the plane crash next which will not have much food but then we're gonna go to the farm there'll be food there we'll get cattails along the way plus we have all this stuff and there should be a guaranteed can opener here in Pleasant Valley I believe it is in the farm I never really uh, looked for exactly where it is in the farm but uh, yeah, that means we can open these other things because you really would Ideally, you should open these cans with the can opener or a knife or hatchet because then you get more calories. You don't lose calories from smashing them open. Uh, although I think I lose a little bit less. No, that's probably level three. Uh, so you, you want to save the cans until you have a can opener or a knife or hatchet, if you can, but you might not be able to. And we're going to sleep six hours. I think we'll actually only be able to sleep five hours, but that's okay. And then we'll see what it's like after. It sounds like it's windy out, but not a blizzard. We have healed up the uh, the pain. How are we doing with weight? Oh, we can actually. Mm, oops. We can actually almost get rid of the being heavy. In fact, I think we can get rid of it. If we drink this, these are actually quite heavy, these drinks, and then we'll drink water. I think we'll just be just uh, over. Uh, I might actually dump some of these then, if that's the case. There we are. Now we're actually not heavy anymore. How about that? We can run freely, for example. So let's go. Let's go out to the plane crash, and let's see what the weather's like as well. 
uh, even if it's windy, I'll still go blizzard, we'll go back down, I guess. <laughs> um, we have flares in case we run into wolves, even if it's windy, but I don't think I need to start a fire or anything anytime soon, even if I get cold, because we're going to head to the farm after. All right, there we are. It's fine. We can go. Let's see, just give me one second. Yeah. All right. We're against the wind, which is a little bit annoying, but we're still going to run a little bit. Especially when we're in cover. And then we'll come to this hunter's blind here. And from here we're going to go to the um, plane crash and loot all the clothing there. We're also going to pick up any birch or maple we find along the way. Not that many along the way right now, but we'll find maple going to... Mystery Lake for sure. There is some that way as well. I don't know if we'll be needing it though. Let's see what there is here. Another book. Now we're heavy again. <laughs> and uh, we're going to head up to the plane crash. We could go around this way. But this is also possible to go this way. So we're going to do that. Usually there is a corpse here. Here it is. We'll grab that. If there is anything on him. Grab this. There's a feather, two feathers more. Grab those for arrows. A little berry. I'm just running mostly because it's kind of cold. I want to get there as soon as possible. There is a bear that patrols this area, but I've never, I've like, ever had a problem with the bear. Uh, it does happen that the bear comes up walking through here and down, uh, but even then you can sneak past it by going on the side here. So the bear should never really be an issue, like, at all. So if you go this way, you will come up to the plane crash, and we can start looting the suitcases. Now we already have decent amount of clothing, but if we're lucky, we'll find some uh, wool sweaters. And maybe a better hat, maybe leggings if we're lucky, but I doubt we'll find that. Usually the suitcases here tend to have uh, like uh, the, the, the inside layer stuff. So you'll find things like socks uh, and shirts and things like that. You don't usually find heavy leggings and stuff. I say that and I find combat pants. <laughs> really good combat pants too. Yeah. That's really good, wow. Uh, hoodie, we'll have a look at that later. But usually you find stuff like that, yeah, hoodie, mittens, socks, and so on. Uh, but you can find trousers. Too heavy. I didn't even see this corpse, but... Right. But yeah, I got some trousers, that's crazy, exactly what I wanted. I would like a better hat if there is one, and... Long johns will be great, and wool sweater would be great. I'm heavy anyway now, so now it doesn't matter. Yeah, dress shirt, so that coming. So cold in my life. Let's open all of these. We'll also check the plane itself, and we'll probably check Skeeter's Ridge. Okay, we found that. It's not, not great. There's a cave over there we could maybe loot, but we're not really in a hurry to do it. Shoes, we don't need that, but we'll harvest it. Uh, book, okay. Check if it's corpse. And remember to loot the cabinets in here, so on this uh, this little section here, you can loot these ones. They're overhead lockers, it's just that they're upside down. Oh, my hat. Is that better? Oh. Both. both of them are slightly better. Alright. Uh, and then we'll check this stuff. Is there any corpses here? No. Check this though. I would really like some underwear or something, or better socks maybe. Best socks are climbing socks, but wool socks are good too. Doesn't look like there's much else. Another hoodie. Alright, that's the last corpse. That's the drink. This drink is always here. Or well, maybe not exactly there, but around the plane crash. I'm gonna check up here too. And we're gonna check the overhead lockers first. Usually these are empty. I very rarely find anything here, but, you know, sometimes. I 
Let's just check them anyway, though. Seeing as we're here. And then I think we'll go to Skeeter's Ridge. We're not going to loot that cave that's uh, further up the road here. Which is a perfectly good cave. There's a bed in there. But we don't really need what's there right now. So we'll leave that. Uh, let's just check between the seats. Doesn't look like there's anything. We found the Polaroid. Oh, how nice. This is Signal Hill, I believe. We might maybe do that if I remember. Alright, let's jump down here. Check the last two suitcases. More Easy. shoes. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted. That's it. There we go. So much better. All right, let's get out of this plane. We're going to go to ski this ridge now. Only problem is that this is a wolf area, so there could be wolves here. Uh, if you are in the situation I'm in now, you can make a decision. You can ignore Skeeter's basement, because it's not really essential to go there by any means, uh, and just keep moving. Or you can use a flare. I will probably uh, use the flare, but it depends on where the wolves are. They tend to be around here. Is this my lucky day? No wolves? Huh. That is fortunate, if so, because usually there's two wolves here. Now we're going to check this burnt down house first, because there's a corpse here, and there's usually tools here. So we already have tools, so we don't really need it, but there's still quite a you know, bit of good loot around here that we're going to check. Alright, so let's check this. <clears throat> here is the other quality tools. There's always tools here, uh, as far as I know. Not always quality tools though, but tools in general will usually be found there. Nice. We could also get the stress pistol out. Just in case the wolf is suddenly around the corner. Seems alright though. Let's warm up in here and sort out our inventory a little bit. And then we'll head to the farm. Uh, possibly via the... What's it called? Deserter's cabin or something like that? I would really like to find a storm lantern. That's like the main... Well, we want to find a hammer. That's, that's something we really need. But we also want to find the storm lantern. Got some pork and beans. Let's see what we got here. Oh my food. Still eat this. Socks, the bad socks, but that's okay. We'll take this, but I don't know if we need that. And then we'll check this as well. And when we get to the farm, we'll situate ourselves a little bit more. But for now, I'm mostly going to see. What is warmest? So, uh, how long does it take to harvest this fat? Yes, that's okay. We don't need this. Let's look how bad these socks are. It's terrible. A lot of shoes we can harvest here. Uh, mittens that are decent. Uh, in fact, I probably would prefer having these. Uh, and then we can maybe repair it quickly. It doesn't take too long. The best ones is wool mittens, though. Oh, the wind seems to have died down a bit. Nice. But now it's plus five. Yeah, that's good. What's best here? Uh, well, this one is slightly better. Uh, what about here? Yeah, nothing really major there. We'll uh, harvest these. You, you can only wear one rabbit hat, so it's always good to keep some backups of uh, hats you find. But uh, it's really not a big deal for these cheapo, bad quality hats. If you find wool toques, you should never harvest those. So. In terms of clothing, like you can freely harvest things, but you you want to keep some backups of things because in the long run you're going to create animal uh, clothing, but you can't do everything. You can put animal clothing in one of these slots, uh, these two slots, these two slots, and this slot and this slot. That means that one of the hats will always be necessary, one of these will be necessary, both of these and then both of these and both of these. So I would recommend keeping some of them. I don't bother about sports socks, but for example, the thermal underwear, 
you know, at some point you'll find another you have two and you want to wear two. But if you find a third one, you might want to keep a third one as a spare in your base. Same with these things, keep a spare in your base. Wool toques, keep those spare and ear wraps, keep those spare and any climbing socks or wool socks too. The rest you can probably just safely harvest because uh, it, it will also keep uh, cost you cloth to maintain it. You're going to have to go back and repair it every 50 to 100 days, even if you don't use it. So it's costing you cloth to keep backups, which is not great. Uh, but if you lose everything, if you lose all of your clothing, you can still have a lot of animal clothing. You can have a rabbit hat, two bear coats, rabbit gloves, double uh, deer legs, and uh, deer boots. So you'll still have decent clothing, but it would be better if you can keep all of this stuff. So that's why it's nice to keep uh, back up. All right, we're quite heavy, but not extremely heavy. We're gonna head to the farm and try and get situated there. We'll do, we'll probably stay at the farm for like a day or two just to um, uh, situate ourselves in terms of our inventory, maybe do some repairs and uh, just, you know, take a moment to, to reorganize ourselves and then we'll keep going. Okay, there's a little shortcut you can take here. If you go, uh, I'll show you how it works, but if you want to take the safe route, what you can do is go this way. Just go straight over there, and then we'll take you right down to the ramp towards um, uh, to back to farm. But you could also go this way, because there are speedrunners do it in the hunted challenge. So down here. And you go down here, and it's pretty easy to just hug to the, to the right like this. And then you can go on the left. And then you just carefully go down like this. You go over here. And then you just do the same thing here, right? So you can skyrim down pretty safely. But you don't need to do that. You could just go to the left and you'll end up down over here. No problem. You can also skyrim down here if you ever wanted to. It's really easy. You just uh, go straight down here. It's very easy. You can alternatively now go under and over there. And that will lead to the cabin that's there. I think it's called Deserter's Cabin. And there'll be some minor loot there. We don't really need it though, so I'm going to ignore that and just jump down here. We don't need to take this road at all. It's just a little shortcut. If you're, if you're in a hurry, or you're heavy. We're going to head straight to the farm now. I'll loot some cattails along the way, but other than that, we're going to head straight there. And then we're going to get situated. It's not far. Uh, I'll run when I can, but the running barely does anything at all because we're so heavy. Well, we're kind of heavy, and also the wind is against us, so running really doesn't do much. It pretty much makes you walk normal speed. It's like phasmophobia running, it doesn't, you're not really running. Um, at least in the old phasmophobia. Should be a couple of birch uh, barks here that we can uh, loot. We'll also grab this wood, just because we might make water or something like that. If this wind is very annoying, it's like right in my face. It's really, really slowing me down. I'm gonna grab this birch. Uh, just because I want to cook that. I'm not too worried about my health because we have a lot of health. Our meat is a full. We're gonna get cold soon though. But we're gonna take a day or maybe two to stay in the farm and situate ourselves with our inventory. Maybe leave some stuff behind if necessary, but we'll see. Let's grab these. These are probably the only cattails I'll take. And there we go. So wolf around, not today. We'll leave the rest of the cattails for later. Uh, is there any point running? Not really, we're just gonna walk. Okay, so we, <laughs> we are quite heavy because of the clothing and because the wind is against us. So I'm just going to walk back to the farm. Let me think, what could I talk about while we do that? Well, the plan for this run now is to find a hammer. Uh, I, as I said before, there are loot tables on Interloper. There are four loot tables, so when you play on lower difficulties, there are certain spawns that are always there, uh, but for the most part things are random. And you can find a hacksaw and a hammer in you know, random locations, you can find them inside a toolbox. But on Interloper, all of the major loot items, such as hammer and hacksaw uh, and pry bar and bedroll, 
they are in sort of predetermined locations and pretty much always out in the open. They are never found in containers. They are always laying about somewhere. And the way it works is that there are four sets of loot in the game, uh, which are specific locations where things are located. So the hammer might be in the barn or in the signal hill, for example. But it won't be in Thompson's Crossing, or in a tool shed, or in a drawer in Skeeter's Ridge, or whatever. It will never be in those locations ever. It will only be in set predetermined locations. And when the game starts, it will randomly choose one of these four loot tables. And then all of the loot, of, in terms of major loot, is already decided. So that's things like bedroll, maglens, mm -hmm. hacksaw, hammer, uh, fire striker, uh, what else? <coughs> Not hatchet and knives because you don't get those on Intel. You have to make those, so they don't they don't count. You have to make those. Same with the bow. So that means that if you really wanted to, you can look at the loot tables. I'll put a link in the description if I remember. So you can look at them if you want. Uh, there is no right or, way, uh, right or wrong way to use them. You can choose to not use them at all and just immerse yourself in the game and get a greater sense of exploration. Or you can use them to know exactly where things are. And you know, if you're struggling with the interloper and you're really, really struggling to find an item then maybe you can look up the loot tables and try and think what items have I found it's like, okay I found a hacksaw the hacksaw is at the summit okay and then you can see hmm was there a hammer uh, in the mountain itself no there wasn't okay well then it must be this loot table and it will tell you where the items are and uh, some people do that wow look how fast we're moving now suddenly because the wind changed <laughs> look at that and there's no right, away, uh, right or, or, or wrong way of doing that. Uh, if you want to do that, some people have memorized the loot tables. They will know what every item in the game is. When the game starts, all they need to do is check one or two locations. And then they'll know exactly where everything is. Uh, personally, I'm not like that. I have looked at the loot tables. And I have memorized the loot tables for Timberwolf Mountain. Only because of the hacksaw. And I want to know where the hacksaw is if I spawn there. But other than that specific uh, incident uh, or case, I have I don't know the loot tables. I know where all the locations are, so I know where the locations where these items could be are, and I go there and I check, but I don't know which is which. So I, at the moment, have no clue if what loot table I am on. I don't know where the hammer is or where the hacksaw or the other hacksaws are or the bedrolls are. I don't know because it makes it to me more immersive. You don't really know where loot is so you're gonna have to go out and explore and I find it more enjoyable. Of course through experience you will, you will learn some things and you will learn where some items are but for the most part I like just exploring and discovering where items could be and that's just my preferred approach you don't have to agree okay we made it to the farm look at what nice weather we have today we're going to loot the farm we're going to start with the basement all right we're in the basement first thing first check this first aid kit here Bandage, and then over here there'll be some matches. These matches are always here, which are these ones. So if you were to spawn in Pleasant Valley, make your way to the farm because these matches are guaranteed. They'll always be lying there. So thank you for that. And looks like we have the second hacksaw. <laughs> How about that? Laying here hiding in the basement. Okay, so that's where the hacksaw is for this region. But because I don't know the loot tables, I don't know what that means. I don't know where the hammer is because I haven't learned them and I don't really care about learning them either but if I was completely stuck I would maybe look it up but let's loot this base and see if we can find more matches as lucky uh, I would like to find some long johns 
Ooh, long johns will be the best. Uh, Whitestone, we'll take that. Let's search this. Have you guys seen the uh, the video where like a survivalist reacts to the long dark and it's this old guy and uh, he, he, he's very good but they clearly did not teach him how to play the game so he just walks around he picks stuff up and he'll be like oh we'll take this yeah we'll take that we'll take this but he obviously had never been taught how to play the game so he never equips the, the clothing he, he gets he just picks it up he doesn't actually wear it so he keeps dying of hyperthermia <laughs> Uh, but then they got this uh, woman whose name I forgot late to react, and she was a bit better. But it would have been it would have been more fun to get a real survivalist to play the game, not just uh, you know walk around looting things. Okay, so anyway, we're in the farm now. This is a great place. There's a lot of loot here, lots of things to find, lots of cloth. We're gonna loot everything, and we're gonna stay here a day or two to get situated. Handy. Uh, I'm gonna take the water also, but not right now, I guess. We got tea. That's nice. Uh, we're gonna take this maple. There's usually always something here. We got another peach, and there should be sometimes there's something under here. Not today. There's usually quite a lot of loot in uh, the it farm. It's a, a great place to find food, especially. So I highly recommend coming here. We got another cooking pot, which could be handy for later, but not right now. Oh, look at that. You can actually have six stoves going here. Take this note. There's usually quite a lot of cloth here. There's quite a lot of food, so this is a really great place. It's a good base as well because right outside the base, you'll have wolves, you have deer, you have a bear. Uh, a moose spawn isn't far. If the moose does spawn, it's not guaranteed. Uh, let's have a look. Is there anything else? Have I have another book. We got a lot of books. So it's going to get quite heavy, but that's okay. So we're just looting at the moment. Let's see what else we got. Nothing here. Let's look at this. And upstairs, if we're lucky, there'll be some sort of jacket or something on the bed, which will be great. Which we don't... Actually, we don't really need the jacket. First thing, I'm gonna drop this. Uh, this one. And this one. So I can cure while I'm doing stuff. Because I might have some cloth and things as well. I want to do some repairs while I'm here. Let's loot all of this. I'll probably make some water and cook some stuff. Uh, I believe this should be a guaranteed can opener in the farm which I haven't found yet. Could be wrong though but That'll come in or maybe it's just in Pleasant Valley. I never really looked into oops into that to be honest. There we are, two wool socks. That's a detail that I am not sure about to be honest with you. More nuts. We can still cook the cans though but uh, We'll lose a lot of calories doing it. Because we have to smash them open. Alright, let's see. No plastic container on top. Let's check these. We're almost done looting now. Let's see what we can find here. What's left? Anything under the bed? If you play on lower difficulties, make sure to check under this bed. Because you can find a rifle uh, right here. It can be very hard to see. But it will be there. So if you're playing on Stalker or below, make sure you check in there. Alright, we are pretty much completely looted now. Uh -huh. Alright, I think that's it. I didn't find a can opener though, I'm be surprised at that. I'm going to grab some cloth. I'm not going to grab all the cloth in the hole. Uh, building, but I'm going to grab quite a few for repairs. So let's do that. Let's have a little drink. I'm 
grab some more of them because I would like to do quite a bit of repairs and I'm probably gonna fail some of the repairs as well. We have pretty good items now so a lot of the stuff I'm wearing at the moment is unlikely to be replaced for a while. A couple of things can be replaced but they're all pretty high-end stuff. Alright, I think that's decent and now we got 20, that should be fine. We're now going to go down and I'm going to check one more time around the kitchen because I'm a bit surprised I didn't find a can opener. Let's have a look at that. Oh, there we are. I knew there was a can opener somewhere in this damn building. Found it. Okay, then I think what we're going to do is we're going to do some cooking, but not right now. We're instead going to okay, take advantage of this light and do some repairing and maybe even reading. Now in a very safe location, so I'm going to eat things that are low condition. We're going to eat that. And if we get food poisoning, we get food poisoning. Who cares? Uh, eat everything is low condition, including these things that weigh quite a lot. No, that weigh very little, sorry. Because if we get food poisoning now, we can recover from it with our teas and just resting. And it's really no problem. Mouth so dry. Have that. And then... We'll have the water. Actually, we can drink this. That should be fine. Getting rid of some weight as well. And there we go. Nice. And we'll, we'll cook all of these things. We might leave them, or maybe we'll eat them. We'll see. But first things first, I would like this from repairs, but I also have some books. And I might actually read this book, The Sewing Primer. Because uh, repairs tend to fail quite often. So if I try to repair this, for example, this is only 70%, which is not terrible. But if I can read this book first, it will make it a little bit more likely that I can level doing it. Ready to find so a let's place to rest. see if I can read this first. Uh, I think we can do one more hour. I don't think we can do a final hour. We could try, maybe it will be okay. Yeah, we actually got it. Okay, now this is just to start a fire, pretty much. And we're gonna start the fire and we'll cook through the night quite a bit. Let's light this torch. We have a lot of uh, these, so we can make a ton of water if you want to. Let's make a fire here. Yes, do that. Uh, for some stupid reason, it chooses the fire starter first, the fire striker first as the fourth, even though I have a lit torch. So uh, you got to be careful about that. Don't just click start. Make sure you check what um, what fire starter you're using. Okay, we're gonna put this on. We're gonna put on some of this wood. See, the wood is fine. We can wood as well. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna cook a bunch of water here. We're gonna have another drink. Okay. And then we're gonna do some more cooking with... by placing all the cans we have next to it. So we're gonna do this. I'm going to cook all of these soups only because it will level cooking. We don't need to eat them right now. But now we have a can opener, so we can open all of these and cook them like this. The can opener, how, what's the condition? 88%, so we have no problem with that. We're going to cook all of this stuff. <coughs> and you can place them next to the fire like this, and it will still cook. It doesn't actually have to uh, be on the fire, just near it. And you don't have to eat it to level up cooking either, you just have to eat it when it's hot to gain the heating effect. Uh, then we got some beans. We have quite a lot of cans here to level. And we also should put some, put this on and we can cook some teas and things while we're at it. What's next? Uh, we, we can't cook these, but I'll put it down here just so that... They are a bit more visible. More beans. Keep cooking. More beans. It's going to take a little while to cook all these things, but we get, should get them all cooked. That should level us up a little bit too. 
And we're not losing any calories now because we don't have to smash the cans open. Remember that opening the cans uh, at this stage will means means you have to smash them open. And you'll lose calories doing that. About half of the content of, you know, at least one third of the content uh, will be lost. I think the lowest I've ever seen is like 18% calorie loss or something like that. Is there anything else? Yeah, there is some more. Uh, so you want to wait to open these until you have a can opener. Because then you can do like this, and then you have a ton of calories. Let's see, we got some more. As you can see, we're doing a lot of cooking here. Is that it, or is there more? That's it. That's all of them. Let's grab these. So that's all of them. <laughs> that's all the food. We're actually going to eat the first one. Uh, only because I get another can that way that I can use for teas. And on that, we're gonna let these cook. I'm gonna craft one of these. While I wait. Weaker. I'm gonna take some uh, condition damage now because I'm tired, but very, very little. Okay. And let's put on some more of this. I'm pretty much, I don't need all these teas, I'm just doing it because I want the level cooking. Oh, I don't have enough water. That's all right. Just go over here and grab the toilet water. And then we'll have enough water again. There we go. Make another cup uh, or tea here. There we are. And these should all be cooked now, I think. Yep, they are. So we're going to pick up all of these. And let's see how much our cooking skill goes up, actually. We are about here now. I'll grab these. Make sure you pick them up before they get burned. This should level our cooking a little bit. Yeah, it went up here. Very nice. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't think there's anything else like craft and stuff because we have bandages. We might make this a temporary base where we store some items that we're not going to take with us because we'll be too heavy. Just do this at the same time. With all of these teas. You can heat up these teas by placing them next to the uh, to the stove, but you can't cook them next to it. So I can do like this, for example, and place them next to the stove, and it will start warming up. And then I can drink them warm and get a warmth bonus. But I can't actually place like you know these these things. Well. Then. I can't place these to cook in a cup next to it. It has to be after it's cooked. Alright, let's also get rid of this. And we'll go and sleep soon once the water's boiled. Five minutes, how long has this got loads? Okay, we can keep making a lot of these teas. I'm also gonna make a couple herbal teas because I might use one now to sleep a bit. Uh, get some sleep and recover some more health. So we're gonna make one more herbal tea. Oh, did I run out of water? I did. How much do I have? <laughs> Barely anything. 24, 34. That's so why we can go and get some more water up here. That's almost done, but we can go get some more of it up here. In the other bathroom. So let's just go do that right now. Just to make cooking a little bit more streamlined. But I could also just wait. 194, that's plenty. It takes 0.25 liters of water to cook one tea or coffee, whichever you're making. Alright. Once you have a knife, you can also break down these things, the pillows, for more cloth. These, I think we got quite a few of them. We'll, again, we'll harvest this one because it's very low condition. I do think I want a couple torches though, because I only have four torches. I think I would like to have five or six. That's a good one. And that's a good one too. This one I'm going to just harvest. 
That's alright, Will. We'll be okay. We're just getting situated. Don't worry about it. Make these teas. We can make one more tea, I think. Yeah. And we probably had enough after. That. And then we got lots and lots down. and lots and lots of water. Can barely even move now. <laughs> And we don't need this much water, so I'm going to place some here uh, for future Zack to find. When I come back here, uh, I'll uh, I'll get that. I might actually make another two liters and have it uh, end at the same time the fire ends, which is roughly two hours. Let's see, that's an hour. Yeah, so if we put this to last two hours. Yeah, that's fine. Then when I come back, the fire will have died out. But the water will have been boiled. So we're going to get some sleep. Uh, we're not going to get a full night's sleep, I don't think. Uh, well, we'll sleep ten hours because it's not that late. And then we wake up, it's going to be daylight. We can do some repairs and inventory. Uh, we're not going to sleep 12 hours, though, but we are going to sleep um, 10, and we're going to drink a herbal tea to speed up the health recovery. So let's grab that. Let's see, is it this one? Here, it has a herbal tea. Did I make more than one herbal tea? But I made more than Well, that's okay. We'll drink this one. We don't need one. There we are. We can also just harvest this. That's going to burn out when we wake up anyway. And then we're going to go to sleep for 10 hours. What's that? Oh yeah. Sleep for 10 and we should be quite well off when we wake up. And then we'll stay one more night there most likely. Okay, now uh, I am going to eat some of these things because I have opened them anyway. I'm going to start by eating the heaviest things and I'm going to eat the lowest conditions first because if I were to get food poisoning now it doesn't really matter. Didn't get food poisoning. Uh, and then we're going to eat this. See the, the peaches, they only give 450 but they weigh half a kilo compared to say pork and beans they give 600 and weigh 0.25. So the peaches are actually the worst ones in terms of uh, weight and all that stuff. So it's good to get these done. We'll drink this. And then we're going to go back down. There we are. And get ourselves sorted. I think we're going to leave some equipment here. And we're going to have this as a reserve base. And I'll log what's there. So here we are. Uh, this should be boiled. It is. Take two of these back because we have a lot of water now 11 liters. We don't need that much. We will be needing some while we stay here for one more day. And I'm leaving this here for the future if I come back. All right, so there we go. Now let's get ourselves organized. There's a few items that we don't need and uh, we can leave here. We can put it in this cabinet here. So let's open this cabinet and put in all the items that we don't really need when we're going to go to Mystery Lake now. So let's start here. We don't need two accelerants. We don't need the frozen angler. We don't need these field dressing books. This is this is just fire now, I guess. I'll take the cooking books though, because they could be handy to read when I have a chance. I'm going to leave one box of matches here, just for good measure, as a backup. In terms of this, uh, we got a lot of teas. Uh, we don't need to carry all of these. They're mostly just for cooking, so I'm going to leave some of these teas here as well. Uh, leave a couple of these birch teas too. Let's leave two more of these because we got a lot of rose hip ones. We're going to leave one of these antiseptics. We're going to leave the biggest one. We'll take the antibiotics though. They don't really weigh much. Clothing. Uh, oh, we found some more clothing. I forgot. Yeah, so this is better. And we'll, we'll do the clothing later after we've done some repairs. What about food? Uh, food. We can take with us probably. We're going to leave one of the hacksaws in here. Uh, we don't need these cans. In fact, there's no point even having them there. We'll just put them here. We'll just take them unnecessary space. 
What else? Uh, we can. Uh, I think I'll drop the regular flare, not the uh, marine flare, because the marine flare is really only useful for Tin Wolf Mountain. We'll leave one of the tools, and we can leave. Uh, I think I want to take both sewing kits, I think. And we'll take this stuff with us to the main base, I think. Alright, so that's about it of the stuff we're leaving behind. We got rid of six kilos of stuff. Alright, so now we're going to do some repairs. So, let's see. If you want to go through them manually like this and find out what needs repairing, you can do that. You can also go here on your clothing tab and sort it by uh, durability. And that's another way of doing it. And you can see what needs repairing. As we can see, combat pants sorely need repairing. We're going to do it this way though. So I'm going to try to repair these as much as I can while it's still light. We'll level up sewing a little bit. But more importantly, we're going to get warmer. If we can manage to repair this, that is, wow, three fails in a row. Come on. There we go. Uh, 78. This, we can only repair 30% amount because of our skill. So I'm going to repair this one, but not the other one some more. So they can get higher. Yeah, that's good. Moving on. This, I don't think it's worth repairing. This I would like to repair, mostly because I do not want it to get damaged and will gain 0.4 degrees by repairing it. So we're going to repair this. And then uh, socks. Yeah, I'm going to repair these wool socks. Alright. Uh, we don't even repair that. This also is pretty repaired. That's pretty well repaired. This too, it's the best of the worst, I guess. This is 74, so that can do with one more repair. 26% is fine. We'll just do that. And then what about the hats? That's 75. That should be, I would repair that because you get 0.5 degrees repairing it. So I would repair that too. So we're spending one day in here now recovering and sorting stuff out. And we'll repair this too. It's 66, so. so that's pretty good. There we are. So now you can see we have 17 degrees bonus warmth. Not bad for day, whatever this is, 7. Pretty good. So now we can start sorting out some of these clothing items that we don't necessarily need. We don't need these. These are very bad. So we're going to just harvest all of these shirts that are of low quality. Because we, we're not going to need them. So I'm just going to harvest all of this stuff. Uh, and let's keep the cloth instead. So these are, even though they are part of a clothing category that we can't craft, they are pretty bad quality. Let's keep harvesting all this stuff. I could spend this time reading because it's light, but uh, I'm not too bothered about it, to be honest. Uh, we will, we'll do this hoodie as well. I don't really want unnecessary clothing to lay around. I'd rather just harvest it. Uh, the socks are just, these are the worst socks in the game. So I'm not bothered about harvesting this either. I'm going to harvest all of these just for the cloth. You can do this later. You can put this in the cabinet and just sort out later. I'm just trying to sort out inventory now. Get rid of some mess that I'm not going to need later. Jeans, we can get rid of two. I guess we could keep that here. What about this? We got two of these. We'll harvest one of them. We're approaching darkness now. And now we are going to put some of this cloth in here because we got 17 of them. We don't need that much. I'm going to leave most of this here. I'm going to take eh, four cloth with me, I guess, something like that. Okay. Um... I think this lantern fuel we can probably leave behind as well. We don't need that. We'll leave one marine flare for good measure. And I might read one hour of the book. And also all the clothing items we're, we're not taking with us, we can leave here. These might get ruined by the time we come back. But if they do, then they do. Uh, this one I will take with me, I think, and put it in the main base. Uh, actually, what I might do, I might repair that one. 
because I might come back for it if I want to have a backup. It's going to take a little while for it to uh, be completely damaged, so we're going to leave that in here, actually. I was going to take it with and leave it in my main base as a backup in case the bear coat gets too low. Um, and actually, there's a consideration of doing how much does it actually give me. Let me just have a quick look at that. So if I were to switch, uh, it's one and a half degrees. So even in bad condition, the bear coat is better. But this is lighter, though. So there is an argument to switching. And I might actually... Hmm, it's a bit of a conundrum. I think I'm going to take the jacket with me, actually. And when I get to my main base, uh, then I can rotate between them uh, because of the weight. It'll be a little bit easier. So I think I will take it with me. Okay, how is the time? Uh, if we're lucky, we could maybe read one hour of this book. And we can get close to cooking level three, but I think it might be just too dark. No. Oh, just barely didn't make it. How annoying. Uh, oh, I can't really see anything. It's really pitch, pitch black. Might wait a little bit just to see if uh, the night sky comes out. Actually, I can't see anything. Okay, well, if that's the case, if you're really stuck, use something like this. Select a pot, or the best is the bedroll, to see where you are. I know where I am now. This is the shelf. Oh, here should be the door, I think. Uh, the basement. Okay, I'm facing the basement. All right, then I can go to the right of this. And I should... There's a table there, yeah. And then I should be able to find the stairs now. Is this the stairs? I think it is. There we are. I think I'm going up the stairs now, aren't I? Uh, no? Okay, well, that's a little bit annoying. It's actually completely dark. I can't see anything at all. Uh, but that's alright. We'll just... Let me pass a little bit more time see if the starry night comes out. And we can see... No, nope, I can't see anything. And uh, I think that instead of fumbling around, I'm actually just going to use... A match to get up to my bed because I can't be bothered. You shouldn't do this though. You can just wait it out or you can uh, go outside and get your bearings. Actually, maybe we should just try that first. Oops. Uh, let's see if we can exit first. I think it should be over here somewhere. Let's see. Curtains. Good. No, it's not. Okay. We're going to make light a match quick. Yeah, there we are. Just so I can see what I'm doing, uh, because it's just really annoying to get lost like that. So we had to use a match just to find the bed, because uh, if you really know your way around, you can use the uh, the pots. If you have the bedroll, it's so much easier, because the bedroll is so large, you can really see everything around you using the bedroll. But using a pot is, is very hard. I'm not particularly good at myself, as you can see, so I had to use something else to get in. Okay, again, I'm going to go by condition. I'm going to eat these uh, heavy things that are low condition. The, the dog food is actually heavier than these things, but these are low condition, so I am going to eat these. Uh, start with that. And then I think I will eat this, because it gives hydration. And then I'll eat the dog food, because it's low condition as well. Eat one more thing. Uh, I mean, let's eat this chocolate bar and some cattails as well. This is maintained as well, fed. And then this. And then I'm going to drop my cans. These ones. There we are. And then we can sleep. We can't sleep for 10 hours because we're not tired enough, but we can probably sleep like 8 or 9 hours. We'll put 10 though anyway, just to see what happens. Alright, we woke up. It is actually just barely daylight. But as you can tell, it is very windy outside. It's still a blizzard. So while we wait for the blizzard to pass, we're going to read some cooking books. I'll do one hour at a time until I can tell that the blizzard is gone. And then we'll be close to level three cooking. So we're going to do this one hour at a time. I think that's it. Sounds like it's pretty bad wind still though, but we'll have a look outside. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, 
Let's see what we got. Loading times being a bit slow today. I mean, it is a big game to be fair. Let's see, what have we got? Come on. It sounded like it's just heavy wind and not a blizzard, but sometimes it sounds like it's a wind and you go outside and it's a blizzard. So the game tricks you. Uh, this, I would say, is pretty much the same as a blizzard. It's not quite a blizzard, but it's it's practically the same because it's so windy. So I think we'll wait a little bit longer before we go outside. We might actually just finish reading this book so we can just dump it and not take it with us. Uh, so let's actually do that. I finished reading this, right? Yeah. Uh, let's just read these three hours. There we are, the wind died. There we go. And we can drop these two books too, because they are just... They are just wood now. And then we'll take these things. They haven't cured completely. And to lessen the weight even more, we are going to eat some more stuff. Again, focusing on heavy things. 49, yeah, that's fine. We'll eat, we'll eat that. Because, uh, strangely, you, know, you don't carry what you eat, if that makes sense. So, uh, you can just reduce the amount of stuff you're carrying by literally just eating it. So, we're going to do that to maintain the well-fed bonus. We haven't really harvested much animals at all so far. Just one there, I think, that we found, and that's about it. And we have 37. That's pretty good. Uh, we're going to leave these behind. And, yeah, there we go. Possibly episode 4, you'll need these to make the bomb or whatever. But we'll find that out later. What we're going to do now is we're going to head to the farm. Not farm. <laughs> I'm making a lot of speech errors this time. We're going to head to the barn, is what I meant. Because the barn is uh, a guaranteed steam location. So we're going to go there. And we have a beautiful weather today. Uh, we're not heavy. We're not even cold. Barely. So we, we can just freely do a bit of running and walking. It's not gonna not gonna affect our health very much. This is the benefit of doing what we just did. Of course, we did find the bear coat, but the bear coat at this stage in the game, it actually only gives me one and a half degrees warmth more than my ski jacket. So if I were to switch these two, we're only talking one and a half degree difference, and it would be what would that be? It would be 15 degrees in this case rather than 17. So it's not that big of a deal anymore. Uh, so because I spent two days in the farm just repairing stuff, I am now much warmer. I have better conditioned clothing. If I get attacked by a wolf, it's less likely to be damaged. I leveled up sewing. I leveled up cooking. I opened all my cans, could start eating them. I could dump stuff out of my inventory to no longer be heavy. And I am full health with 105%. And as you can see, this is a really great start. Even though we don't have the bow yet, and we don't even have the hammer yet, this is a really good start now. We're only a week in, seven days into Interloper. And we are at full health, we're well fed, we still have lots of food, lots of drink, we have pretty decent clothing. And especially in the afternoon, we're not going to be cold for quite some time. At least another 10 days or maybe longer. Because the gear that we have found so far is pretty high quality. We're just missing a few items to make it even better before we start crafting animal stuff. And the world gets progressively colder and colder, but it's still going to be another 43 days until it's going to be completely cold. And we already have really good clothing. So for the next uh, yeah, 10, 20 days or so, uh, we can probably go about looting and not really worry about cold particularly much. Because it, we're going to be really, really warm. Uh, sure, if it's a blizzard, then uh, that's a different story, of course. But generally, we'll be okay. The, from now, roughly around noon until the evening, the day gets warmer and warmer. So right now it's minus five. Maybe by the time it's roughly evening, it will be zero, assuming the weather holds. But if not, it will be close to that. It gets warmer and warmer until the night. Then it gets colder and colder. 
the early morning is the absolute coldest and then it starts slowly getting warmer and from around noon it starts getting particularly warm and in the afternoon of the game is the warmest time of day so in late game interloper you can actually go outside on days like this and be warm or just barely cold because the, wo the world is warm enough with your gear if you have like bear coats and things for you to go outside and not be cold especially if you have cold fusion but for now we're going to go in here i still would really like to find a storm lantern and long jumps but what, the reason we're going in here is two things we're going to see if there's a hammer in here because there could be a hammer in here and we're going to get the stim the stim can be here it can be one in i think it's four locations there's summit soda and we have another high quality tool Hope nobody needs this oh, look at that there's three of them uh, we will take it and just dump it in the main base when we get there there's this uh, let's just check here if there's anything we'll open these drawers just in case there's something in here uh something there's a corpse here not today though we'll check over here too Ah, oh, the corpse is here this time <clears throat> and then we'll check the car let's check in the back first nothing here let's see what we got here uh, doesn't look like we got anything you can sleep in here by the way this counts as a bed so if you ever come here and you're tired and you need to sleep then you can always enter the vehicle and if you are in a car and then select the ra the sleeping bag in the radial menu you can actually sleep in here bedroll or no bedroll you can sleep in here so that's pretty great and because we're indoors and our clothing is really good uh, you will never be cold here. Yeah, you don't need a fire However, uh, if you come in here and it's really cold and you have really poor clothing, like maybe this is one of the first buildings you enter, uh, you might want to consider making a fire just to make sure you stay warm. Okay, let's see here. Uh, nothing really here. Anything over here? No. Okay, let's go upstairs and find the stim. Let's have a look. It's usually on this shelf here. No. Okay, well then there's only one more place it could be, I believe. Let's check under some of the stuff under as well. Right, the whetstone. All right, let's open these things. Oops, I already opened that. Let's open the lockers. And then here. Now I think this stim should be on the other side of this workbench here. It's very easy to miss. So let's see. There it is, yeah, see, under there. Uh, if you didn't know the stim could be here, it's really, really well hidden, uh, you might want to come back here to the barn on the interloper run, regardless of how long it is, because it's very easy to miss. If you have a 100-day interloper run, and you know you've been to the barn, uh, maybe there's a voice inside of you saying, did I loot the stim in the barn? I can't remember. And if you're not sure, you should come back and just, just make sure that you have checked this part. This is where the stim is. So we have we have three stims now, I believe. Okay. <clears throat> Wood, okay. Uh, use oh, this. arrowhead. Huh. That's a new one. That's random. Cured leather as well. Let's loot this. And there's sometimes... Uh, yeah, we got this. Okay, so we didn't find a hammer, which is what we really wanted, but we got the stim. You can take that shortcut there, by the way. You'll, you won't take full damage. What we're going to do now, we could go to Thompson's Crossing. And if you are in my situation right now, and this is you playing, then depending on your food situation, you might want to go to Thompson's Crossing, uh, which would be around here. Because Thompson's Crossing, there's not much equipment there usually. You can find uh, usually a pry bar, maybe a storm lantern and some bits and bobs. But mostly what you go there for is food. There's a lot of food there. you got the rural store, you got the town hall or community hall, whatever it's called. So you got a lot of that stuff. Uh, you could also go this way and then take the route through the mines and head down the coastal highway, which will get you another stim. And then you get the Crumbling Highway and Desolation Point, another stim here on the lighthouse, and then go to the Riken and Forge. So you could do that, and I guess I could do that too. 
but I think I would prefer going to Mystery Lake and fall on Muskeg and forge there. Mostly because I have been staying indoors a little bit and, you know, taking advantage of that. And I'd rather stay outside for longer fires and forging more. So I'm not going to go to the Thompson's Crossing because I have a lot of food already. And I don't really need to go there right now. But I do want to go to Signal Hill to check there because it could the hammer could be there. If anyone's watching and you know the loot tables by heart and you looked it up, you will already know the answer. You already know where the hammer is. But I don't know because I don't memorize those. I like the experience of exploring the game and trying to find out where things are just by looking around. Sure, I know the high-end loot locations, the big places where things can be, but that doesn't really change much to me. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to Signal Hill, then we're going to go to Winding River, and there could be a bedroll in Winding River. This is a transition zone, and there's not much stuff in Winding River generally, but there is a cave there, and that cave can have a bedroll. There's also maple there, so we can go through that, and then we can also go through the dam in Mystery Lake, and there could be a hammer in the dam as well. Uh, and if we want to, we can check the. If there's no hammer, we can check the ravine because it, it might be in the train in the ravine. It's not much of a detour at all. And then we'll set up a base in Mystery Lake, either in the camp office or Trapper's cabin. And then we'll go and forge in Fallen Muskeg. So we're going to head to the Single Hill right now. Single Hill is a fantastic place to go to. There's the bear. Yeah, be careful in this area because the bear could be just there suddenly. Here's the crows. Hello, crows. Remember, these don't really mean anything. They're pure ambience. We can actually log this if you want. It's just past noon. Slight wind, clear weather. We'll see what happens. Some people say that this leads you to a carcass, but that's a bit vague. Uh, I mean, it could be true. Let's think what well, carcasses are usually in this direction. Uh, I can't think of any carcasses. The closer will be a corpse that's over there. That will be the closest. But in this direction, there's nothing. If we go the other way around and say, well, they came from this direction. Uh, yeah, I guess the abandoned homes, the like burnt down family home or whatever, what's it called? Abandoned Harris home or something in the Birch Forest. I guess the corpses are kind of there. So maybe it could lead to that, but I don't know. I don't see why you would want that. In any case, we're going to head to Signal Hill. We're going to head up right there. You can see the tower right there. That's where we're going to go. We don't need to go there. We could just head out of here right away. But I am going to go there because Signal Hill is great loose, loose loot. I would even argue that Signal Hill possibly has the best loot in the game outside of the summit because it's really good stuff there and I do apologize for choosing Will because his panting is notorious when he gets tired check this car on the way nope I don't hear anything nope um, you can whiff on single hill you can get up there and then there's nothing there Sure, that happens. But usually you get up there and you can find coffee, you can find a hammer, you can find a hacksaw, you can find all sorts of medical stuff, you can find combat uh, pants, you can find combat boots, I think. Uh, I think you can at least. Uh, yeah, you can find uh, some more good clothing, you can find can opener, can of peaches. I uh, think you can find a mag lens there. You can find a fire striker there. The fire striker is only guaranteed in the summit and broken railroad. And you'll usually find a third fire striker somewhere in the world. And it tends to be places like the Lake Overlook Cave near Myst in Mystery Lake, like near the camp office. But it can be other places too. And uh, Signal Hill is one of them. Okay, I'm just going to head straight there. I'm not going to really loot much on the way. There's two routes to take up there. I'm going to take the more direct route, which is more or less heading straight for it. Uh, you could now go up this way, and then there is a fishing hut up there, and a forest cave, possible moose spawn as well, uh, and then you can just head over to the single hill. But we're going to go this way, which is a little bit of a shortcut. Uh, but it does have increased sprain risk, unfortunately. But that's okay. We can live with that. 
So we're just going to head there. I don't mind running, uh, but we do have time because it's quite... Uh, there's still quite a lot of the day left and we're not cold or anything, so we're not really in a hurry, but... Uh, I like it. I have the Snowwalker uh, badge for a reason. Okay, so we're gonna head up here. There is a bear roaming this area. He doesn't usually come here though, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Might equip my crampons just to reduce the sprain because we're going up this hill. Uh, this hill is notorious in speedruns because you could die from it, which is not great. Uh, not die from it, you got sprains from it. And if you're doing a speedrun, getting sprain is, well, it's really not fun. I do apologize for my words. I don't know what's going on, but. Uh, I'm really meddling up my words in this tutorial. I keep saying the wrong thing. So I do apologize for that. But, you know, at least it's natural. Alright, so we're coming up here now. There's a rope anchor here that you can use. I never really understood the point of this rope anchor. Because if you come from the farm and go here, you, instead of taking the rope, you can literally just walk to the left of the rope, or to my right, and then you climb up this hill and up. So what's the point of the rope then? You can pretty literally just walk around it. But it is shorter, so if you wanted to get up there as fast as possible, then yeah, I guess it is faster. Um, when I learned Interloper way back when, maybe three years ago or something, and I learned it from a player called Shardul. Shardul Gaming he's called now on Twitch. And he... He used to climb up there. Shadow doesn't play that much interloper these days or long dark these days. He has uh, bouts where he comes on and he's you know, he can be online every day for a few months and then he kind of disappears and he comes back again later. And that's just how he does it. He's got a busy life. But he was the first person to teach me interloper. But if you want to learn interloper and you are bored of my videos or my voice or you don't think these are good or you would prefer an interaction with some sort of chat, uh, no problem, <laughs> don't watch my videos for the sake of it, only watch them if you think they're actually any useful. Uh, but if you go on Twitch, there's a huge Long Dark community, they all tend to know each other, they're all very friendly. The Long Dark is unique like that, in that it has a very friendly community, everyone tends to be very nice and respectful of each other, there's no toxicity. There's in very much like a family and very supportive of each other. So if you need any help, go on Twitch and just find a long dark streamer and there's plenty of them that are willing to help you out and answer questions. And many of them are better players than me, so. Okay, let's go inside here and see what we got. All right, let's see. We got first aid kit. Let's grab that. Let's open these. Oh, I, and... Could be useful. Oh, I never noticed Will said that. He specifically says, huh, lantern fuel. That could be useful. I am Will McKenzie. Uh, but, uh, huh. Okay. That's not that useful. Let's have a look around here. Some of the stuff hidden. If you're playing on lower difficulties, so Stalker and below, I would highly recommend that when you come here, you check every little nook and cranny, because you usually find like a rifle around here, a roll around there, another rifle around here, or whatever. There's all sorts of things hidden about. An interloper, not as much. You might find some stuff, like there might be something over here, for example. No. Um, but there, there's some stuff hidden about on interloper as well, but less of it. But that means that on interloper, you need to loot more carefully. You need to look closer, because there's fewer items on Interloper, and therefore it's easier to miss as well. Alright. Let's see what we got. We got herbal tea. We got peaches. We got soup. Anything under here? No. Uh, what about in here? No. Nope. What about up here? We got a flare, we got a plastic container, and we got some combat pants. Could end up being useful. <laughs> These are the third combat pants that I found. These are actually slightly better than the old ones that I had, so okay, we'll use those. 
But that's it. I didn't get any like high end items. I didn't get coffee or maglens or fire striker uh, or anything like that. Ah, we got work boots though actually. Work heavy. boots are great. Work boots are the best boots you can get on Interloper that isn't crafted by the deer uh, the deer boot. The deer boots are the best in terms of warmth, but the best boots that are non uh, deer is these ones. You know, they get two degrees of warmth. So that's great. Let's search these lockers. Great A. And let's see if we do this too. Mm. And I'm just wondering, hmm, we might consider staying here for the night. How much tinder do I have? Uh, only six, we might break this down then. Might stay here for the night because it's getting kind of dark and I don't have that much stamina because I was running a lot. And the next bed, there might be a bedroll in Winding River, but there could if, if there isn't, uh, the next bed will be the trailers by the dam. I don't think there's a bed in the cave itself. I don't think so. So that means that the closest uh, bed for me right now, if I continue going, is through Winding River and through the dam and the trailers outside the dam is quite far. And it should be fine, but it's also quite slow. It's getting dark. I think we might be better off just staying here and then resting. Uh, so I think we're going to do that, and we'll sort ourselves out. Let's see, I think we're going to harvest these shoes, but we're going to wait until it's dark. We're going to take advantage of the light, and we're going to do... We're going to read some more of these books. See if we can get to cooking level 3 soon. I think we can do probably 3 hours of this. Oh, I almost failed that because I was thirsty. Let's see, I think we can do one more hour of this, maybe two, but I don't think so. Now we can try, but I think it'll be just too late, just like the last time. Uh, maybe if we're lucky, yeah, we got it. We did get four, but we're not going to be able to get five. I don't think, we're going to stop about halfway through. Yeah, that's what I thought. We'll finish the last hour in the morning though. But I am going to harvest these shoes because we don't need these shoes now that we have the other shoes. So we're going to harvest these. And then we'll sleep here for the night. We don't need to repair anything of the stuff we found because we already have good stuff. So let's do some eating and we'll eat the heavy stuff. Uh, I would like to cook this to level cooking. Although it is really oh, heavy. Think about it. Food. So I, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to forego cooking this one because I'm already a bit heavy and this is quite heavy and I don't really fancy carrying it around. So I'm going to eat that. But I'm first going to eat this because that's going to make me dehydrated. So I'm going to eat that one and then that one and then I'll eat this one. So I'm going to forego cooking it just because it's one of them and it's quite heavy. But normally I would save this and cook it later. There we go, and then we're also going to eat this soup. And then we'll drink this soda, and that should make us pretty much completely full. We'll drink this water as well. Let's do this, and I'm going to dump these things. And I forgot, but I could have dumped this earlier, the sapling and also the hide. And then we're going to go to sleep for 10 hours. I think we'll probably only be able to sleep nine hours, I think, but we'll see. And it was ten hours. Okay, and then we'll, before we pick this up, we're going to take a drink. And then we're going to read the last page of this, because we have one page left of this. So we're just going to read this right now, and I think this will take us to cooking level three. Which would be good. Yeah, I'm not going to carry this with me, it's too heavy. Did that level us? No? Oh, we're very, very close. Okay, well that's fine. Now we can take this and we can leave and head to Mystery Lake. I am going to save the game though, so I'm just going to end exit and then enter again, so bear with while I do that. And then we're going to head to the dam. We still need to find the hammer, so we're going to do that. And the tutorial is going to continue until at least until we find that. <laughs> All right, let's go back in. 
just to save the game. There we are, saving that. All right, let's go back out. So we're now gonna head to Winding River. If we're lucky, there'll be a bedroll there, but we're also mostly looking for the hammer. Uh, there are, I think, a couple places here in Pleasant Valley the hammer could still spawn, but I'm not gonna check all those. Uh, I don't like to deviate from the route too much because then you end up looting the whole thing. You could now, of course, because we have so much food, we could stay in Pleasant Valley as a base. We could move around and loot more stuff. We could um, oh, sorry. we could uh, loot more cattails and all sorts of stuff. So let's get this and grab more of the food and loot everything. And we could just survive here in Pleasant Valley if we wanted to. But if, of course, if we did that, it would be a finite endeavor because we don't have a bow or means of hunting other than our distress pistol. So that means that we probably could survive in Pleasant Valley right now for a long time if we wanted to, particularly with our food and our gear. Uh, if we went for starvation tactic, we could probably survive easily 50 days here in Pleasant Valley. But, well, then, you, then what? Then you kind of out of resources eventually. You could of course hunt some bunnies and you could craft a uh, fishing tackle and then you could head to the fishing hut which is the only one in Pleasant Valley that's over in that direction by the lake and you can uh, fish. So yeah, if you really, really wanted to, you could survive in Pleasant Valley or pretty much any region in the game really indefinitely without a weapon. And that's actually a challenge if you, if you find interloper very easy, or if you'd like to challenge yourself and your survival skills. One thing you could try is to survive for 50 days without weapons. Try and start a new interloper run, and then survive for 50 days anywhere in the world. There's not be one area, just the whole world, but without any weapons. It will force you to um, loot, move about, scavenge, and you'll, you'll learn more of the areas. How, and how to utilize resources. You can also try a challenge that's called Dead World that requires a specific code. In Dead World, there are no animals in the whole game, uh, only the loot you find, which means you can you can actually never live indefinitely because there's no uh, there's no renewable uh, food source, so you will eventually die. But it's very good practice to understand how the game works in terms of where loot. Uh, is and how you utilize it Okay, so I like dropping by this cave here Because there's a couple of things to loot. There's usually this corpse and well, this this sardines. Is a, a good eat. Oh, oh, more matches. How about that? Get some more uh, feathers Some bunnies if you want oh, uh, FPS issues there uh, and inside here there's usually uh, salt crackers and I think a backpack Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I could have uh, mapped the Polaroid while I was up there on Seaman Hill, but I forgot to do that. I do apologize. Um, here's the crackers, and here's the back. I could have done that, and you could have seen how that works, but I uh, I forgot to do it. I'm sorry. I think maybe now it's too low visibility. Anyway, we're going to drop by this hunter's blind that's right over here. There we are. There's usually a book in here. Uh, I think I will leave grabbing these mushrooms. There are so many mushrooms around. We don't need to carry all of these. So let's cool. see the other corpse this time. Just want to lay down for and a minute. That's it. All right, let's keep going. Here's the exit from Pleasant Valley to Mystery Lake, which we're going to take. Be careful here. There is a bear patrolling this area. Well, there's a deer over there right now, so probably the, the bear is on that side. You may have spooked the bear to go this way. I think I can hear the bear actually. No, I couldn't. Well, the bear kind of patrols this this region, and he can also be over there. There's usually this cave, so in that direction. So up here is the cave, leaving out of Pleasant Valley. Very easy to miss. People walk past it all the time. Sometimes people ask for help while they're streaming, and it's very hard to describe because it's not really any big landmarks. But here is the exit. When you come down here, just look for this this tree here, this broken tree, and you go next to it, and then you'll you'll come up here. 
Uh, you can also come from the other side, which is over here. There's usually a corpse here. Well, not today, okay. Well, then you, you climb up this way. Alright, inside we go. We're gonna need a torch in here, probably. Uh, because uh, it's probably going to be too dark to see anything. Yeah, we can see a little bit, but it's too too dark, so let's light a torch. We got a lot of matches anyway. There we are. Let's go through here. We'll probably pick up some coal. How heavy are we? Uh, quite heavy soon. Let me just check something quickly. No, no it's pretty good. But uh, that's okay, we'll, we'll loot what we can find. We're gonna loot some stuff in the dam anyway. So it doesn't matter if we get a little heavy uh, going through these caves. There's a shortcut if you want. If you don't want to go the long way, you can just walk straight down here. Just jump down here on that ledge and down, and you won't take damage. So for speedrunning purposes, that's a good shortcut. Usually some coal here, we're gonna grab that. We'll be heavy now, but we'll also be warm. <laughs> So we're going to grab that. Look at this nice atrium here. What a cool, cool hall, huh? All right, let's go down. There's usually a little bit of loot there. If you go in this cave that's right here in front of me, you usually will find some more coal. I think you can find a pry bar in there sometimes. You don't need that though. But over here, there's some minor loot. Sometimes you'll find a wool toque if you're lucky. Let's check this person first. Oh, speaking of wool toques. Trail boots, we don't need that, but we do need this wool took. Thank you. Uh, I might actually just drop these. We don't need to carry it around. It's heavy. We'll leave it for another time to just harvest. I don't fancy carrying too much stuff. We'll leave this as well. All right, let's continue. We got the wool took. That's what we wanted. I might have to drop uh, some We're doing gear. really well with uh, with clothing in this run, especially once we got to, t to the summit. Now, when this run started, if I hadn't had the hacksaw spawn, if I knew it wasn't on the summit, I would have gone to Pleasant Valley right away. I probably would have ignored Ash Canyon, come back to it later, and then I would have just done this, what we're doing right now. When this is why this tutorial is probably going to be a little bit longer than the Ash Canyon tutorial uh, that I made, uh, just because of that. Let's see, uh, do I want to harvest this? Nah. We'll leave it, I think, because how many do we have? We have two. We don't have any guts or anything. I don't really want to house any guts yet. Maybe I guess I could get some when I have a base from some rabbits, just so we can cure them for the bow. Okay, we're coming out to Winding River. And we'll see if there's a bedroll, and we'll also see if there is a hammer. We'll pick up these cattails as well. We were really, really good with food, but you know, it is finite at the end of the day, so we are gonna pick these up. The weather's pretty decent. We can run a little bit though. Yeah, a little bit's fine. Let's just get that faster. Utilize the warmth of the torch. I'm not gonna run anymore though because now the wind is against me. I think it's also picking up. I wouldn't be too surprised if this is gonna blow out my torch. We have a couple seconds before it happens. Yeah, this is probably gonna blow it out. Mm, do I want to start the fire for whatever reason? Mm, not really. There's one or two things we can cook. Uh, we could use a little bit more water, I suppose. And maybe we can make it a brief fire. Uh, is that invalid? All right, let's find a valid location then. Like here or something. Oh, it's really... Really? that It's not that steep. Ah, oh, screw it. No. It's gonna be like that. Yeah, it should be alright. We don't need to start this fire, I'm just doing it just to uh, 
warm up a little bit, take advantage that this torch is probably going to die out very soon. So while that's happening, I might as well uh, make some water. And maybe I'll be lucky and level some cooking as well. Let's make, let's make half a liter only. And I'll also cook uh, this. I think that's it. I'll warm up a little bit too. There we are. I'll put one coal on here. Let's see, and while we wait for that, we can have a little look here at our inventory. Uh, and we can craft this. There we go. Uh, I think we'll just eat this, to be honest. We'll warm up a little bit faster, too. We don't need this. We'll just leave this here forever. Seven minutes. That's fine. We'll make a couple of teas. Just because we might level up cooking for doing it. Uh, so we'll just make that. We'll make a coffee as well, actually. Let's make a coffee. See if this levels our cooking. There we are, it did level our cooking. So at level 3 cooking, we get uh, that you now have no calorie loss when smashing cans. So now, if I was at this stage of cooking, if I hadn't found my can opener, and I haven't got a knife or a hatchet, now it would be safe to start cooking these uh, canned foods. Uh, even without the can opener, just because you're not going to take any calorie loss doing it. So you won't get the recycled can, but who cares about that? But you will get the uh, food, so that's the main benefit there. Cooking timing, extra calories is great, but that's not really what you care about. Okay, so let's go. I'm assuming this will blow out. Because it does seem quite strong. Yeah, it did blow out. So I'm glad I made that little fire. It warmed me up a little bit. It allowed me to cook a little bit, to level a whole other level of cooking. And uh, we warmed up and got some teas and stuff. So yeah, that was good. That was worth it. Let's see, how many stones do I have? One, two, three. All right. We're gonna check this cave here. That's to my right now, it's just uh, behind this rock. Normally you go around here where the bunnies are, but you can take a little shortcut and do, do this. It's not much of a shortcut, but <laughs> it's a little fun one. Let's go over this little edge here, and then here we are at the cave. So let's see what we got in here. First of all, we really want a bedroll, but I mean, we might not get it. We got this guy here who's been unlucky. Anything on you? Let's grab these forging. I don't think there is a bedrock. Nope. Just this. Uh, yeah. There's probably going to be a bedroll. That'll come. Uh, well, we can harvest that, I suppose. There will probably be a bedroll in Mystery Lake, though because we haven't found it yet, so... Uh, before that though, now when you leave, don't go back to the ice. If you have a hacksaw, and only if you have a hacksaw, go up this way instead, because there's maple up here. If you have, uh, don't have a hacksaw, there's no point really going up here. But if you have one, this is a good excuse to get the maple for your bow. Uh, you just go up here. Like a little path, it's like kind of hidden. And there's some mushrooms, and there should be some maple here. Yeah, there we go. There's two of them. Sometimes, sometimes there's three. And lots and lots of mushrooms, which we're not going to bother too much about. So now we got maple, and we got uh, one birch. 
Get some accelerant as well. And then we're gonna head back down. Uh, safest route is just to go down here. We're gonna go over there. That's the entrance to the dam. Right there. We're gonna go, just gotta go around though. I don't think we need to worry about cold because we're gonna be indoors very soon. Be a little bit careful with the wolves here though. There is one wolf only. Uh, I think I have seen two ones, but not an interloper. It tends to be a stalker if that's the case. But be a little bit careful. There he is, he's roaming the ice. Very often he will kill a bunny and leave you alone. Oh, he actually ran away. He fled when he saw me. <laughs> Where did he go? He went over there. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Alright, I think I'm going to run a little bit. Since I have the wind in my back. Let's go to the dam. We'll see if we can find a hammer in the dam. And also a, a storm lantern, which would be great. <laughs> It really sounds like the whole thing's collapsing. <laughs> Look at that. Alright. Yeah, we don't need... I was going to drink the tea uh, to warm me up, but we don't need it because uh, I'm barely going to get cold at all. Now here at the dam, there's a couple things to point out. Uh, going inside is one thing, but when you're out here, there is some loot in this area. Sometimes there's a little container uh, right here. I don't see it today, though. There can also be loot here, behind these crates here. Today there isn't anything, but you can find a backpack down here sometimes. In here there's usually nothing. Uh, since it's not here, it might be up here instead. Let's have a look. I'm not going to get it or anything, but let's see... Yeah, there's a container here between these crates. Uh, you can't get in this way. You have to actually break down uh, these pallets here, which we can't do in order to reach it. And arguably not worth it. I've done it a couple of times on my runs, but it's literally a standard plastic container that has random loot in it. So you could get something very good. You could get nothing at all in there. Alright, and this is scrap metal, this is always there, laying on the ground. And here, turn off auto walk if you haven't already. And then we're going to cross this dam. It's very easy. The dam can eject you a little bit, like if you hug the wall. It can kind of launch you out a little bit, but it shouldn't be a real issue. Uh, it, it used to be worse uh, back in the day. It could push you further out and... You could fall off, but now it's not really a big issue. I've never fallen off the dam. All right, another thing here, like uh, it's a little too windy to start a fire, but we could. And what I often do is I start a fire here. Oh, whiny wolf! That's the wolf down here, isn't it? Goddamn freezing. Where is he? Oh, yeah, there he is. I wonder if we can hit him in the head. Uh. <clears throat> No, that would have been funny. <laughs> that was kind of close. Alright, so you can start a fire here if you want, about here. Uh, assuming it's, it's you know not windy. And then you can uh, you can harvest this in peace. Uh, another trick here, another trick, but a little secret here is to go back here. And to these, uh, whatever these things are. The rolls. And in here, you can find some hidden loot. Sometimes there's a container here, but again, it's a random container, just random loot, nothing really exciting. Uh, it's actually very rare for me to find it on interloper. I almost never find it. I found it there, but on lower difficulties, uh, I have found it more often. So uh, I check out a habit, but it's very often not there. But on lower difficulties, it's usually there. All right, let's go in the dams. Let's see what we can find. The dam is very big. There's lots and lots of stuff to loot in the dam. It's huge. We're already heavy and we're just going to get more heavy. But uh, there's not that much to find really in terms of high-end items. So it's, it's not too hard. Like there's a pot that's usually there, but we already have two pots, so we can leave that. Uh, then there's these cabinets. We'll loot all of this since we're here anyway. But in here, we're just going to find a random loot. But these are good to loot though, because even though they are random, you, you know, 
uh, and low chance of loot, you do get good stuff in here. Like, I once looted the dam, and then in two drawers in a row, there were matches in both of them. And then I found coffee in these things. It's all sorts of stuff you can find. There's another cooking book, which we'll definitely take. Uh, cooking books, I believe, are only useful until level 4. Once you get to level 4 cooking, I think the books don't work anymore. Uh, at least they didn't before. I remember trying to read some books and they wouldn't let me. But uh, they, might, they might have changed it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, if I'm honest with you. Uh, sometimes Hintlin change things. They patch stuff. Excellent. Oh, more matches. Speaking of matches. Uh, and they don't write it in the patch notes. This sewing kit is usually always there. Uh, it happens all the time, so the, the, they, they only mention in the patch notes things that are very obvious, or things they've been fixing. But changes in the game are very often not announced. So maybe maybe they changed it. I think I saw a streamer read a book at level 4, so I could be wrong about that. Not a big deal though, really not that important. Let's go down here. There is a hacksaw spawn here as well. I don't think it'll be here now though, but we can check. So under the stairs here, there's by the way a wool scarf that's Over also here. always there. I don't think we'll be needing that though because we have the, the wool toques, but you know, still. But if you go here, instead of continuing, you go to the left and back here. And down right here, there can be a hacksaw. It will, it will be laying here uh, like this. And you can loot it. There is a clip of me dying here. Uh, oh, you can also find a jerry cans, by the way. Sometimes there's a jerry can around here. There's a clip of me dying here. I was very heavy and I couldn't uh, run. And as I crossed these red wires, <laughs> the aurora hit and it burned me to death. <laughs> Bad way to die. But, you know, that happens sometimes. Now, let's see here on the workbenches here. We could find a hammer here. Let's grab this torch. It's Stop usually... Uh, this one's 34. That's it. That's not the 100% torch. Let's see. Ah, we do have the hammer. Here we go. We found it. I thought it would maybe be here because I couldn't find it on any of the other loots. Didn't find it on the summit. Didn't find it on the mountain itself. Didn't find it in the fishing hut. Didn't find it in the barn or anywhere. Single hill. So I suspect that it probably would be here because... <laughs> I had been checking quite a few high-end locations with nothing. So now we have everything we need for crafting arrows. And it looks like we got more matches here. How about that? So we are really well set now. I think what I'm going to do is that I'm going to continue this tutorial until we get to the main base and then I'm going to just call it there and I will tell you what I would have done to continue and you can refer to the other interlocal tutorial what would happen with the rest of the forging. However, you can request that I continue this run until we forge if you would like to. But I'll come back to that at the end of this run. Now we're going to get through the dam. I'm not going to loot every single thing in the dam, but I'm going to loot things that I come across. And we're going to loot this area, for example. There's usually a plastic container here. Very often there's matches here. I, I would be surprised if there's matches there now, considering I found two random ones and one in the open. these two. There's a very high chance on Interloper that anything you open is empty. So the chance of finding loot in Interloper is generally very low. And I check this corpse. Very often he has a bandage next to him. Nope. And then we'll check the upper dam. We're not going to check the whole upper dam. There's not really any point, especially the offices upstairs is pretty much just random loot. I have, you can easily loot the entire upper office and find nothing. Uh, but then again, I have looted upstairs and I found two matches and I found food and some other stuff. So it can be good. Also, when you come here, check on your left because it can be simple tools there. No such luck today though. Not that we need it. I'm gonna keep going. You might also want to loot up there in that corner. There's one of one possible fire striker spawn. And there's usually a flare up uh, up here as well. 
So there are some some minor loot around there, but we don't really need any of those things, and I'm not really gonna go around looting everything. I do have a run uh, that I do sometimes off stream and sometimes on stream on Twitch called the Winter Merchant, and that run is a regular interloper run, ex except I'm not allowed to use or consume any items, and I have to store all of the items I find in one place. Uh, so I basically loot the entire world and put all the items in one place, and that takes a while. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, I do have the footage of most of the run, but it's very, very long. But it's more something I would like to show off when I have looted the entire world, which I haven't done yet. It takes a very, very long time uh, to loot the entire world of the Long Dark. Could end up being useful. Let's see, we will loot this though, just because we're in here. We'll open the safe also. The safe is very hit and miss. Uh, you can get very good stuff in the safe. You can get a air wrap, for example, which is fantastic. But you can also just get like Canadian money, which is less fantastic. But we're gonna check though, just to see what happens. So let's see. Uh, 45 I would say uh, the easiest way to do this is to do it very fast and just wait for the click and then repeat this so this was 45 then I do this and look for the next one it seems to be 21 or something and I go back to zero then I go back up to 45 and 20 or 21 wherever that was 22 and then I go a bit slower there we are and then we got it that's usually the fastest way, in my opinion. We got yeah, maple late. syrup. Yeah, you know, that's not bad. I'll take that. And that's pretty much it of the dam we're going to loot, except for over here by the workbench. There can be a storm lantern here. Found some mittens. That's not fantastic, but we'll take it. And let's check this as well. Then we're going to head to the camp office, where we're going to do it via uh, Alan's Cave, or whatever it's called just to see if there's a bedroll there. If there isn't there, it might be in the camp of it itself. Okay, nothing in there. And I'm not going to loot this part of the dam or upstairs. Uh, we can come back and loot that later. Because those are mostly miscellaneous areas. We're not really going to find any major stuff, especially anything that will affect our current run and the start of the game. You can of course do that, feel free to loot everything when you go through areas like this. There's no wrong you know, way to do that, there's no harm at all. Uh, but that's entirely up to you. I don't usually do all of that, especially on tutorials like this, because it will take uh, a little while. Look at this, four maple syrups. I'm gonna eat some of these because I wanna get rid of some heavy stuff. And also, I don't have that many calories. So let's also drink this. Hopefully it won't kill us food poisoning. And let's have a drink as well. It'll be a little bit lighter now, but barely. Alright. Now we're going to head out. <clears throat> we could sleep in the trailers that are right out there, but there's no real point in doing that. What's what's the point? Um, we are halfway to fatigue, and we're not that far from camp office, so we're going to go to camp office. Nice clear day. We're actually warm, plus three degrees, because it's late in the afternoon, and our clothing is great. Be a little bit careful coming out of here, because it could be a wolf. Uh, I'm not going to loot the trailers either, because again, I am heavy, I have everything I need. There's only a few items I would like to have, like I would like uh, another uh, thermal underwear or wool long johns if I can. I would like another uh, wool sweater, I would like wool mittens, and climbing socks if I can find it, and maybe snow pants. Actually, do, can you find snow pants in the interloper? I think you can. But anyway. Uh, those are very, there's very few things, and Storm Lantern I would like, so there's, there's hardly anything left for me to find that I would like to do, and I like to close in this here, just to make sure. There's very few items left for me to find that I really would like to make this run better, 
So now that I have everything, I have the stress pistol, I have good gear, that it's also repaired, so they're very good condition. Let's see, do we have a moose here? No, we don't. We don't have moose markings either. I have a lot of things to cook, lots of food. Uh, I have all the gear I want. I have hacks, so I have hammer, I have maple, I have birch. I have pretty much everything. It's just some clothing items would be better. And uh, the storm lantern would be good if I could find that. And that's about it. So because I have everything, I'm not going to loot every little thing, like every, uh, you know, trailer, every loot. I could now go and I could pick up all these cattails here, which would be good to do as well. But I got so many cattails already. Uh, so I don't really need it. I think at the moment the priority is to check some more places, high-end places on the way to a base, which would be camp office or trapper's cabin, uh, I would recommend. Uh, probably trapper's cabin, just because the moose doesn't spawn here, but we'll see about that. And uh, then start forging. And then when I have gotten the bow and arrow, then I will be self-sustainable by hunting anyway. And going to fall on muskeg to pick up cattails, we're going to find even more food anyway. So I don't need to loot every single cattail on the way. Now, I could, of course, but there's no real need to. But um, uh, after I have the bow, then the game really begins. You can start hunting, you can start looting more, you can start making more clothing and that sort of stuff. Right now we're going to head to the camp office, we're going this way because we want to check this hunter's blind that's down here. Uh, there could be a wolf in this area, usually you'll find like a couple bunnies and a deer, there's the deer right over there. Uh, there's sometimes a wolf patrols this area. All we really want to do is check this hunter's blind because this is one possible place that the bedroll can spawn, so we're going to check that. So let's see what we got. If you come here on lower difficulties, you can find uh, guns in here. You can find uh, MRE and all sorts of things. Let's see. No bedroll. Okay. So this is the opposite of the other run I had where I found the bedroll right away. But it's likely that there is a bedroll here. It's probably going to be in the camp office. If it's not in the camp office, it's probably in the lookout tower. Or maybe in Trapper's Cabin. If it's not in any of those locations, I'm going to be surprised. But worst case scenario, there is one place in the game where you are guaranteed a bedroll. And that's in Bleak Inlet. Good luck with that. <laughs> in Bleak Inlet, near the cannery uh, workshop, you know, where the Aurora uh, you know, factory is or whatever. Uh, there is an island to the southwest of it. And that island has a cave in it. And inside that cave, there is a bedroll. And that bedroll is always there. Now, back to this game, though. I'm going to use this bunny as help. I'm going to herd this bunny forward like this. Go forward, bunny. Because I'm going to use him as a shield. Because there is a wolf in this area very often and the wolf could come between me uh, and my way out and here we go here is the wolf and what I want him to do is to get this bunny and it worked really well see now he's gonna go for the bunny sorry about that bunny and that distracts the wolf so now I can go around him and the wolf is just busy doing that if I didn't do this if I didn't chase the rabbit forward to distract the wolf I would have to face the wolf uh, if it got really in my face, I would have to either light a torch or a flare to then use the regular trick with the torch and stone or the whatever to get rid of it. Or I'd have to shoot the wolf, or at the wolf rather, with the flare gun to, get, to scare it off. Both of those tactics are great, but they use resources. Especially the stress pistol, which is just 12. You only have 12 rounds in the whole game. So a better solution would be to just push an animal like a rabbit like that towards him and then he will hunt it and leave you alone. And that's exactly what just happened. I'm do the same with this deer to get rid of these wolves. Uh, but this deer is kind of doing his own thing. There is only one wolf. It seems to be over there and I'm not too worried about that. There might be some more wolves behind this rock here but 
This wolf here is so far away that even if it aggroes me right now, I should be able to bypass it without much difficulty. If you are playing this however and you want to be extra careful, just crouch, you know, crouching will reduce the distance. But I'm gonna probably be able to slip by, by this wolf. Uh, it might see me, it actually probably will see me, uh, but it shouldn't be an issue because it's not really blocking me. So let's see what happens. It should detect me very soon. Oh, it turned that way, so I'm actually, it's got its back to me now, so and uh, now it's not going to detect me anymore. Unless it turns around again, maybe. See what it does. No, it's just doing its thing, it seems. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so then we are home free in the camp office. And this, or Trappist, will be the main base. There is no real answer for which is the main base, and it doesn't have to be these either. But there are several reasons why you'd want one of those two as a base. And I'll explain both. We can actually do it now while you have more visibility. So the upside of having this as your main base is that for one thing, you're pretty safe. There could be a wolf near the tracks that it could get close, but generally you're pretty safe here. And you got fishing huts right there so you can go out and fish. If you want to hunt, you know, for one thing, there's wolves around. And down by Mystery Lake at the bottom, there is usually one of the bears. So you can get a bear pretty easily uh, in this location. And also there's a deer usually roaming up here. So animals is pretty close. If you should get cabin fever, you can also exit the camp office and go up this mountain up here and up there where there's a cave. And you can just sleep in that cave for a day or two and the cabin fever will go away and then you can just go back down. So it's a very good location to do and uh, to stay in. But the argument for not staying here and staying in Trapper's Cabin is that Trapper's Cabin connects even easier. It's very safe. There's nothing that will really threaten you. It connects straight away to Milton and there's coal in the mine to Milton. So if you need coal, you can go in there. You have rabbits right outside your door that you can snare or hunt. And you can get wood pretty easily. There's very often deer that spawns. So up to three deer can spawn. Uh, so it's a pretty good and safe location as well. Uh, but very often you might want to choose either Trapper's Cabin or the Camp Office based on which animals spawn. Mm. Because it is possible that in Trapper's Cabin you will have a bear spawn and the bear will move around Trapper's Cabin. And if that's the case you might want to choose Trapper's Cabin as your base because it's going to make it easier for you to hunt bears. Uh, there's also a possible moose that can spawn there. And that's another main reason. So, and that moose is independent. So, moose, uh, this moose spawns here in Mystery Lake. It's by the dam and the unnamed pond, which is over here. Uh, but there's also a moose spawn by trappers, which is independent of the other moose spawns. Meaning, you can technically speaking have two moose at the same time in, in Mystery Lake. Uh, so, the good thing about trappers is you can have both moose and bear spawn next to it there's a wolf nearby there's rabbits there's deer connects to milton to coal and you're pretty safe uh, and that's a good reason to choose it but camp office is fine too because you're close to fishing huts you're close to a bear there's wolves there's deer there's rabbits just over there and there's also rabbits up here so you got everything you need here and the main reason i like having either of those two as the main base is just because of connectivity mystery lake is fantastic because it connects everywhere you can go to Fallen Muskeg, or you can go to the Ravine and then Coastal Highway, or you can go to Pleasant Valley. So it's kind of right in the center of everything. You can head straight to Mountain Town and then Hashtra Valley. You can head straight to Fallen Muskeg and then Broken Railroad or to Bleak Inlet. You can head to the, to the Ravine and Coastal Highway and then the Desolation Point. You can head to Pleasant Valley and then Tim Wolf Mountain. So you see pretty much everywhere you go, you are only between one and three zones away from reaching it. So it's a really, really good location. Uh, that's why it's the best place to be, in my opinion. Not only because of the actual area itself, but how it connects to everything. That's why this is a good place. Okay, enough talking about the bases. Let's go inside. Let's see what we got in here. Do we have the bedroll? If not, maybe we'll have a maglens. Uh, there is a guaranteed maglens here in Mystery Lake. 
it will spawn either here in the camp office, and there's two places it can spawn in the camp office, or it will be in the lookout tower or in Trapper's cabin. So let's look around. On here, there will be a hook. Yep, this hook is always there. We'll loot that. Scrap metal, great. We'll also check this. And the first place the maglands could be is in this corner over here. Right here. And it's not there. So we know that's not the loot location. But it could still be in this area, just further up. We got a book, which we don't really need. And I'll leave that. Uh, there's usually some food here. Let's loot these as well. Since we're in here. And we'll put this over here just so we don't miss it later. There's a spray paint can. Usually there's a little bit of food here. Not today it seems. I always check in here. But there's usually nothing here in the interloper. Okay, let's go upstairs then. This, this can is always there. No corpse today. We got some boots, which we don't really need either. Let's loot this. And then there's one more location up here. What oh. have we here? Mm, we don't really need that. Oh, but first things first, the bedroll is here. We found the bedroll. That's fantastic. 91% too. That makes the rest of the run really easy because now we can actually use this bedroll sleep wherever we want. So now we don't have to move from bed to bed anymore. We can just sleep anywhere really. And this makes it a lot easier to sleep outdoors in caves and that sort of thing. It's not really necessary as you can see. I don't know if you realized actually, but I have now gone nine days without a single bedroll and I've been sleeping in beds everywhere I've been going and including going to the summit. But this does make things a lot easier. And if it's dark, it's a lot easier to navigate. You saw me trying to do that in the Pleasant Valley farm, and it's quite difficult. But if you have the bedroll, it's a lot easier, because things will look like this. So you're like, oh, okay, I'm near the bed. Oh, okay. All right, all right, that's just the dresser and the drawers. All right, okay. It's a lot easier to see what you're doing this way. Uh, let's open this. Now, there's one place the maglens could be, and that is behind these crates here. It uh, doesn't look like it's there. So it's going to be in Trappers or the Lookout Tower. Okay, so this, that was quite good. We got the bedroll. We could stay here right now, but I think we're going to go up to the Lookout Tower to uh, check if the mag lens is there maybe. But uh, maybe we don't really need to. I think what we actually would do was to make this our temporary base. Because what we want to do now is forge. So, let's start organizing that. We're going to drop these hides. One is fresh, one is cured, but that's okay. And this is going to be our base. However, after I have done some forging, uh, I will likely come back here. Let me tell you about that. So, let's just do this. Oh, I didn't need to be A to Z, my bad. Curing that. And that. And then I think we're going to make this a temporary base. So what I would do now, since I have everything, I would go to the forge and start making arrows and tools. And then I would come back and I would make my bow and I can start hunting. And after I've done that, then I will go to Trapper's Cabin and Lookout Tower to see where the spawns are. Where is the bear and moose spawn? And then I'll decide if I want to have a base here or there. But for now, we can have this as our main base, just to have things stored. So I tend to store things here on, the, on this uh, bench here, just to have things a little bit easier and visible. So let's see if there's some stuff we can just dump here. We don't need, for example, uh, these ones. We're going to make arrows with these later, so we're just going to put these here. What else? Uh, yeah, we don't need these flares. I'm going to carry one flare though. It's always good to have one flare uh, on you, just in case you were to encounter a wolf and uh, it's windy. So we're going to do that. Sometimes the item will not allow you to place it next to it, but then you'll just place it somewhere else. Uh, we don't need two of these. They hardly weigh anything, but you know that's all right. We'll still put them here. I'm only doing this because then it's more visible for me later, but you can just store them in a container, of course. Uh, we don't need these three. We'll take one of them, though. Put the other two here. What else have we got? We got a lot of torches, but we'll probably use those. But I guess we don't need any more this many because we we are pretty much 
are well off now uh, with our clothing and everything. So these torches can just stay here. Alright, what else? Um, ah, we can carry that away, it's nothing. The arrowheads also, we're not going to use them right now. So these arrowheads we can just put here and we'll use them to craft later. I'm just placing these so it's easy to see what I got and easier for you to see what I got as well. Alright, uh, what else? Um, lots of food. Yeah, we don't need to carry all this food with us. I think all this heavy stuff uh, we can leave behind. So these things we can leave behind. I think we'll take the rest with us because it's very light stuff. So we'll put this stuff here uh, for later use. And then we also, how are we doing with like teas and things? Okay, we're gonna leave this behind. We don't need that. Uh, we don't need these anymore. And we don't need two of these. So I'm dropping all of this stuff. The stems I always carry with me, or at least most of it I carry with me. And uh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna place all this stuff here. Again, I would usually put this in a container, but it's just easier to remember where things are and also see what I got. And I can come back for this later and change base if I want. All right, what else? Uh, yeah, I don't need to carry this wood with me. This, how is this wood reading? Oh, no, I haven't done much. Matches I'll just carry, they hardly weigh anything. Uh, we don't need two of these, so that I can place here as well. The wood though, we can just leave that over here, I think. Okay, what else? Uh, cloth. And I think this will just leave down here. A little pile on the floor next to the hides. Uh, this we can take with us. Uh, we'll take the rest with us too, I think. Yeah, we're going to take all of this stuff with us, most likely. Actually, the lantern, no, we don't need that. That we can leave here. And then, is there anything else? Yeah, we got some clothing we don't need the clothing I'm just gonna dump in front here on a little pile so this this and then that and well so you got mittens here uh, this and this and this yeah and that's it is that it I think that is it yeah we're gonna take the rest of the stuff I think we don't really need the book but we might keep it okay it's getting dark <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go upstairs. We're going to sleep here. So, let's get some food in us. Uh, I'm going to eat the low condition stuff first. Just to, you know, count the food poisoning in case I get food poisoning. I haven't had any food poisoning so far, which is fantastic. Oh yeah, I guess I don't need all this coffee and stuff either, but that's okay. And then I think we'll sleep until it's morning. So we're going to sleep 10 hours. I think we'll only be able to sleep 9 hours, but that, that's okay. Oh, we got an aurora. How nice. We're going to sleep through it though, I think. Or is it still going? Oh, it's still going. We can maybe read the computer then. I think there's a computer downstairs that we can have a look at. And it's a little bonus. This one here. Yeah, this is one of the kind of computers you can read during an Aurora. And we got the memory. Bear activity around the mystery relic. Actually, let's pretend that we're a, you know, <coughs> audiobook by Zach. Log upload for Doc. Bear activity around the mystery lake region is pronounced, although human interaction by all accounts is very rare. This is to be expected this time of year, and based on the available data, we can make the following conclusions. Blank, blank, blank. That was like unnecessarily exaggerated. <laughs> All right, so um, I think that's actually the, it for this tutorial. What would happen now is that I would go to Fall on Muskeg. Let's actually have a little drink here. I actually should make some more water, but I would probably make that when I get there. So we are doing really well. We got fantastic clothing. Look at all this stuff we got. We're doing really well in terms of warmth. We got the flare gun. We got the hacksaw. We got can opener, two of these. Yeah, if you're heavy, you don't need to take two of these. We got the hammer. We got the bedroll. 
pry bar, flare. Uh, we got a lot of food. I need some more water, but that's okay. Uh, we got scrap metal, seven of them. We also can go and uh, get more scrap metal in Fallen Musket, and because we have the hacks, so we can cut down some scrap metal there. So we can probably make quite a few arrows, which is fantastic. The only thing I would do before forging, which I haven't done, is I would go outside and grab a rabbit or two. Actually, I would get two or maybe even three rabbits, and I would harvest them and put the guts here to cure, because you need the guts for the bowl. And the, the maple is going to take a little while, we're estimating 7%, so the guts are probably going to cure before or at the same time as the maple. So that's one thing I would do. I would also make a little log here and say, you know, stuff in Pleasant Valley Farm uh, and temp main base in camp office remember to get guts before forging and then i'd save that and uh yeah so what would happen now would be i would go outside i would get uh, some rabbits and get their guts put them in here to cure and then i would leave i would leave and i would go and forge i would go to fallen muskeg I got all my gear, I would start forging. I have some coal, but there is enough coal in full egg musky that itself to actually do it. You actually only need four pieces of coal in theory to forge because you can get it up to 80 degrees. Uh, but I recommend having more just to make it easier. So I would forge, I would make the hatchet, I would make the knife, and I would uh, make arrowheads. Then I would come back here and I would make my bow, I would make my arrows. I only have one birch sapling actually, which so I can only make three arrows, which isn't great, but eh, that's okay, it's something. And I would go then around uh, looting more and hunting. I would probably start with Mystery Lake, loot more. I would go to Trapper's Cabin, I would go to Lookout Tower. I would try and find the Maglands, which is in one of those two locations for sure. And I would find out where the bear spawn is, where the moose spawn is, and then I would choose to have a base either here where I am now or in Trapper's Cabin, and I would relocate if necessary. And then I just start looting and exploring and finding more stuff, and then slowly crafting materials. But with that in mind, I think this is enough for this tutorial, because this was really a Timberwolf Mountain spawn tutorial. And the reason it went this long was because I wanted to show you what happened if you ignore Ash Canyon. If you spawn in Timberwolf Mountain and get to Mountain Nest Hut, and then you decide either that I don't want to go to Ash Canyon and get the gold uh, mine uh, backpack, and I don't want to go to Summit, uh, or you don't have the hacksaw and don't want to go to Summit regardless, and you just want to leave. Well, that's what I did too. So if I spawned in Timberwolf Mountain and I either didn't want to or couldn't be bothered or couldn't go to Ash Canyon and Summit, I would just leave for Pleasant Valley right away. And I would go to the uh, the plane crash and the farm and the barn and Signal Hill and then through here finding all the stuff. And as you can see, we found most of our good equipment. Most of the good equipment and tools that we needed were found after the summit. The summit was mostly more stuff, like more food, some gear, you know, and Ash Canyon was the backpack. If you think about it, the Ash Canyon backpack and the summit wasn't really that necessary for this run most of the stuff we needed was after the run we even found a second hacksaw in in the farm so we found a hacksaw and the hammer and a lot of our good clothing was found after we got into the summit it's only really the the bear coat that was the really big thing we found in ash canyon itself so uh, you could easily ignore the first part of, of this tutorial and just go to Pleasant Valley right away. Which means that if you get a Timberwolf Mountain spawn, you are actually getting a Pleasant Valley spawn. So this tutorial, you can also think of this as a Pleasant Valley tutorial. Because if you went out of Timberwolf Mountain right away, you would go through Pleasant Valley much in the same way as I did now. And then Ash Canyon and the Summit is an option. But this is a very strong one, though. If you do it the way I did now, you see how strong this is, how good an opening this is. We're on day 10. We now have everything we need by day 10. We, we went to the summit on day 4. 
We went to the gold mine on day two. We found the bear coat. We found we have three stims. We have the backpack. We went to summit. We have hacksaw. We got the uh, extra stirring. We got the distress pistol with eight rounds. We have the hammer. We have pry bar. We have pretty much everything other than storm lantern. We don't have a storm lantern. We don't have the mag lens, although it is in this region. We do have the bow. We have the hammer. We have two cooking pots. We have the stress signal, can opener, flares. We even have the bear coat. We have uh, two of these. Uh, we could use another one of these underwears. Long John's is even better. We could use with some wool mittens, another one of these sweaters, and climbing socks if you can find them. They are quite rare in Interloper. So there are only incremental things that are better. This is a really good start. We haven't got the bow yet, and we probably wouldn't get the bow itself until closer to day f uh, 15, probably. Uh, but until you get the bow, we are in a really good shape. We have plus 18 warmth. We have very good gear. We have lots of food. We have lots of tools. We're in a good position and we can go forward. So if this was a real run, we would be in a very strong position to survive a long time now because we are really, really well equipped. So that's it for this tutorial as you can see Timberwolves Mountain is a great spawn you can do all sorts of things and you don't even need the, the stim to go up you do need to know though when you spawn if you know where the hacksaw is of course if you find the hacksaw when you spawn you know exactly where it is because you found it and you can go up to the summit by Ash Canyon like I did uh, or if if you find a hammer uh, then all you really need to know is basically uh, did you find a hacksaw in Mount Nesat? If yes, great, you got the hacksaw. Uh, did you not find the hacksaw? Then ask yourself, did you find a hammer in the fishing hut? If you find a hammer in the fishing hut, then there is no hacksaw. That's the worst uh, spawn there is, because if you find a hammer in the fishing hut in Timberwolf Mountain, you know that a hacksaw is nowhere to be found in Timberwolf Mountain. It won't be in the hut, it won't be on the summit. So if that happens, there's no point even trying to go to the summit, unless you just want the distress pistol itself, of course. So when you spawn in Timberwolf Mountain, just head to Mount Ness Hut, uh, see if there's a hammer in the fishing hut. If there's no hammer in the fishing hut, then you know the hacksaw is either going to be in the Mount Ness Hut or on the summit, and then you can decide to either go to Ash Canyon or to, uh, and or to the summit, and then go to Pleasant Valley. Or if you got the bad spawn, or if you just don't fancy doing that, you can just head straight to Pleasant Valley, start looting that, and as you can see, Pleasant Valley, it's big, but it's got a few key locations, and there's lots of loot in those locations. Head through the dam, more loot there, and then head to Mystery Lake, and you are golden. It's That's why Timberwolf Mountain is one of my favorite spawns. You can achieve so much in so few days, and as you can see, We've ended up with a run that is very strong, lots of loot, lots of tools and food, lots of gear, so we are really good. So that's, I think, the end of the tutorial, because what's going to happen next is, as I explained, I will go in Forge, and I have another tutorial for that, the one called From Start to Bow. So if you want to see how that would happen, you can pretty much go to that tutorial, and you can skip forward to when I'm in Fall on Muskeg, and in that tutorial, from for I'm entering Fall on Muskeg, it would be pretty much the same as it would be here. It would just be me going to Forge and then come back to Mystery Lake. So it would be about the same. That being said though, before you go, if you did find this run interesting and you would like to know what happens next, then let me know in the comments below. And I can consider coming back to this run and make a part two where I go and I forge and make arrows and the bow and start hunting and start establishing myself. So if you'd like to see that, you can let me know in the comments and I can make a continuation of this one day. But if you're not too bothered about it and you mostly just wanted to see how the early game works in the spawn, that's okay too, don't worry <laughs> about that. I'm only putting it out there as an offer and you can let me know if that's of interest. Uh, so I will keep the save at least for a little while. Until then, let's do a little celebration flare. Oh. That uh, destroyed the FPS on <laughs> my computer. Uh, so, yeah, with that, I think we'll call it for today. That was the Tim Wolf Mountain Spawn, which is a fantastic spawn. And if this was you, you'd be in a good position and you'd survive well. I hope you learned something. I hope this was useful. If you would like to see any other tutorials like this, 
uh, please let me know. They are not too difficult to make. I do often glue them together from different sessions where I play here and there. And they vary a lot in length from anywhere from two to six hours, depending on the spawn and what I'm doing. But if you do enjoy them, feel free to let me know if you'd like to see more of these. I know some people have requested a HRV, that is Hushed River Valley spawn, and I might make one about that, because Hushed River is a great place. Uh, well, I personally don't like it, I kind of hate it, but uh, people have requested that, and I might do that and do a video on that. But if there are any other places, if you'd like to see a spawn video somewhere else, or something else in Interloper, that is a full walkthrough of me walking around, and just playing and narrating and not necessarily edited, let me know in the comments and I'll consider making it if I have the time to do so. Uh, so please let me know about that. Until then, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sleep well and stay alive. And see you next time, survivors. Bye bye.